guys are embraced and sconced in a sense of unity as well as destiny, basking in the glow of an unprecedented run of success during Kirk Ferentz's regime so far. The Hawkeyes will man now embracing the notion that the road to Pasadena might take a circuitous but welcome detour through Iowa City. Up on the scope next for the Hawkeyes, the Spartans. That's next. Think this is your typical ATV? It's not. Say goodbye to bolt-on accessories and milk crates. A pin is all you need on Articat's new MRP. In the blink of an eye, set up an MRP to work Monday through Friday. Then go hunting on Saturday. And fishing or camping on Sunday. It's that easy. Mix and match. The combinations are endless. Arctic Cat. More ways to use your ATV. Sorry about that. Hey, if you're gonna make a collect call, be sure to dial it in the center. Twenty hundred call ATT. Let's show them, gang. Free for you and cheap for them. Watch this. on every call. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. According to the Surgeon General, there's a dental health crisis affecting millions of inner city children. Well, I haven't been to the dentist. They're getting twice as many cavities as other children. I don't know cavities. At Crest, we're working to change that. We're joining with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America to build dental clinics, teach healthy habits, and help their kids get better dental care. The results will be measured in smiles. I love myself. Driving down the road, I spot a dead emu. Having just lost my girlfriend, I decide it might look nice mounted in my pool room. However, it quickly becomes apparent that he's not dead. Not at all. I was a touch worried. Until I awoke in a pool hall frequented by a local sorority. And I ask you, was this coincidence or part of something bigger? City, Iowa, the corner of Melrose and Hopkins. Area code 319 for the 5 and 1 Hawkeyes and the Michigan State Spartans. In any area code, the Hawkeyes right now playing like champions, 2 0 in the Big Ten. And the fans, a buzz with anticipation for today's matchup with the Spartans. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey for this. The 36th meeting between these two teams. And Bob, when you look at the components, you start with Michigan State. Charles Rogers might be arguably the best player in all of college football. Mark, this is a strong opinion, but I'm going to hit it with you right away. <laughs> in my opinion, Charles Rogers may be the most talented, dynamic player in all of football, including the NFL. The problem Michigan State has, though, is that Iowa has a lot of weapons. Fred Russell, the tailback, is averaging 144 yards a game rushing. Brad Banks, the quarterback, number one in the Big Ten in pass efficiency. Dallas Clark, the tight end, last week two touchdown catches, one of them 95 yards. And don't forget about the kicker. Nate Kading has made 14 straight field goals. A great weapon in his own right. Special teams always taking a big toll in this game. The weather? 58 degrees. It has been overcast for most of the morning. The temperature is expected to drop just a little bit. And rain is also in the forecast. That would have a definitive effect, you would think, on the passing attack of the Spartans. Iowa won the toss and decided to receive the opening kickoff. Back deep, Jermell Lewis at the 8. Lewis out to the 26-yard line, and that's where the Hawkeyes will begin their first series of the ball game. But first, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Thank you, Mark. Michigan State has had the luxury of playing their first five games at home. Today is their first test on the road in conference play. In the last two seasons under Bobby Williams, it's a place they've struggled. Just one in seven in the conference, Big Ten Conference road games. Two of the reasons, poor field goal kicking, just five of 11 from field goals, and turnovers. 24 turnovers on the road, averaging three a game. For Michigan State, today simply is a key to eliminating turnovers. They have 16 players that have never been to Iowa City before out of the 64 making the trip. First down and 10 for Iowa. Banks rolls out to pass. 
Bryant. This is where he can make some big plays, falling forward to the 32-yard line. Banks completing almost 60% of his passes on this season. A great number, 12 touchdowns versus just two interceptions. A look at the best buy backs and receivers, Russell, Cervantes, Jones, Hinkle, and Clark. A great weapon, Bob. Clark last week marked 95 yards and the game-winning touchdown on a seven-yard touchdown catch. Second down and five after that Banks run. Fred Russell and Cervantes lining up out of the eye. Clark in motion. It's going to be Russell. Look at Baroom and brought down at the 34-yard line. Sets up the third down at about two. Let's take a look at the offensive line. A very talented, big, athletic offensive line for Iowa. Key to their football team. They take a lot of pride in this offensive line, and they should. They carry the weight of this football team on their shoulders. For the defensive line, for the Spartans, pass rushing needs to get just a bit better up front, a little more pressure. Third down and about two to go. Jackson and Clark, two tight ends in the formation. Third down and two. That's Jones in motion. Banks almost intercepted by Demario Suggs. And he had nothing but real estate ahead of him. It'll be fourth down, and the Hawkeyes will have to punt. Look at the linebackers. Labinjo, Wedlow, and Stanley Labinjo has been moved around a lot this year. And the safeties have been one of the strengths of the secondary, right in Harmon. Fourth down, David Bradley into punt. And a bit of a slump of late and back deep. It's Zeal Cavanaugh standing at his own 26. Punting into the wind is Bradley Cavanaugh. Taking it on the run out to the 38, and there's a flag down on the field. So for just the second time this season, Iowa failing to score on its first possession. Marking an interesting decision by Iowa. They won the toss, took the football. Iowa could have chosen to take the wind in the first quarter. Interference with the opportunity. Violation of the two-yard belt. Ten-yard penalty. Stop. Jeff Smoker, the starting quarterback, 12 touchdown passes versus seven interceptions. He threw eight interceptions all of last year. The backs and receivers brought to you by Best Buy, Moss, Goble, Rogers, Kavanaugh, and Randall, the tight end. The toss is to Moss. Moss coming off a big game a couple of games ago, a couple of weeks ago against Northwestern, got about six. Look at the Best Buy offensive line, Booker, Tate, Otney, Whitaker, and Stewart up front. All five starters back from a year ago, but they still need to be consistent. Up front for Iowa in the trenches, Hodges, Klaus, Cole, and Babino, a guy who's starting to come on. Second down and four. Rodgers split to the bottom of your screen, but they run it with Moss. Moss has the first down and is tackled near the 40-yard line. Let's take a look at the linebackers for the Hawkeyes. Barr, the team's leading tackler, joined by Steen and Worthy. And the secondary, led by Bob Sanders, a great hitter, but what about the corners, Bob? We know that's the Achilles heel of this defense. They will be tested today and tested big time because number one's on the opposite side, Charles Rogers. See what kind of special wrinkles Norm Parker might have concocted this week for a number one right there. First down and 10 for Michigan State on their opening possession of the ball game. Little play pick by Smoker. Fires complete. Down to the 32-yard line, that's B.J. Lovett. And B.J. Lovett, along with Zeal Kavanaugh, expected to take some of the load off of Rodgers. Anytime you have a dynamic player like Charles Rodgers, I can understand why Jeff Smoker wants to utilize him. The coaching staff wants to get the ball in his hands. The other receivers, B.J. Lovett, Kavanaugh, have to step up and take advantage of their opportunities. That's a good sign right there for Michigan State to get some balance early in this football game. Second down and one for the Spartans. Moss again. It's been a steady diet of Moss here in the early going on the opening drive. 
plowing his way down to the 26-yard line. And let's go back to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark, this is the day we've been looking forward to for quite a while. Six games matching teams in the top 25, several other marquee games on the docket. It might not be the ultimate judgment day, but there will be some sentences passed on this Saturday, and that's why we're here. Keep an eye on everything for you. You won't miss a thing while you're watching Michigan State and Iowa. We'll watch the rest of the games, provide plenty of cut-ins for you on a big college football Saturday. All right, Reese, bringing law and order to the college football world on Judgment Saturday. First down and 10. Moss cutting it back nicely. And he has the ability to run around and over people. That time over Pagel, the free safety. But Moss out of the gate quickly here. Mark Dwayne Moss, a fullback last year, lost 30 pounds to become a tailback, and he shows his cutback ability right there. The total package, Michigan State's coaches love the work ethic of Charles Rogers. Not the most aggressive block, but he did get in the way of D.J. Johnson. 6-4. Seems to do it pretty well. Second down and four. Backs out of the eye. A little motion up front by Jason Randall, the tight end for the Spartans. Mark, let's go back to Iowa's decision when they won the toss at the start of this football game. A lot of teams in a windy situation. Well start offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Would defer their choice and let the other team make the decision and ultimately take the football so that you would have the wind in the first quarter. Iowa chooses to take the football, subsequently going against the wind in the first quarter. Huge advantage right here for Michigan State. Iowa forced to punt on its first offensive possession just a few moments ago. Second down and nine. Ryan Woods lined up in the backfield along with Dewan Moss, number 89. And Bobby Williams' team playing on the road for the first time in six games this year. They call a timeout. Just Smoker coming to the sideline to vibe with the brain trust. And we're going to take a short break just underway here in Iowa City. We'll be right back. Reviewing our last fiscal year, the numbers from January were slightly better than the numbers from February. However, the numbers in January were identical to the numbers in March. The numbers in April were slightly lower than the numbers in March, but identical. Like playing games? Come to Best Buy, where you can play the latest video games and try out a lot of other cool stuff. Best Buy. Go ahead, turn on the fun. A new, more powerful V8 engine. More distinctive styling. 368 improvements in all. The new 2003 Discovery. It's a whole new way to see the world. From Land Rover, the most well-traveled vehicles on Earth. Nicely equipped from $3.99 a month. Complimentary scheduled maintenance included. Having quadruplets, we have a very busy schedule, so we shop for everything at Walmart. We get our tires here, too. I can leave the car there for an oil change, new tires, and go shopping. When you're picking out a tire, you need a, a name brand that you trust, and Walmart carries those, and I know I can trust their prices. We can get our car serviced, get all their toys, and still be home in time for lunch and naps. We have a little sticker in the back of our car that says quadruplets on board. I don't trust my children with just anybody because it's precious cargo. This is your husband. Her husband's dead. I'm so sorry. A fortune's missing. God's been stole six million dollars. Look for it, you'll find it. On October 25th, <laughs> the fun is uncovering the truth. Mm. The truth about Charlie. Rated PG-13 starts October 25th. Three hundred and seventy Fortune 500 companies outsource with Kinkos every day. Back here at Kinnick Stadium, Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down to the field. Michigan State trying to win for the first time here since 1989, doing a good job on the ground so far. Although at times this year, the running game has struggled for Michigan State. Second down and nine, that's Ryan Woods in motion. Smoker. Incomplete at the 14-yard line to B.J. Lovett. 
of it looking for a flag, but he won't get one. It'll be third down and long. Antoine Allen, number 20, helped break it up. This all starts with really excellent protection right here for Jeff Smoker. He throws a football, a good throw to B.J. Love it, but give Antoine Allen credit for staying with it and stripping that football out of there at the last second. Michigan State now with five receivers, an empty formation. Rodgers in the slot to the right, the bottom of your screen. Smoker. Goes right back to Lovett for the completion. It'll be first down and goal for the Spartans. Sanders made the tackle on the play. Lovett a big target at 6-3. The reason Lovett comes open, you are going to see Iowa double cover Charles Rogers and single cover the other three receivers. This gives B.J. Lovett a chance to come open for the completion right here. Michigan State has seen an awful lot of overloaded coverages. That's why it's so important that those all the receivers step up. So far, B.J. Lovett taking opportunities and making the best of it. Impressive opening drive so far by Michigan State. A flag down, Moss down, and the ball coming loose. Spartans recovering back at the nine. Jason Randall pouncing on the loose ball. Looked like there was a little motion there on the right side of the line. And it's against Michigan State again. Their second penalty of the ball game so far. Penalties an issue last week with Kirk Ferentz's team. They were unable to get into any early offensive rhythm because of a spat of penalties. Illegal formation on the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. Third down. Nose of the ball back at the nine-yard line. I think the referee meant to say second down there, Mark. He actually said third down. Second down. He heard you. Probably heard Bobby Williams. The referee today, Bill Lamania. Backs lining up out of the eye. Rogers split to the bottom of the screen. Woods in motion. On the slant, incomplete intended for B.J. Lovett. Sanders right there to help break up the pass. It'll be third down and goal for the Spartans. Interesting how the mind game gets played. You look at this graphic right here, and you see Iowa 116th in the nation in pass defense, second in the nation in rush defense, but Michigan State comes out and runs the football early, trying to establish the run. Ten plays in the drive, Bob. Are you surprised that Rodgers hadn't touched the ball yet? He may touch it right now, Mark. <laughs> when it counts. 13 straight games catching a touchdown pass. Five receiver formation. It's not Rodgers. He goes the other way. No flag, and now a late flag for the back jugs. It was intended for Kavanaugh. And he was being covered closely, maybe a little too closely, by Antoine Allen. 5'10 freshman. And it's against the Hawkeyes. That'll give Michigan State a first down and goal to go. So Smoker has gone to love it. Kavanaugh, but not Rodgers yet, still. You're going to see once again Iowa using up two defenders to cover one receiver. But that receiver is Charles Rodgers. This gives the opportunity at the top for straight man-to-man -man coverage. Antoine Allen coming in a little bit early. Huge penalty right there for Michigan State. Moss stopped up, meanwhile, back to the four-yard line. The initial charge led by Matt Roth, the 6'4", 245-pound sophomore, who last week in a win against Purdue made a somewhat controversial play that kept the Purdue drive alive late in the ballgame, although Iowa did come back to win. Mark, something you see going back to that last play and the other pass plays, Iowa, a zone pass defense team, elects to come out and play man-to-man -man in this football game so that they can double Charles Rogers. A bit of a wrinkle, second down and goal. On the toss, Moss 
stopped up again. Maybe got a yard in the play. Colin Cole, one of the leaders up front out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, making the stop. Moss showing a little bit of agility at 230 pounds. It'll be third down and goal now. Moss lost 30 pounds during the offseason with a lot of training and working out. Two a days, third and goal. Five receivers in. Rogers to the right of Smoker. And he looks Rogers' way, incomplete. And a late flag. DJ Johnson, the 5'10 senior, was all over Rogers that time. Once again, it'll be first and goal. DJ Johnson one-on-one -on, -one on Charles Rogers. I do think he came in and got a little bit of jersey early. But give DJ Johnson a break. Charles Rogers doesn't need any help. <laughs> Tough call right there on the goal line. Get the feeling already that it might be a long afternoon for that secondary when it comes to Rogers. Gobo the lead back. Moss the tailback. It's Moss. Touchdown, Spartans. Michigan State strikes first, much to the displeasure of the fans here. Iowa taking it. Iowa playing man-to-man -man coverage, locking up challenging receivers really for the first time this year. That's good, but it's also bad. It resulted in two pass interference on here at pass interference calls on that drive. Moss with his fourth touchdown of the season running the ball. Rainer in for the extra point. And Dewan Moss helps give Michigan State a 7-0 lead. Tough sledding between the tackles. We'll be right back. A new, more powerful V8 engine. More distinctive styling. 368 improvements in all. The new 2003 Discovery. It's a whole new way to see the world. From Land Rover, the most well-traveled vehicles on Earth. Nicely equipped from $3.99 a month. Complimentary scheduled maintenance included. Zito's jersey smells rank. Whew. You need to wash it. Can't wash it. It's his lucky jersey. What about the streak? Just wash it. I'm with Steve. We have a problem. He started today. <laughs> MLB Authentic Collection. Available at these fine retailers. ESPN's presentation of college football brought to you by Land Rover, the most well-traveled vehicles on Earth, and by Best Buy. For the latest technology, turn on the fun at Best Buy. Spartan mascot and the team so far flexing their collective muscles as Michigan State leads 7-0 here at Kinnick Stadium, the 36th meeting between Michigan State and Iowa. Spartan scoring on a 12-play, 54-yard drive. Lewis has a seam. Jamel Lewis has one man to beat. The Hawkeyes special teams strikes again. Touchdown.
magic continues if you're a Hawkeye fan. Jamel Lewis takes it. That's too easy. There's no one within 10 yards of Jamel Lewis. And they continue the amazing run of special teams. That's a sign of a well-coached football team. A 94-yard bolt of lightning across the Iowa Plains makes it 7-7 to -7 in a blink. The story for Iowa this season has been one of special teams. In the last three games, they've blocked four kicks, including two punts, one of them coming right there. They've blocked a field goal as well, and an extra point here against Penn State a couple of weeks ago that came back for a score of two points. And a punt last week against Purdue, which went for a touchdown. All four blocks resulted in Iowa score so far. And you have that to add to that kickoff return just a few moments ago by Jermel Lewis. 5'11 sophomore. Bob, like you said, that looked a little bit too easy. He was untouched. Mark, special teams has become contagious here in Iowa City. What happens? They've had so much success and so many big plays. Everybody wants to be a part of it. You have all the starters that want to be. You have student body members want to be on the kickoff cup. You've got old players from 15 years ago want to be a part of it. It's contagious. And the success right now is the biggest reason so far this football team only has one match. Dating kicking off. Interestingly enough, last year it was Michigan State that scored on a kickoff return in this game. Her Baker went 100 yards. Return back out to the 20 yard line. Reese Davis bringing law and order to Judgment Day. Reese, what's up? Well, we have a little old fashioned blood feud on Tobacco Road, North Carolina State, North Carolina. T.A. McClendon, 178 touchdowns in high school. That's his 11th in college as a true freshman. Wolfpack up by a touch in the front. All right, Michigan State on the sidelines huddling up. Boy, that is a huge momentum swing. In mere seconds, the Michigan State scored its touchdown. Iowa taking back the old momentum train and swinging it in their favor. First down and 10 for the Spartans from the 19. The play fake by Smoker goes to Rodgers. And it's caught at the 30-yard line for a first down. He was working on D.J. Johnson. Right now, what Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator, is thinking on the sidelines, I love the fact that we scored, but don't score so fast. <laughs> don't give it back to Michigan State. I've got to find a way to defend Charles Rogers. Take some time off the clock. Michigan State with another possession here with the win. First down and 10. Rogers just made his first reception of the afternoon. Moss on the old stretch, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. A great surge led by Fred Barr, the 6'2 senior. Busy, busy Saturday afternoon and evening in college football to tell you about in just a bit. First, a flag on the field. As Barr knifed through there to make the tackle, Barr the leading tackler on that Hawkeye defense. Here's the call. Dead ball, personal foul, offense. That's the kind of stuff that really kills you on the road. And folks, don't forget, 7.45 Eastern Time tonight on ESPN College Football Saturday night presented by the U.S. Postal Service. Rex Grossman passed for 464 yards and five touchdowns last year in Death Valley, a Florida win. As he and the Gators look to bounce back after a tough loss last Saturday against Ole Miss. And the LSU against number 16, Florida. Nick Saban, a defensive coach, old Michigan State coach. He'll have a good plan against Florida tonight after giving up that many passing yards last year. Second and long, Smoker on the out and up. Looking for Rodgers, and it's picked off by Sanders. The first turnover of the game in favor of the Hawkeyes. The biggest problem Jeff Smoker has had this year is under throwing the deep ball. 
And Mark, that should not happen when Charles Rogers is your receiver and you're throwing with the wind. At some point, take advantage of Charles Roger and get the football out there where he can make a play. Once again, his eighth interception of the year, an underthrown deep ball. The smoker, one of the top-rated passers in the Big Ten in terms of passing efficiency. First down and ten for the Hawkeyes. Banks back to pass. Complete to Maurice Brown near the first down marker at the 45-yard line. A battle of Florida happening today. Reese, tell us what's up there. Mark's first place in scrimmage from Miami, Florida State, dropped a sure interception for a touchdown. You can't miss those opportunities against the Hurricanes. They will make you pay. Ken Dorsey to Kellen Winslow, Jr., and it's set up Willis McGahee. 13-play drive, 89 yards. Look at that run. Strong legs he has. Haynes on top, 7-0. Well, that's how you break a couple of tackles. Mickey Andrews is beside himself right now on the Florida State sideline. Second down and one, Fred Russell, the lone back. Two tight end formation. They give it to Russell. And Russell gets the first down at the 40-yard line. Fred Russell, diminutive yet very dynamic at just 5'8", and that might be a little bit generous. He tells us, hey, tell everyone I'm six feet, okay? He's averaging... 144 yards rushing per game. Well, we have a hard time saying he's six feet, Mark. <laughs> I mean, unless these guys are seven feet, you can see right there the size differential. But what he is, he is a strong, powerful running back. But he's only about five six. I've got to be honest. <laughs> I'll give him five seven. <laughs> Huge heart. Fourth leading rusher in the nation. First down and ten for Iowa. Little waggle by Banks. Takes off himself. Still on his feet. Brad Banks all the way down to the 31-yard line. Close to the first down, and that's where he can hurt you. The run-pass option. Brad Banks beats contain. Great Taplin, I believe, gives up contain. And now you've got Brad Banks in a two-way situation. Wow. He looks a little bit like number two, Fred Russell, right there in the open field. Last week against Purdue, he only carried the football twice, but one of those, a 44-yard running play on the last drive of the football game. He ended up winning them the game on that playoff. Second down and one. Going back has Jones. Incomplete, just overthrowing. Jones, and let's go back to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark, earlier we saw the freshman T.A. McClendon scoring for North Carolina State. There's another freshman running back that's gotten some attention, Maurice Claret from the Buckeyes, going in against San Jose State. Ohio State up by a touch. They step out of conference for this Saturday. Well, you can't say enough about the job that uh, Fritz Hill is doing there at San Jose State this year. He's had some big wins. Yeah, some big wins. Going to turn that program around a little bit. Third down and one. Russell set deep all the way back at the 40-yard line. Nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. They give it to Russell, and he's brought down and then escapes. Fred Russell showing you a little bit of strength, breaking a tackle for the first down. Jason Harmon, the safety, Misses a tackle in the backfield right here. Fred Russell, he's not very tall, but he has tremendous leg strength. If you see him convert that third and one, which really could have been a negative play, into a big first down for Iowa. Fred Russell, the player that was recruited by Michigan State. First down and 10. Thanks now, audibling at the line. Jones put to the bottom of your screen. He looks at Jones. And Jones drops it, went right through his arms. College football Saturday continues tonight on ESPN2, 6.30 Eastern. Lou Holtz in South Carolina in Lexington to take on Jared Lorenzen and Kentucky. The series record between these two teams dead even at 6-6-1. Six, six, then it's followed by BYU at Air Force in the national rankings and spotlight at number 19 in the country. And I'll tell you, man, that wishbone, Bob Davy just keeps moving right along. You don't like that wishbone, yeah. Like That's old school. Oh, my you, want him, you want to see him throw it every down. You're kind of a new wave offensive guy. <laughs> Second down. It is to Russell, still on his feet, and then tripped up. 
at the 24 yard line by Greg Taplin, the defensive end. And Fred Russell telling me yesterday during our meetings that life really has changed for him. Enjoying a little bit of the national spotlight right now says that he's been getting a lot of phone calls from friends, cousins, people that he hasn't heard from, frankly, in years. He's actually thinking about changing his cell phone number. Won't be able to hit him at the hip anymore on the page or the he's, cell. Phone. Well, he's kind of like you. When you become a big time, <laughs> nationally recognized guy, you know, I'm with you. That cell phone just continues to be. It'll be ringing off the hook if he keeps putting up impressive numbers. Third down and eight. They get to the 16 for the first down. Solomon hangs on to it. He was hit immediately by Broderick Nelson. But he's about three yards short of the first down. A lot of times when we talk about defensive backs, we talk about coverage, but tackling is so important. Look at all this open grass out here. Michigan State in man coverage, a sure tackle right there by Broderick Nelson, and look who's on the field. He is 11 of 11 on the season. This one coming from about 36 yards out. Nate Kading. There's a streak going back to last year. And the streak stays alive. Right down the highway. From 36 yards out in the Hawkeyes lead. 10 to 7. He's made his last 15 in a row. We'll be back to Kinnick Stadium right after this. They all told him he couldn't play for Notre Dame. Everyone said it couldn't be done. Now he's out to prove he could. Real classics, movies, and real people with real stories. Ruby. 9 Eastern Sunday on ESPN Classic. On an all-new bank borrowing deal, the race is on. Every second counts. Team Contact has major plans in the minor leagues. They kind of played a few tricks on it. While Team Kobe brews up some plans of their own. Sweaters off, sweaters off. Bank borrowing deal, Tuesday at 8 on ESPN. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure. And check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web at BowflexUltimate.com today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. In Iowa City, the hometown Hawkeyes leading by a score of 10 to 7. With 2.35 to play in the first quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Holly Rowe down to the field, Kading, as I mentioned a few moments ago before the break, and now made 15 consecutive field goals dating back to last year. What did he tell us before the game, Mark? With the wind, shoot, I do 75-yard field goal. <laughs> Up and back deep for Michigan State. And Hayes at the four. He's got a nice block. He's brought down at the 22-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, during the course of a game, most head coaches stay up at the front of the sidelines and allow their bench players to be talked to by their position coaches. But after that last offensive series, Bobby Williams made his way back to the offense and was furious. He said, we can control the mistakes we make. He was furious about the penalties, the interceptions. He said, we have to eliminate that. I don't want to see any of that out there anymore. We win this football game by being a solid team. Yeah, in their last drive, Holly, they self-destructed Smoker with a interception as eighth of the season. That's the Iowa score, the field goal. Smoker downfield, underthrown once again for Rodgers. Bob Sanders in the vicinity. The little guy, one of the biggest hitters that defensive coordinator Norm Parker has ever seen. Good in pass coverage there, too, Bob. Another situation, Mark, of underthrowing the corner route right here by Jeff Smoker. Bob Sanders, he's one of those five foot eight defensive backs, goes up and makes a play. Norm Parker said in 35 years of coaching, 
Bob Sanders is the most physical football player he has coached. That is a strong statement. Even when he wears an XL t-shirt, it looks like he's wearing a small. He's so buffed up. Second down and 10. Moss between the tackles. Tough running by Dewan Moss all the way out to the 32-yard line. Check that. That's David Richard now in the ball game. The 6'1 freshman, 230 pounds, built about the same. Maybe a little faster, though, Richard. They love this true freshman. Iowa, once again, second in the nation in rush defense, getting gouged a little bit early in this football game. First by Dewan Moss in the first series, and now the freshman David Richard steps up. Keep in mind that this Iowa defense ranked number two in the nation against the run. Richard opened a lot of eyes with 70 yards rushing on 15 carries against Notre Dame a few weeks ago. And a losing cause. Ryan Woods in motion. Smoker with a play fake. Complete to Rodgers near midfield at the 48-yard line. He was brought down by Bob Sanders. A 17-yard pickup and a first down. The reason this is successful is because Michigan State's able to run the football here early. So they come back with the play action on first and 10, freeze the linebackers, and Charles Rogers comes open against zone coverage. But give that credit to the running game that Michigan State's been able to establish. First down and 10 at the 48. With 1.25 to go now in the first period. Run it to midfield. David Richard stopped up by Cole after a gain of about two. ESPN Sunday Night Football featuring the game of the week in the NFL. Running back machine Ricky Williams already has four 100-yard games this season. One shy of the team record. The Dolphins taking on Brian Greasy and the Broncos. And, boy, you talk about a, a guy that has really benefited from a change of scenery and venue. Ricky Williams very much at home in South Florida. Had the chance to coach against Ricky Williams twice. A Bo Jackson type player. I mean, incredible speed for an athlete his size. Got a little weight and much faster this year, too. Second and eight. Smoker. That time looking at Ryan Woods, the tight end. And Bob, we were watching film earlier this week, and we noticed that they do a lot of interesting things with their tight ends, Michigan State. They do, and they've done that the last couple years with Morris Watts as the offensive coordinator. They spread their big tight ends out really as wide receivers. And you see a case right there of them matching up the big tight end on a defensive back. But what you're going to see here, Eric Knott, number four, the big young tight end that's in the football game. Right here, number four, Eric Knott, the tight end. Smoker picked off again. Pagel. And he could go. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. <laughs> 62 yards back the other way on the pick. with his third interception this season and the first one that comes back for a touchdown the Hawkeyes now lead it by 10 we're going to see what happens right here you're going to see Charles Rogers works on the corner but then you're going to see Pegel the free safety actually double but the real thing right here is Jeff Smoker forces the football in. No chance right there with Derek Pagel. Double teaming Charles Rogers on the square end. Another creative way by Iowa to score. Here you see DJ Johnson underneath. Derek Pagel on the inside taking away the square end. Good defensive scheme right there by Norm Parker. Meanwhile, the woes for Smoker continue, Bob. His ninth pick this season, 24th of his career, the numbers going in the wrong direction, going back to 2000. And that's the fourth straight game that Jeff Smoker has thrown two interceptions. 
Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator, told him when he saw Smoker's billboard pasted high above Spartan Stadium, said, you know what, you're no longer just one of the 11 guys again. The heat's going to be on you this year, and so far, Smoker trying to find his offensive groove from a season ago. Hayes at the two. And you get the feeling for the Hawkeyes, special teams, defense, crowd, everybody into the game right now. We salute the Marines assigned to Camp Fuji, Japan, watching this telecast on the American Forces Network, including the men and women of Headquarters Battalion who provide training support for Marines stationed throughout Japan. All of us here at ESPN and our viewers, support your efforts, guys. Taking care of our interests both abroad and domestically. First down and 10 for Michigan State at the 17. Every great quarterback has been through what Jeff Smoker's going through right now. There's no easy way to get through it. And sometimes it gets worse before he gets better. Jeff Smoker's a tremendous young man, but right now he is grinding. Boss back in the ball game and Barr nice through. Making a foray into the backfield for the sack. Fred Barr, the 6'2 senior, getting it done. The Hawkeyes with a resounding 17 to nothing run. 17 unanswered points. They lead when we come back for the second. Powerful V8 engine. More distinctive styling. 368 improvements in all. The new 2003 Discovery. It's a whole new way to see the world. From Land Rover, the most well traveled vehicles on Earth. Nicely equipped from $399 a month. Complimentary scheduled maintenance included. Hi, Joe. Hi, FedEx guy. Let's get to work. So it can store up to a thousand addresses. It lets you print labels and find a Dropbox. It can email you when the package has been delivered and more. <laughs> FedEx.com is just like having your own FedEx guy. Hey. Yeah? Kind of freak me out, man. <laughs> John Woo, director of Mission Impossible 2 and Face Off, starring Academy Award winner Nicolas Cage. My responsibility! A full throttle, heart pounding action thriller. Wind Talkers. Buy or rent it Tuesday. I'm very proud of my lawn. In the fall, I use Scott's Winterizer. The food enters the root system, stores it over the winter. Then in the spring, perks that grass right up. Scott's Winterizer gives me the last green lawn in the fall and the first green lawn in the spring. Hello, my friend. Which would you rather have, this oven toasted sub? I like toasted. Or this untoasted sub with lots of lettuce? Uh-huh. Clearly prefers the untoasted sub with the lettuce. The only way to beat a Quiznos oven toasted sub is the cheat. Try our Bistro Beef Sub with three cheeses on cheddar iron ciabatta bread served with a side of au jus. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Toasty. Iowa looking for its fifth win in seven meetings against Michigan State. They lead by 10 as we begin the second quarter of play here at Kinnick Stadium. I'm Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down in the field. Second down and long for the Spartans. Back in the ball game, stopped up at the line of scrimmage by Jared Cross. Let's take a look at our ESPN Gateway game track. A couple of key big plays.
special teams. Iowa's first touchdown of the game came on this 95-yard return by Jermel Lewis. And then the interception for the touchdown, your pick six number today, folks, is 25. Derek Pagel with his third of the season, his first, coming back for a touchdown. Smoker now with nine picks on the year. Third down and long. Smoker gets it off to his fullback, Goble. He's brought down short of the first down of the 18 by Howard Hodges. And Michigan State will have to punt. Well, if Bobby Williams wanted to keep the crowd out of the game early, it hasn't worked. Big plays, the kickoff return, the interception return for a touchdown by Derek Pagel has put this crowd right in the middle of this football game. Jason Daly to punt. Your punter here for Michigan State of California, fourth down and 11. Under pressure, barely got it off. Hinkle back at the 38. Ed Hinkle brought down after a 10 yard return on a 46 yard punt. Reese, what's happening up with the Corn Huskers? Well, they've won 25 straight at home, Mark, longest streak in the nation. They've beaten Missouri 23 straight times, but oh, Jamal Lord and John Clem again there and tangle that thing up and fumble it. Missouri takes over, and from there, Zach Abram will slam into the end zone. And the Tigers in Lincoln on top by a touchdown. Temple on top of Syracuse by a field goal. At least first down and 10 for the Hawkeyes at the 48. Russell trying to hit the edge. And tackled by number 44, Ronald Stanley. He started 12 games as a freshman last year. An invaluable experience. Nice play on that one. Iowa does a tremendous job on the stretch. Here you're going to see the center, Bruce Nelson, pulling. And at the top of the screen, you're going to see an excellent block by the receiver, Maurice Brown. Fred Russell gets to the perimeter, picks up five yards on first down. Nelson with an incredible Ironman streak going. And 41st in second of game. Second down and five. Banks incomplete. And a flag coming on the play. Intended for Maurice Brown and Cedric Henry. The corner was defending on the play. Pass interference against Michigan State. Bob, what do you mean by uh, zone blocking? Zone blocking, you have an option as an offensive line to either man block or zone block. Iowa is one of the finest zone blocking teams in the country. And they really have two forms. One you see here, the stretch or the outside zone where the offensive lineman works in a coordinated fashion, all getting flat. The second is they try to create double teams in an inside zone and there's a cutback. You see two linemen blocking one, but all four eyes on the linebacker. They come off, and there's an opportunity for a cutback off the double team. It has worked for them this year. On the out, now Pinkle, incomplete. Banks just barely overthrew him. And he had gotten in behind Cedric Henry on the play. Banks has had a couple of close misses, one earlier to Jones. Iowa going up the top on the hitch and go. You see Brad, Brad Banks pump fake. He has Ed Hinkle wide open right there. Ed Hinkle, great effort laying out, but Brad Banks would love to have that one, that one back. Keep in mind, Brad Banks throwing with the wind right now may have affected that throw just a little bit. Second down and 10 for the Hawkeyes. Quarterback draw, Banks has some real estate. And he put his hat down at the 30 and is right at the first down marker. He took on Jason Harmon, the free safety. I'm a little surprised right here that Brad Banks didn't make Jason Harmon miss right here, the free safety in the open field. That's a one-on-one -on -one tackle. But I think back Bill Miller, the defensive coordinator, told us Jason Harmon is their best tackler in the secondary. Harmon was one of the guys that last year got hurt during non-contact drill during the off week before this Iowa game. 
First down and 10, he got the first down. Brown and Hinkle split to the bottom of your screen. They run it into the boundary with Russell. And Russell got back to the line of scrimmage. Harmon once again coming up on run support from his free safety spot. Anytime you play it, anytime you play a team as talented running of the football as Iowa, you have to get your secondary involved. Here you're going to see Jason Harmon, the free safety, filling outside the defensive end to have it sealed off. The free safety, Jason Harmon, once again, a good tackle using the sideline really as his extra man over there and running Fred Russell out of bounds. Second down and 10. Cervantes, the fullback, the side banks. Banks flushed out. And he wisely steps out of bounds at the 34-yard line. It'll be third down and long. Kyle Rasmussen with the pressure on the play for the Spartans. I think you can see the athleticism of Brad Banks. And it's an interesting story, Mark. We see as we go around this country sometimes the impatience of players, particularly at the quarterback position. They seem to want to transfer if they're not going to be the guy. You have to feel good for a Brad Banks who is waiting around. He's a senior starting for the first time. And the reason he's so polished, he's experienced, even though he hasn't played, because he stayed with the program. A real portrait in patience. Can't help but root for him a little bit. Third down and long, 13 to go. Banks, backside pressure, and Rock back at the 38 by Eric Smith. Redshirt freshman comes up with a sack, and it'll be fourth down. You are going to see the zone blitz. Eric Smith, the dime back, comes from the top. Dallas Clark on a little check down release. Obviously, he should have stayed on that block right there. That's the tenth sack of the season for Michigan State's defense. Bill Miller in Michigan State gave Iowa problems last year, particularly in third down, with a multiple blitz package. Bill Miller again coming up with a good plan on third and long. Bradley, the punter for Iowa, been in a bit of a slump of late. See if he can get his 10th punt inside the 20. Hangs up a spiral with the wind at his back, and it travels into the end zone. The Spartans will take it out at their own 20-yard line, a 38-yard punt, nothing on the return. Iowa still hasn't scored an offensive touchdown, but they lead when we come back. It has a sleek, all-in-one design like the Apple iMac computer, only it's faster, has more storage capacity, and can run thousands more software programs. Presenting the remarkable new Gateway Profile 4. Oh, and by the way, did we mention the Gateway Profile costs less than the iMac? Gateway, a better way. Suzuki, proud presenting sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. Introducing Suzuki 00 and 7 event, featuring America's number one value plan. It's America's number one finance offer and America's number one warranty. 0% APR financing for five full years with zero down payment on all new Suzuki models. And now, all new Suzukis come with a 100,000 mile seven year powertrain limited warranty, like the 145 horsepower Aereo. The smart choice is America's number one value plan. So move fast to your local Suzuki dealer today. For men, every morning it's the same routine. The desperate search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Finally, there's a better way to soothe your skin. Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea for Men, more evolved skin care. What is wrong with you? get it to you. Found your paper in the driveway. Whatever it takes. Welcome back, everyone, to the 36th meeting between Iowa and Michigan State. 20th ranked top guys with a 10-point lead. With 10.54 to go here in the first half, 
First and ten for the Spartans from their own 20. Not in motion. Smoke is complete to Kavanaugh for the first down at the 32-yard line. An overcast, breezy, and a little bit of a chill in the air here at Kinnick Stadium. Michigan State against Iowa. Look at one of the key plays of the game so far. It happened early, right after the Spartans had scored a touchdown on a long drive. Jermell Lewis kicked the turbo in and gave the Spartans an education in acceleration into the end zone. That was one of the big momentum swings early in favor of the Hawkeyes. And Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rhodes. Juan Moss into the boundary. Run out at the 33, and Reese, what's happening down in Florida? Well, the Canes have been converting on third down, Mark. Three out of four is another Dorsey third down, making four out of five. Missed tackle right there, and Dorsey has ethnic sands for a big gainer down into Seminole territory, but twice Florida State has dropped interception chances against Ken Dorsey, but not the third down. Great depth by the backer, Michael Bolwer making the catch, and the Noles snuff out the attempt. Yes, sir. I think the Andrews feeling a little bit better now, right? Yeah, he puts a stick <laughs> on those guys on the sideline. I think he's an old school guy now. Is that what you defensive coordinators do sometimes? Yeah, but you're not supposed to do that. Oh, There's okay. an NCAA rule, no oh. sticking, so we won't tell him. I was just kidding about Mickey doing that. <laughs> Second and nine, Smoker back to fling it. A great catch at the 44 by B.J. Lovett. And Michigan State possessions of late somewhat futile. Two interceptions and a punt. They have come to life on this series. Once again, going away from Charles Rogers, coming back really the same play twice in a row on the flanker curl route against zone cover. First down and 10 after the reception. Not in motion. Run it back the other way, that's Dewan Moss. He's gonna be brought down for a loss at the 41 by Howard Hodges off the edge. The 6'2", 235-pound junior making a nice play. The best way to beat zone blocking is to penetrate. And you see Howard Hodges, 48, run off the football, get penetration. Howard Hodges a little bit undersized, but great quickness coming off the football. Michigan State's running game, meanwhile, has been somewhat inconsistent this year. There's a snapshot of just how inconsistent it can be from series to series. Second down and 13. They do have some talent, though. Smoker going to pass it. Completed the 43, and a nice tackle by D.J. Johnson. Let's go to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark, updating some Big Ten action. Wisconsin and Indiana, 6-3 game. Wisconsin on top. And Javon Hamden firing out there to Brian Lewis for the touchdown. The Hoosiers had all kind of trouble on offense. You recall what they did last year, but that was with Randall L. against Wisconsin. 10-6, that game in the second quarter. And look at San Jose State. They're on the board against the Buckeyes. Well, speaking of the Badgers, Lee Evans, the receiver, injured. Rogers said that he's going to speak with Lee Evans and talk about the pros and cons of leaving school early when he consider the injury factor. That was a sad story. Yeah. Lee Evans hurt yeah. at the end of spring practice last year. Third down and 10 in the timeout called by Michigan State. Charles Rogers, a lot of people still don't know, playing with some sore ribs, an injury suffered in the Notre Dame game. We'll be right back after this. Suzuki, proud presenting sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. Introducing Suzuki 00 and 7 event, featuring America's number one value plan. It's America's number one finance offer and America's number one warranty. 0% APR financing for five full years with zero down payment on all new Suzuki models. And now, all new Suzukis come with a 100,000 mile seven year powertrain limited warranty, like the XL7 with available third row seating. The smart choice is America's number one value plan. So move fast to your local Suzuki dealer today. I am my own force. 
And when it comes to me and my team, every link in the chain is strong. I am Sergeant First Class Brian Berkeydahl. And you can see my strength. Breaking news from Midas. Right now, get guaranteed lifetime brake pads or shoes for just $39.95. And you'll never have to buy brakes again for as long as you own your car. Next stop, Midas. Lifetime brakes, $39.95, only at Midas. Own Insomnia, Tuesday on DVD and video. A detective on the brink. Show me where she is. A killer setting a trap. No evidence that I killed Kay. And a DVD so packed with extras, you may never close your eyes again. Own Insomnia, Tuesday on DVD and video. ESPN's presentation of college football brought to you by the exciting lineup of Suzuki products. All proud presenting sponsors of the Heisman Trophy. And by the United States Army, an army of one. Well, from the pedestrian mall in South Dubuque to Kinnick Stadium, all points in between. A very exciting time for Iowa football fans. Third down and ten. Charles Rogers again at the top. Corner on him, and the safety probably doubling him. the shotgun they screen it and a nice move by Richard but he was brought down from behind by Fred Barr tremendous in pursuit fourth down for Michigan State Michigan State again coming up with other ways knowing that Iowa is locking up on Charles Rogers. Here Iowa went straight man under coverage. They try to throw the screen. The screen is a difficult play to run, the delayed screen against man-to-man -man because a linebacker simply has that back and closes on. Barr made a nice play, fourth down and 10. Hinkle calls for the fair catch at the 22-yard line. And we're gonna take a short break. The Hawkeyes looking for their sixth win of the season and third in Big Ten play. We'll be back. Sunday at 11, have breakfast with the NFL Countdown Crew. Where would you rather be right here, right now? Terry Glenn faces his demons in New England. Deep down inside, I probably was, I was really hurting because I wasn't out there. Get a glimpse of Emmett Smith's most prized possession. Jerry Rice turns 40. Are you nuts? Rice reflects on his 18 seasons, plus John Madden. And our spotlight shines on the Dolphins and Broncos. I'm all over that game now. Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. If someone said they wanted to turn off your DirecTV service, you wouldn't let them, right? Well, lately we've heard of some unscrupulous salespeople calling and claiming that you need to disconnect your DirecTV service, spend money on a new system, or that DirecTV is ending its service altogether. Don't be fooled by these false claims. There is no need to replace your DirecTV system, and there's no other DirecTV. Order any pay-per-view movie on Tuesdays in October for only $2.99 per title. We're not serious. When your son is dating a divorced woman. I was just thinking. About what? About you. And her ex-husband won't accept it. Take my house. Can you take my kid? Something is bound to explode. Oh my God, what happened? Nominated for five Academy Awards. <laughs> Sissy Spacek and Tom Wilkinson in the bedroom. First down and 10 for Iowa. Those of the ball at their own 21-yard line back here at Kinnick Stadium. I'm Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down in the field. The Spartans looking to get their vibe and whole biorhythms in sync right now. A little bit out of sync, especially offensively. Aaron Greving with his first carry of the afternoon. Greving, who started the year as the number one guy on the three deep, making it out to the 26-yard line. Greving a 5'11", 200. 11-pound junior. At one point last year, he had three touchdowns and three consecutive touches, tying an NCAA record, but it's been a, a season so far where he's been hampered by injuries. In the last football game last year, the Alamo Bowl, he carried the football 25 times. So he, coming into the season, was going to be the go-to back for Iowa, but the emergence of Fred Russell. Great dilemma to have on your hands if you're a head coach. Second down and five, grabbing again. Hurdled one would-be tackler. 
Brought down at the 27. Let's go back to a Big Ten update in the studio with Reese. Mark, you guys know that San Jose State's already won in an opposing Big Ten house, winning at Illinois, and they were within three of Ohio State. Craig Frenzel up top. Look at the sticky Velcro fingers of Chris Vance for the touchdown, 17 to 7. Arkansas coming off that six overtime loss to Tennessee, tied up with Auburn in Jordan Hare. Have been impressed with Mark and Reese are the receivers in the Big Ten Conference. There are some dynamic receivers in this league. Had a direct effect on some of the high scores we've seen this year in the Big Ten Conference. Third down and three for the Hawkeyes. Banks going to try and do it himself, and he will. He gets the first down before falling at the 38. All right, Banks still has not yet found his passing touch yet, but he gets it done on the ground, much to the dismay of Bobby Williams. Brad Banks again. Athleticism, make things happen. The great thing there, Mark, he didn't force the football. He was patient but yet he took his opportunity to run. It was about from that spot where he ran 44 yards to keep that drive alive last week. Visiting teams here at Kinnick Stadium facing many different challenges. Banks has a man, Jones! It's a cousin-to-cousin -cousin thing, touchdown! 62 yards! this season to his cousin C.J. Jones. Michigan State trying to make something happen in the running game brings the strong safety on the blitz. Iowa burns a great throw by Brad Banks. Aiden's extra point is good and it's 24 to 7. 24 points on the board. Banks and CJ have Hawkeye fans just chosen for some more touchdowns. We'll be right back. Want all the latest in home entertainment without the tangled mess? The 24-inch Toshiba Combination Flat Screen TV VCR DVD. It's everything you need in one simple system. And right now at Sears, enjoy 0% financing for one year. Call for a store near you. With this system, just plug it in and bam. You've got the digital technology of DVD, the functions of a VCR, the crisp picture of flat screen, and oh yeah, you've got more space and no more tangled mess. The 24-inch Toshiba Combination Flat Screen TV VCR DVD. If you find it priced lower, Sears will match it. Only Sears has the brands you want with the guarantees, credit, and service you need. Sears, where else? What have you been up to, Mr. Moneybag? It's okay. I put it on the credit card. Those interest charges are going to get us. Don't worry, it's our new Capital One no-hassle card. Check your mailbox today for Capital One's no-hassle card offer. Great low rates and none of the hassle. What's in your wallet? 24-7 with 6.22 to play in the first half. Iowa striking moments ago with a 62-yard touchdown catch by C.J. Jones from his cousin Brad Banks. That was the longest catch of his career. Previously had a 59-yarder against Indiana. And you would think at this point the Spartans have to respond to somehow. on the back down of the 12 is Jaron Hayes and Bafa exactly what happened on that last play. The thing that makes Iowa so dangerous to stop the running game, 
you try to get penetration. They bring the strong safety. They play three deep zone coverage behind it, but you're going to see the free safety suck up on a run fake, and the receiver gets in behind him for the post. C.J. Jones, it's a first and ten run stunt, three deep. The free safety sucks up. Great throw by Brad Banks, and your namesake, C.J. Jones, takes it to the house, Mark. Michigan State outscored on the season in the first half. They're a second half team, but you can't fall behind by too much. Go back to the third down conversion by Brad Banks with his legs to get the first down to set it up. Smoker under duress escapes and is tackled at the 13 yard line by Steen. And Reese Davis, what's happening down there in the dirty, dirty side? Well, you know, the last nine times Miami and Florida State have played, the team has scored first one. That doesn't mean you have to quit. Miami up 7 0. Nick Maddox gashing through that cane defense, goes 30 yards to the house, and we are locked up at seven in the Orange Bowl, guys. Bobby Bowden going back to his two back offense. And I really think that gives him the best chance for success with Greg Jones and Nick Maddox and also the play action pass of Chris Rick. Florida State not giving up. Second down and six. Two tight end formation for Smoker in the offense. Incomplete. Intended for Rodgers. Well, tonight at 7.45 Eastern, it's another Florida team, the Gators. Now a little bit out of the picture, taking on the number 15 LSU Tigers. 7.45 Eastern, tonight on ESPN, number 15 against number 16, Rex Grossman. I think now you have to say, has to come back for his senior season, there's no doubt. Hurt his chances the last couple weeks with his performance as far as Heisman goes. But keep in mind, he's only a junior. Right. Third and six. Michigan State just one of four on third downs today. Charles Rogers out wide. Smoker tackled back at the 12 by Matt Rock. His second impact play of the afternoon. Antoine Allen stepping up again, getting up underneath Charles Rogers, maybe holding him a little bit and talking a little bit, but it goes back to really a coverage sack, and you see Roth again coming inside, and blindsides Jeff Smoker right here. Michigan State looking to find a little bit more fire in its collective bellies right now. Back on its heels, son. A low-line drive returnable punt by Hinkle. He lets it bounce at midfield. And a flag thrown back at the 33-yard line after a 41-yard punt. Michigan State trying to get its mood just right. Special challenge here at Kinnick Stadium to do that, though. Penalty going to be against Iowa. Takes away great field position right here for Iowa. The thing about Iowa, for people that haven't seen them across the country, they are a big strike, big play team. Think of this game today. Kickoff return for a touchdown. Interception for a touchdown. Post route 65 yard touchdown. They are an explosive offensive, defensive, and special teams football team. You cannot sleep on Kirk Ferentz's crew. 4.29 to play here in the first half. Also keep in mind, they seem to always be ahead early and always hanging on at the end. They keep you around. From the 38-yard line, Greving in a tailback. Banks now audibly at the line. The three-step drop incomplete intended for Solomon. And Holly Roll, what about that mood for Michigan State? Right now, the Michigan State bench is definitely deflated. They're playing very low right now. They've struggled to get going on offense. Now, some might say it won't get any better after they go into the locker room. Many years ago, former Iowa coach Hayden Fry had the visitors' locker room painted pink after he read a psychology report that that made people warm and fuzzy, a little bit more peaceful, just the opposite of what you'd want a football team to be. Now, I'm not kidding. Everything in this locker room is pink from the benches to the shower stalls. We'll see if it has an effect. I've read a psychology study that players who play in black are more aggressive. So Michigan State may be two color schemes working against us today. 
It's all about the tints and tones, and Dallas Clark has the right color. Now to the 43-yard line. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. All right, we just saw a big Dallas Clark. I got another tied in for you. North Carolina State and North Carolina. Darian Durant. Going to drop one in there on Bobby Blizzard. Soft in. Kentucky transfer. 10-7. Tar Heels on top. And Auburn up by the same score on Arkansas. Daniel Cobb off to a nice start for Tommy Tuberville's team. All right, Reese, first down and 10. They gotta wake me up there. I'm out of my coma. Now. Feel fuzzy. Look, look at the warm and fuzzy. Now. I've seen all that pink. First down and ten. Revving. Right down to the 41 yard line and uh, tackled by Askew on the play. What about that locker room problem? Well, first of all, it's ugly. <laughs> but it could, second it could of use all, a new, new coat of pink. Uh, exactly. But you're thinking too much. I mean. Football players and coaches may be fragile. I don't think they're that fragile. I think some psychologist or psychiatrist somewhere made a bunch of money coming up with that theory. If you're in there worrying about what color that locker room is, you don't have enough things to worry about. So if you're not an opposing coach, you don't go in there and hang up some black curtains all around the place? Man, I had too many other things to worry about, Mark. <laughs> Second down and nine. Two tights and two wide outs, grabbing the lone back. Banks is looking to pass. Makes a play on his own, put it on spin cycle, and got away from the would-be tackler, brought down at the 35-yard line, Brad Banks. Doing it with his legs and his arm. Brad Banks, once again, shows his spin cycle, as you call it, ability right here. Mark, I am really impressed with Brad Banks. Number one in the Big Ten in pass efficiency, but really efficient with his legs as well and his decision-making. Kirk Ferentz said that, interestingly enough, he's not surprised by Banks' success and performance. He's very pleased with it. Told us that yesterday. I mean, just adamantly said, no, I'm not surprised. Third down and two. Greving trying to keep those legs churning right near the first down marker and stopped by Harmon on the play. And let's go back to Reese. All right, Mark, Missouri and Nebraska. David Horn, freshman from Omaha. They pulled the red shirt off of him, looking for a little spark and eye back, and he gets in the house. That tied the game at seven. Mizzou has added a field goal since then. They're back on top of the Huskers. They just started the second quarter. The whole complexion of the Big 12 Conference has changed with the emergence of Iowa State, Texas Tech, and Missouri. There in Missouri. The story here, though, 24 unanswered points by the Hawkeyes. After trailing 7 to nothing, a kickoff return for a touchdown, an interception, run back for a touchdown, and a big 64-yard strike to Jones from Banks. Michigan State showing safety blitz again. Thomas right up at the line of scrimmage. Levin getting a lot of carries. Right down to the 32, and let's go downstairs to Holly for more on Banks. Brad Banks, the Iowa quarterback, is one of 13 children, six brothers, six sisters. So you can imagine he's been getting a lot of phone calls this week, as, all, as you might imagine, from family members. He said they haven't had a lot positive to say, though. They've all been giving him grief for getting run down last week on his 44-yard scamper to put the game on the line. And they said, come on, lay off it. you got to eat more salads. You're a little bit too slow. Well, his roommate is his cousin, C.J. Jones, and uh, here Jones has a great uh, catfish and grits recipe, so maybe he needs to bulk up on that bus. Where does he go, to, to Des Moines to get that catfish, or what? <laughs> a blitz coming by the Spartans, and it's incomplete, and a late flag at the 27. It's against the defense. And Bobby Williams and his defense. Let's go back to Reese. Reese, what's coming up at halftime? All right, coming up on the Nivea Halftime Report, Mark, we've got showdown Saturday and now the Orange Bowl. We've got the kickers talking a little bit of smack between Miami and Florida State. Of course, across the Big Ten, Wisconsin getting more of a fight than it might have imagined from Indiana after the Hoosiers have played early. The game day guys in the shadow of Big Tech ready for the showdown of the Cotton Bowl. We'll check in with them. All right, Reese, boy, kickers talking smack. Now, that, that's a flag. That's worthy of a flag. First and ten. Banks on the quick three-step drop incomplete.
for Jones. And don't forget, 3.30 Eastern time today. Great games coming up on ABC College Football. The Red River rivalry, number two, Texas against number three, Oklahoma. Penn State against Michigan, a pivotal Big Ten game. And number seven, Oregon against number 25, UCLA. Bob Davey, who do you like in that Red River showdown? I like Texas. Really? Time for Chris Sims to step up, win a big football game. It's time for the Longhorns to win. Penn State, Michigan is going to be a very intriguing matchup as well. Mike Johnson really showing his skills of late. Second down and 10. Banks to pass. Amazing how he escapes when he steps up in the pocket sometimes, Bob. Up to the 26 yard line. That'll be third down and long. I think a good decision right there by Bill Miller, the defensive coordinator for Michigan State. He came with the pressure. You're almost better off, or you are better off, to pressure bad Brad Banks and blitz him. Against a four-man rush, there's too many seams in there for him to step up and run with the football. Third down and eight, under a minute to go here in the first half. Iowa well within Nate Kading's field goal range. And he does have the wind at his back, so that wouldn't be an issue either. We have a timeout down in the field. We're going to take a timeout with them. 24 to 7 when we come back to Kinnick Stadium. Stick around. We are dreamers. To ensure justice for everyone. Improved health care for all Iowans. That my family receives the same great education I did. But we are also Iowans. For over 150 years, we've been making Iowa a better place. One dream at a time. sports for the love of the game 24 to 7 with 33 seconds to go here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down in the field Iowa looking to improve to 3 and 0 in the Big Ten and 6 and 1 overall Michigan State playing its first road game of the season here after five consecutive games at the crib at home third down and eight Iowa tendency to run the football in these situations third and real long and the tailback reading in the football game but you see Brad Banks checking right here because it's straight man coverage Banks intended for Clark and just beyond his grasp and Brad be Banks down. an excellent control of this offense Mark Coming up with the line of scrimmage, doing a great job audibleizing right there. Just didn't make a great throw to Dallas Clark. Number 95, Nate Kading there, is a place kicker. But he thinks of himself as a quote-unquote real football player. <laughs> Three state championship teams in high school, football, soccer, and I believe track and field. This one coming from 43 yards out. Rife with confidence and accuracy. That's 15 consecutive field goals. He tacks on one more. It's 27 to 7. Hey, college football Saturday continues on ESPN2. South Carolina taking on perhaps the surprise in the SEC this year. Kentucky led by number 22, all 290 pounds of them, Jared Lorenzen. And then number 19, Air Force, taking on BYU. Air Force with a great comeback a couple of weeks ago against Utah has left them bubbling with confidence here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City Iowa area code 319 Mark Jones Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down in the field and what a game it's been the guys with the cobs of corn on their head treated to quite a performance with 27 unanswered points by Kurt Ferentz's team as happy as he is right now he's thinking one thing 
Well, actually, he's thinking a couple things because it's happened a couple weeks in a row. Uh, what is it? Come uh, back. Come back. Yep. Come back. Doc will be reminding his troops of that. Just a little bit, if not indirectly, then directly at halftime. Hayden. And the Spartans will start off on their own 20-yard line. Let's take a look at some of the big plays of the day so far by the Hawkeyes. The kickoff return by Jermel Lewis just moments after Michigan State had marched down the field to score a touchdown. Lewis coming back 95 yards the other way, untouched. And then Pagel with a pick. Once again, Smoker was looking for Charles Rogers. And it was a pick six. And then the next one was a huge connection between Jones and Banks. To win on the road, you better control the kicking game, and you better not give up big plays. And Mi Michigan State has been unsuccessful in both of those things. And Bob, what about Michigan State? They are coming off a bye week. You as a coach, there is no real formula there to handle your team, is there, in terms of how, what you do during a um, off week? I mean, how many days off do you give them? Do you give them days off? Michigan State gave their players Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off. Difficult decision, and I thought it was interesting that Bobby Williams chose to give his players Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, then come back and practice Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then keep them there over the weekend. Normally, you give college football players a chance to have the weekend off and maybe get home and get refreshed and get re-energized. But even more interesting, Mark, was the fact that they didn't scrimmage and they didn't have any contact. So they've gone really two weeks now without contact. Uh, but Michigan State, this is a pivotal game for them. High, high expectations coming into the season. Seven of their first eight football games at home. A lot of people, a lot of knowledgeable people thought Michigan State would be undefeated right now at this point in the season. This is a big crossroads game right now for Michigan State coming in here at Iowa City. Yeah, and Iowa, meanwhile, at 2-0 along with Ohio State, up near the top of the Big Ten standing so far, Michigan with a key game today against Penn State. Penn State losing to Iowa a couple of weeks ago at home. At that. First down and 10 for the Spartans. The handoff is to David Richard, the freshman out of St. Louis, Missouri. Plows his way beyond the 30-yard line to the 32, but as we mentioned a few moments ago, look at what has happened to Iowa in the past in terms of being the victims almost of comebacks. And you hate to bring up the negatives, but you know that Kirk Ferentz right there is thinking about that, but let's give Iowa credit. They have played basically a dominant first half here in all phases against Michigan State. First down and 10. And off is to Richard once again. That's the end of the first half. Bobby Williams' team trailing with a daunting task ahead in the next two periods of play. Right now, let's go back to the studio. Reese Davis in the Nibby for Men halftime report. Mark, another impressive first half performance from the Hawkeyes. 27 points they put on Michigan State. But the question about the Hawkeyes has been the ability to hold that lead. Glad to have you with us on the Nivea Halftime Report. Trev Alberts is here with me, and we've seen, as Mark and Bob were talking about, Iowa blow first half leads. But what is different about this pass defense so far today? They're ranked 116th in the country. They've done a nice job. Well, I think they're flying around a lot better. I think they are playing better, but I think on the other side, I think you have to look at Jeff Smoker right now. Jeff has not played his best game, couple interceptions. He's underthrowing his wide receivers, but the Iowa defense has came ready to play. They've done a fairly decent job against the run, but they're just flying around. You know, I mean, they're playing good zone defense, mixing up with man coverage, and sooner or later, Bob Sanders is going to flat out come out and smack you in the mouth. you got to love that guy. I, I'm a Bob Sanders fan because he will lay a hat. Yes, he will. He brings the wood. We've got other people who do this on the Nivea <laughs> Halftime Report, like Miami. They lay hats. They're invincible, right? You can't do anything with the Hurricanes, right? Um, don't tell Bobby Bowden that. Kirk and Coach, ESPN College Game Day, Saturdays at 10.30. Suzuki, proud presenting sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. 
Introducing Suzuki 0, 0, and 7 event, featuring America's number one value plan. It's America's number one finance offer and America's number one warranty. 0% APR financing for five full years with zero down payment on all new Suzuki models. And now, all new Suzukis come with a 100,000 mile seven year powertrain limited warranty, like the 145 horsepower Aereo. The smart choice is America's number one value plan. So move fast to your local Suzuki dealer today. I remember I was craving a cheese sandwich, only I didn't have cheese or a car. So I built my own ride. At the same time, an unsuspecting Mr. Yang Lem Chu was getting in his car. We rode 400 miles until fate intervened in Cheddar, New Mexico, at a house of cheese. And I can't help but think, was this coincidence or part of something bigger? Got me spinning, my bell is ringing, it's making my head cuckoo. You got to believe me if you ever leave me. I don't know what I'd ever do without you. What excites you? What makes you wonder? What new things make you say, wow? At Tech TV, new is what we do every day. Innovative television that explains, quick. explores, and helps you understand how new things work. You got it! See the amazing, breathtaking world of technology through the eyes of one truly original television network. Tech TV, new things, turn us on. This halftime report presented by Nivea for Men Aftershave Ball. More evolved skin care. Showdown Saturday. Glad to have you with us on the Nivea for Men halftime report. Reese Davis and Trev Alberts here. Six games matching teams from the top 25. Trev. And some of them playing better than we thought they would. Yes, much, much better. And that would certainly include the Florida State Seminoles. Bobby Bowden said that Miami was in another world, but the old coach said, you know, I always liked being the underdog. He was certainly a decided underdog down in the Orange Bowl and still is this afternoon. But the Canes take the field. Miami's first possession, second and five. Ken Dorsey looking for Kellen Winslow Jr. What a great pass. In this first series, I thought Miami had it all. It was a 13-play drive, 89 yards, and then you give it to your running back. And look at this run right here. Look like Greg Jones from a couple weeks ago. Powers into the end zone. Easy touchdown, Miami 7-0. And the team that has scored first has won the last nine meetings. Kane's trying to get more. Dorsey, who was lucky wasn't picked off two previous times, is picked off by Michael Bolway there. Snuffs out a threat, and the Seminoles then started running downhill. Nick Maddox busting to the outside. 30 yards out for the touchdown, and Maddox into the end zone in Florida State. Right now is a third and goal at the 10-yard line. Just over two minutes left to go in the first half. The Seminoles have already exceeded the rushing total that Miami has allowed on average. Over 175 yards rushing already. They are spanking Miami's front seven, especially the front four. It's shocking to me. Florida State is running up. Chris Ricks has only completed three passes, Reese. That's unbelievable. You remember last year, the problem was turnovers. Florida State outgained Miami, but turned it over six times, did Ricks. This is San Jose State, Ohio State. That is Maurice Perrette, the freshman. Well, they just call him Mr. Touchdown because he scores a lot of those. Craig Prenzel is going to try to balance things out, finding Chris Vance. Yeah, here's a 37-yard touchdown pass. If Craig Prenzel can do this consistently, Ohio State could have a great offense. He's the only question. San Jose State are already won in a Big Ten house, winning at Illinois. And they were hanging around at 17-7. They're a little full out backfield. Perrette goes in for the second time on the day. And Ohio State, 24-7, seemingly cruising right now. Our the Buckeyes, as they take on the Spartans, they are undefeated, and they've got Wisconsin on the road coming up next week. It's a 24-7 game at the half. A little battle on Tobacco Road, a little pure old-fashioned hate between North Carolina State and North Carolina. Phillip Rivers 
T.A. McClendon, another freshman back. T.A. showing his effectiveness as a receiver, and then T.A. would go into the house. Yeah, you can see just a simple, you have that kind of passing game like this. You see, it just bounces it outside. T.A. McClendon has nice speed, but what separates great backs is vision. You see the vision there, it finds it outside. It's a 7-3 game. Darian Duran had a huge game against Arizona State last week. Bobby Blizzard, some fine hands for a tight end there. Well, you don't try to cover tight end with a linebacker. Not a tight end Not like that. Not that tight end, get some anyway. safety back there and some safety help. Nice, nice pass. Look at North Carolina. Jeb Terry said this isn't much of a rivalry. We always beat North Carolina State. Well, he's backing it up so far. Anyway, they're deep in the first half. It's a 10-7 game. Tar Heels on top of that one. Down at Virginia. Clemson and UVA. This is Matt Schaub and Wally Lundy with a great one-handed catch. Look at this scrap. That's a great pass. You know, it, look, Matt Schaub has played very well, but he's gotten guys like him to make great catches. That's a great reception. 6-3 game late in the half after a tremendous, tremendous Brian Matt's interception. Ty Hill goes into the house for Tommy Bowden's team and well, so far, it's a good first half for both Bowdens. Uh, Bobby's on top, so too is Tommy, 10-6. Willie Simmons moving him around in the pocket. They've had some rushing. Yusef Kelly has done fairly well running the football. Clemson has a nice offense defensively playing pretty well. Good football game. That game's going on over on ESPN2. Auburn and Arkansas, the Hogs coming off that six overtime affair. And Darius Howard, who played so well against Tennessee, scoring against the Tigers and the Hogs. Whooping up 7-0. Daniel Cobb looking for Devin Romashudu, one of the many fine freshman wide receivers the Tigers have. It's a great pass and a great catch. Daniel Cobb does his play after play, will have a great play, and then he'll turn the ball over. He fumbled already. He's thrown an interception. That's the whole thing for Auburn right now. You see two interceptions for Daniel Cobb. He cannot turn the football over if you're Auburn. The right reverence team up 14 to 10. You know, teams that have lost in overtime games in 1A, when I mean, it's gone longer than four overtimes, only one team has come back yeah. to win after that, so Arkansas is trying to turn that around. We'll have to see how they fare in the fourth quarter. You look at the SEC West right now, and Auburn's off to a good start. They still haven't beaten a team with a win over a 1A team. But LSU, after the disappointment at Virginia Tech, they've sort of quietly been building toward the showdown they have on ESPN tonight with Florida. Yeah, they've been quietly building, but I think the average person would tell you, well, they've been quietly building against nobody. And so I think that's what we're going to find out. I can't wait to see this LSU defense versus Rex Grossman. We all know what happened against Ole Miss last week. Want to see how Rex bounces back, how this offense bounces back. Even Ron Zook, the head coach, said some of it was Rex's fault. He didn't get us out of the proper calls, audible maybe to a running play. We'll see how he responds. And lost in all this Florida hype and the offense not doing well is the very good John Thompson defense of Florida. We will find out. Can Matt Matt Mock throw the football enough because I don't think LSU is going to be able to run the football against this Florida defense. Well, they haven't been able to pass it at all for sure, but their defense has been outstanding. Number one in total defense. You know, Thompson was Saban's defensive coordinator for about an hour and a half. They know each other. Well, they, well briefly, I think they were introduced. <laughs> LSU in Florida, college football Saturday, 7.45 Eastern time. It ought to be a frenzied atmosphere in the swamp as LSU tries to prove that they are the new kingpins in the SEC. They are the reigning champions after all. And over on ESPN2, South Carolina and the battleship Lorenzen. Or do you like the round mound of touchdown better? Well, I, I like the Air Force-BYU game. That's the game I'm watching. Air Force is unbeaten. Chance Harridge, a fine quarterback for them. The Cougars and the Falcons will go at it. Must be sound in the kicking game. Iowa and is. Iowa is very sound. What a big play they get in the return game from Jamel Lewis again. Now there's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea for Men. More evolved skin care. Seven days. Not since The Exorcist or Rosemary's Baby Leave it alone! has a movie been so truly frightening. The Ring. Ready PG-13. Special sneak preview tonight. He's all made out of, like... Hard stuff? I don't know. I have a hydrant teeth. Dental floss. Our children really need good dental care and education. So Crest came to us and said, we can help. Do you know how to take care of your teeth? You can brush your teeth in self circles. Oh, that's what I want you to do. I want to have a great smile when I grow up. My son Donovan and I are making sure everyone in Philly is eating good. 
Hey, you need some nice, hot, chunky soup to fill you up right. Hey. Campbell's Chunky Sirloin Burger. Big chunks of veggies and hearty sirloin burgers grilled to perfection. How can I thank you guys? Campbell's Chunky Sirloin Burger fills you up right. Back on the Nivea for Men halftime report. Glad to have you with us. And boy, what is unfolding down in the Orange Bowl. Florida State up 10-7. Chris Ricks on third down. A dart to Talman Gardner. And the Seminoles are on top 17-7. You know, Larry Coker's team never trailed at the half. He's 17-0. Get a little run game going. Look at that confidence in Chris Ricks all of a sudden. That was a nice throw right there. We will keep an eye on that for you. Florida State threatening to go to the half with the lead. Missouri and Nebraska. Nebraska's beaten Missouri 23 straight times, 125 in a row at home. Fumble on the exchange. Missouri's Brandon Barnes has it, and oh, they would make it pay off. Brad Smith staying in the pocket. Nice throw to Darius Outlaw, and that would lead to a Zach Abram touchdown. It's seven nothing, but. David Horn, they pulled the red shirt off of him. Yeah, we needed a little burst. I mean, Nebraska needed someone we, to come was in. That, was that well, we? they did, and, and they, they needed a burst. Right. They finally got one. <laughs> David Horn's a freshman, but Missouri's kicked two field goals, had nice drives, but if they're going to win this game, it'd have to be touchdowns. Well, you're the Husker. I didn't say we. You're the Husker hero at uh, Lincoln's yeah, Day, I understand. So uh, you can get a little wee. It's 13 to 7 That's right terrible. now. Texas hand him on top of Baylor, 7 0 in him with the big offensive explosion and the losing effort against Tech last week. It's okay. Everybody slips every now and then. <laughs> the Big Ten, Wisconsin and Indiana. Boy, Indiana laid it on them last year, but that was with Lebron Williams and Randall L. And, uh, and, and Brian Lewis. Brian Lewis, a 32-yard run there. And on the same drive, third and goal from the five, Ron Hamdren looking for Lewis, and Badgers had that three-point lead, and it would be a race right there. 10-6, Indiana. Taking the lead over Wisconsin. Wisconsin coming off a loss of Penn State, perhaps a little bit of a hangover effect. And Jerry DiNardo's team now trailing at the half, 16 to 10, as Alvarez's crew has gotten back on top. And that one, Wisconsin off to the good five and one start. Don't forget, we go right to the pros. Sunday night football, Ricky Williams has been outstanding. The Broncos, we'll see how they stack up against Williams in that vaunted Miami rushing attack. Sunday night, 8.30 Eastern time. It all starts off with Boomer and TJ on primetime at 7.30. Isn't Iowa supposed to be the second worst pass defense in the nation? Not today. Not in this one. They are up by 20 at the half. Game day guys from Texas coming up. What's that doing out here all by its lonesome? In the middle of the ocean. It's a caution. A salvage crew is about to discover a world beyond our own. I know all of this isn't real. We have to get out of here now. We're all trapped here. Ghost Ship Rated R starts Friday, October 25th. Without a Yamaha ATV, you're not going very far. The Grizzly 660 Automatic from Yamaha. The only ATV with push-button front diff lock and four-wheel independent suspension. The Grizzly 660 Automatic. Where you go now is up to you. Now get a worn winch with select models plus 0% financing on every Yamaha ATV. At Michigan State University, we're on the move. Since 1993, our overall rankings are up dramatically. Our fundraising continues to climb. Our students are some of the best and brightest in the nation. Our campus reaches around the world. The only thing we've kept down is our cost. There's momentum at Michigan State University. I there's so many intricate details to the game. It becomes a chess match. I tend to look in the guy's eyes. Is he intense? Is he ready? Has he prepared? Is he afraid? Try to get a, a feel for the way guys stand, for guys blitzing. You know, does he do anything different than when he's playing zone? You have a lot of guys out here who are just artists. That's what the game of football is. It's nothing but an art. NFL Sunday Ticket on DirecTV. Flip through up to 14 games a week throughout the regular season. Believe me, when I retire, I'm going to wear my NFL Sunday Ticket out. Tommy. What did I tell you about riding without a helmet? What happens if you fall? You can get hurt. 
Now promise me you'll always wear a helmet. I promise. Good. Now climb up that ladder and get daddy that dish. Direct TV Movers Connection. Leave your old dish and we'll install a new one with just a phone call. Direct TV. Happy watching. This halftime report presented by Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm. More evolved skin care. Texas State Fair in Dallas, neutral turf for the Red River rivalry since 1929. And the folks here agree on little, but they have taken notice of Miami's early 10 point deficit yes, late in the first half. Yeah. They know the winner here could be number one if the Canes don't come back. This really is college football heightened. It's faster, it's nastier. In big games, Oklahoma's certainly had the edge. They win these top 10 games with a formula by winning the turnover takeaway battle, by taking the first half lead, and then by protecting it with that dominant defense. You know, the Longhorns have outgained 18 straight opponents, but it's not yards, it's points that's the problem. And you know, Oklahoma wins these kind of games, these big games like today, with defense. They make big plays. But Texas today is ready to match game breaker for game breaker with that Oklahoma defense. Now you take a look at number 11, Derek Johnson. He gets wonderful position. He's a tall, Really good looking athlete. Watch the way he intercepts this ball with his hands and then takes off. Now, here's the play by Rod Babers that he absolutely, right here, wins the. The Longhorns with the field goals will beat Oklahoma. You're Oklahoma. Well, Dusty Mangum, he's going he's to have to improve from last week. It's going to come down to Texas. Which defense is going to win the game? Texas is incredibly gifted, and they're very athletic. They play a ton of man coverage, which means can Oklahoma protect their quarterback, Nate Hibble, and give him time to throw the football downfield against man coverage? Because once you protect the quarterback against man coverage, it's like backyard football, one-on-one. -on -one. There against Alabama, they did protect Hibble, and Hibble demonstrates the ability to get the ball thrown with a nice touchdown field. Hibble has matured dramatically from a year ago. He's making better decisions. He's only, he hasn't thrown an interception in 148 attempts going back to last year. And that's the key to this game, protecting Hibble, giving him time to throw. The big plays from Oklahoma's past game are the difference. I like Oklahoma to win it. Protecting Hibble because they're one hit away from having Paul Thompson in the ball game. The guy's got about 14 career attempts. In Dallas, the scene is set. The Red River shootout should be a great defensive struggle. Now there's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea for Men. More evolved skin care. Own Insomnia, Tuesday on DVD and video. From Christopher Nolan, the director of Memento. A cop who needs to know. A killer who knows too much. Al Pacino, Robin Williams, Hilary Swank. Own Insomnia, Tuesday on DVD and video. What, yo, me? Where's the dick? Only Tostito Scoops have the bite-sized bowl-shaped design that's perfect for dipping and dunking every time. I thought that was a myth. <laughs> so however you like to dip, there's only one dip lover's chip. I own this court. Yeah. No, no, I really own this court. You guys gotta go. <laughs> Tostito Scoops, the dip lover's chip. Terminator, Dawn of Fate, rated T for T. Back here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, Michigan State trailing by 20 points after initially Bob Davey leading by a score of 7 0, 27 unanswered ones scored by Iowa. Coming into the game at the top of the show, we talked about Charles Rogers. His great record of a touchdown in 13 consecutive regular season games in jeopardy right now, Bob. He's been virtually a non factor. He has, but don't go away because Charles Rogers will be back. Give 
Iowa credit, though. They've made it extremely difficult on Charles Rogers. The second thing, Jeff Smoker has underthrown him. Here's an example of that on the deep ball. But you sense that Charles Rogers is starting to get a little bit frustrated. But when the great players get frustrated, they step up and make big plays. I look for Charles Rogers to make some things happen here in the second half. He's a guy that is no stranger to heroics. Remember against Notre Dame a few weeks ago, that touchdown catch, which you've probably seen at nauseum right now, over and over again at the back of the end zone, getting that left foot inbounds. Maybe the catch of the year, so surely Charles Rogers poised and ready to mount some type of challenge to that Iowa defense here in the second half as Michigan State will start on offense here in the third quarter. Cadence kick to the back of the end zone. Let's take a look at our gateway game track so far. Iowa has made several key big plays today, including Jamel Lewis and this 95-yard kickoff return. And then it was Hagel stepping in for the interception and took it back six the other way. His third interception of the year. And then C.J. Jones... Takes it to the house on the catch from Bad Brad Banks. That was 62 yards, and that's where we are right now. First down and 10 for the Spartans. The toss to Moss. Turns it north-south, and is brought down after a gain of about two by Howard Hodges. Let's go downstairs, find out what's happening with Holly Rowe. Holly? Guys, this sign was posted all over the Iowa locker room this week. The hay is not in the barn. That's an old farmer saying means the work is not done yet. Kurt Ferentz said he reminded of players of that in the locker room based on their giving up big fourth quarters in the past. For Bobby Williams, they burst out of the locker room. The door slammed open. The team ran out on the field and actually ran me over. He said, we've got to come out and play fired up just like these kids are right now. He also said Iowa's done a good job taking away Charles Rogers, looking them to isolate him more here in the second half. All right, Holly, and don't get run over anytime soon. We need you down there. Smoker runs into his own man and is brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 17-yard line. And number 45, Jonathan Babineau, who is described as a diamond in the rough, really making a mark on defense now. Iowa give them credit. Four-man rush. You're going to see Babineau with a great effort. Keep chasing, keep chasing. Right here, number 48, Babineau on the sack. Great effort right there by Jonathan Babineau. In spring football last year had a teammate just step on his foot, ended up breaking a bone in his foot, ended up missing a good portion of time, but is back in earnest now. Third down and 14. Smoker with time, and now steps up, fumbles it. And Fred Barr pounced on the loose ball for the Hawkeyes. Just right now plays too deep zone. The corner just harassing Charles Rogers. DJ Johnson, once again, Jeff Smoker in a third and 15. You're not going to scramble for it. And he coughs the football up. Jonathan Babineau with stripping the football. Babineau, a converted fullback, gets the ball out of there. Fred Barr recovers. An awful way for Michigan State to start this second half. Oh, no doubt. First down and 10 now in great field position, working with a short field at the 21-yard line. Cervantes and Fred Russell time. Bouncing it outside, Russell. Got a nice block, maybe a hold on the edge by Hinkle. Saw a lot of Fred Russell, Bob, early in the first half, but not much in the second quarter. And of course, at 5'8", durability sometimes a question. And coming into this game, Fred Russell with a shoulder injury, but he showed a lot of juice right there on that run. Mark, you could see his explosiveness right there. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Spot of the foul. Still first down. Reese, what's happening down there in Little Havana in Miami? All right, Mark, just before the half, the Canes driving deep in the half, down by 10 points to Florida State. Ken Dorsey, Kellen Winslow Jr., touchdown, 17-14 at the half. And Small Lord just hit Aaron Galladay for the touchdown, and Nebraska has a lead. Right after the penalty here, it'll be first down and 14. 
Russell again cuts it back. Russell keeps those feet moving. His forward progress will take him up to the 11 yard line. About a yard short of the first down, a pickup. Boy, he got back 14 yards. Zone blocking at its best. And right now, you see the cutback, the vision of a Fred Russell. And you're going to see him kick it into overdrive right here with the explosiveness. And I'm not sure at the end of this that it shouldn't have been a penalty late on Michigan State. A little bit of roughness at the end of that play on Thomas Wright, number 43, lifting his leg up off the ground. Second down and one. Russell letting this game do the talking, hesitates, patiently finds the hole and gets the first down. Fred Russell has really been basking in the glow of the spotlight of late, averaging 144 yards per game coming into this contest. Interestingly enough, his visit to Michigan State was taken with Terrell Dorch, now a DB for the Spartans. Their host was Josh Shaw, the defensive lineman now in the NFL. Russell told me, hey, I had a great time, but not that good. I chose Iowa. <laughs> Sense with Fred Russell, the thing that great players have, that extra gear that a Charles Rogers has. You just sense that he's going to will it into being a positive run. First down and goal to go. Fred Russell again. Vision will score you some touchdowns. The Hawkeyes strike again. We talked early about the outside zone where offensive linemen are just totally synchronized with a flat step. This play is designed to go outside. Uh, Michigan State builds a wall and Fred Russell breaks it back and smells that goal line. It's amazing how deep he gets that ball in the backfield, Mark. The fact that they have him back there at nine yards. That is the sixth touchdown of the year. For Fred Russell, and Bob, you talked about it earlier. Sometimes when you have a guy who's a little bit shorter than the average running back, it's tough to pick him up. Sometimes what you can't see really can hurt you, like Fred Russell. We'll be right back. Evil has returned. Ah, uh, hello, Clary. Hannibal and Silence of the Lambs. Good evening. On the DVD collection today, rated R. TL Type S. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 Health Club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure and check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. On an all-new bank borrowing deal, the race is on. Every second counts. Team Contact has major plans in the minor leagues. They kind of played a few tricks on it. While Team Kobe brews up some plans of their own. Sweaters off, sweaters off. Bank borrowing deal, Tuesday at 8 on ESPN. Been a story of turnovers so far today for the Michigan State Spartans. Iowa able to take advantage of those turnovers, leading 7, about 34 to 7. They've scored 17 points off of three miscues by the Spartans. Williams kick knuckles down to the six. The Spartans will start off on their own 20. One more look at the touchdown. I want to show you something right here. It's a great picture of zone blocking 
how flat Iowa's offensive line gets. They get everybody running east and west, and Michigan State chooses to flatten out with him. So as you see this progress, you're going to see everybody going east and west, except one guy decides right here to go north and south, and it shows a great picture of everybody going sideways, the running back getting up the field. Iowa studies the Denver Broncos a lot in the offseason, and that's where this zone scheme has come from. Damon Dowdell, Bob, now in at quarterback, completes his first pass to B.J. Lovett. And we love going to Reese in the studio, Reese. Mark, Carnell Williams may be the best pure runner in college football. He's certainly got some company. He's certainly right up there. He's ninth in the country in rushing and watching. Find a little seam against Arkansas and go in for Auburn. But he may be a Cadillac, but Fred Talley, will, Fred Talley looks a little bit like a Porsche here. He's going to go 80 yards to the house for the right reverend Houston Nuts team, and they're back on top. 21-17, deep in the first half. All right, Reese, and back here, the new quarterback, Damon Dowdell, is a freshman side to in five games. And it's over just 45 minutes. Going up top. And Rodgers had one fall through his arms. Been an afternoon punctuated by that type of frustration by number one, Charles Rodgers. Dowdell put it right where it had to go. If anything, Charles Rogers struggles with sometimes is making what some may refer to as the routine catch. And here, certainly, Damon Dowdell gives him an opportunity to make a play, and Charles didn't make it. He's one of those players that makes the tremendous catch, the acrobatic catch, but sometimes is inconsistent on making a simple catch. Sets up a third down and seven for Michigan State. Dowdell a little bit more mobile than Smoker and tiptoes out of bounds at the 31 yard line for the Michigan State first down. So they get a little bit more of a escapability dimension with uh, Dowdell in there, Bob. And what's going through this young man's mind right here on the sidelines? Jeff Smoker. The high expectations coming into this season. He's been now a three year starter. People don't appreciate the ups and downs of college football. A 19, 20-year-old young man, a great young man that I had a chance to recruit, how much he's invested in this. So the dynamics of seeing Damon Dow Dowdell in that game right now. Dowdell hands it off to number 11, David Richard, 6'1", 230-pound freshman. But back to Smoker for a second. Uh, you know, we talked earlier about how offensive coordinator Mo Watts told him you're not just one of the guys anymore. The spotlight's going to be on you as quarterback with the high expectations for the Spartan team. And Smoker said himself, anything short of winning the Big Ten is going to be a disappointment this year. Exactly. And that's the kind of expectations he had personally and the expectations he had for this football team. But Bobby Williams did the right thing. Jeff Smoker, two interceptions, and then pops the ball up on the first series of the third quarter. You have to give the young guy a chance here. Dowdell under pressure, fumble. Roth knocked it loose, and the Hawkeyes have it again. Cole recovered it. That's the fourth turnover of the game for Michigan State. Maybe I spoke too soon on giving the young guy his opportunity, but any time you get blindsided as a quarterback, coming from the quarterback's blind side, there's a chance that you can cough the football up. You're going to see Rowe, the defensive end, but you're going to see coming from the blind side, strip the football out, and you're going to see Colin Cole come in and recover the fumble. But number 31, Matt Rowe, yesterday Kirk France told him, he told us, he is a very aggressive football player. It's down and 10 for the Hawkeyes. Two tight ends, two wide outs. That's Jones in motion, who already has a touchdown pass. Banks to pass. Complete. That's number nine, Mo Brown. With Mo Yards for Iowa. They are feeling it <laughs> they right now. They're in a groove. Oh, this yeah. whole stadium is feeling it. And go back to last week, Iowa playing at times sluggish, at times sloppy against Purdue, but winning that football game 
Kirk France with a great opportunity to teach lessons this week, but in a positive atmosphere, having won last week. And they have come out here hitting on all cylinders today. Has really kept their attention first and 10 after the 12-yard pickup. Russell brought down to the line of scrimmage that time. But number 59, Clifford Dukes, starting defensive end for the Spartans been as consistent as anyone has been all year on the defense for Michigan State. The thing State. I love about Fred Russell, you see him right there with a smile on his face. He loves to play the football game. He really enjoys it. Great personality. A lot going on with him this week. Told me about the school. Trying to balance school and football, keep it up. Handed in a nice term paper. He feels he uh, would be deserving about uh, B plus or an A on that. You think this professor may be listening? Are you? I'm campaigning for him, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> Go work a little harder than that. Second down and 11. Here he is, writing a successful paper here, Russell. Out of bounds at the eight yard line. And another pretty good back in the Big Ten with more Reese Fletch, Reese Davis. Yes, Mark, I've heard that this freshman is uh, highly touted. Maurice Claret against San Jose State is 27 7. Renzel works for the end zone. Renzel uh, is going to dump it out to 13. Good things happen many times. And 13 gets 34 7. Buckeyes are rolling in. Look at this thing. Looks as if the Illini are motivated by the cannon trophy. It's 24 9. Interesting matchup next week for Purdue as they are at home against Michigan. I think Maurice Claret with some vertical right there. Got some hops. Third down and four. Little option this time. And Russell brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 11. Michael Abinjo and Clifford Dukes making the stop on the play. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, some people here in Iowa have made a case that Fred Russell is being overlooked. After all, he is rushing for more yards a game than Maurice Claret from Ohio State. But the offensive line said it best. Sometimes they overlook him in the huddle. He is so little, they forget he's there. The only times they know he's there is when he comes back from a hard hit and he's giggling. They say he always laughs after somebody hits him hard. Wow. Interesting way to take a hit. Hating in for a field goal attempt. He's already made two today from 36 and 43. This one from 28. And the streak lives another kick. He has made 17 straight, dating back to last year. We'll be back. Behind them is a snippy maitre d' and a wilted Caesar. In front of them is a family drama playing itself out. But right now, life is perfect. Thanks to a full moon, a powerful engine, and the Audubon-tested suspension of the Acura RL. I don't know how you do it. I really don't. I put together some really impressive deals. But this thing you've pulled off, it's amazing. A big and tasty for just a dollar? How do you do it? What's your secret? You're a man of few words. I like that. Got a buck? You're in luck because you can get a delicious, beefy, big and tasty or a McChicken sandwich for just a dollar every day at McDonald's. Together, Grimace, we could own this town. Reviewing our last fiscal year, the numbers from January were slightly better than the numbers from February. However, the numbers in January were identical to the numbers in March. The numbers in April were slightly lower than the numbers in March, but identical. Like playing games? Come to Best Buy, where you can play the latest video games and try out a lot of other cool stuff. Best Buy. Go ahead, turn on the fun. One to go in the third quarter of play. Iowa with a commanding 30-point lead. Folks, if you're just joining us, Michigan State took the opening drive down the field and scored to make it 7-0. Since that point, it has been a story of opportunity for Iowa, converting on turnovers to the tune of 37 unanswered points. Mark Kading, Bobby Williams. You come back with Jeff Smoker, and you keep the freshman, Damon Dowdell, in the game. Each quarterback has turned it over here in the second half. Hayes takes a knee nine yards deep. And don't forget that join us later tonight. It'll be LSU number 15 against number 16, Florida. Rex Grossman trying to get his season back on the rails after really having a couple of poor games. As Heisman hopes fading very quickly. LSU, one of the uh, 
intriguing stories in the SEC. That uh, pivotal SEC game tonight at 7.45 Eastern time on ESPN. Damon Dowdell still in a quarterback, his second series. Reach the pass. Love it. Brought down roughly at the 20. A physical football player roaming in that secondary is number 33, Bob Sanders. And here you're going to see the strength of Bob Sanders. Just bench press B.J. Lovett to the ground right there. Tony pressed about 320 a few times. Second down and five. And off to Jaron Hayes, the 5'9 freshman. He's the speed guy of the three backs and there's a flag down at the 27 yard line but Bob one thing we haven't really talked about recently anyway was the proficiency of the secondary and the whole defense actually of Iowa so much was made of them being ranked number 116 Illegal formation offense not enough men on the line penalty is declined third down they were next to last against the pass but they've responded today and right now you sense them Gaining confidence each time that ball's snapped. It's like a feeding frenzy. You look at the sacks, you look at the forced fumbles, the interceptions, and most importantly, the points off of turnovers. Boy, Norm Parker really is a sly fox, isn't he? A great third down defense for Iowa. Michigan State is two for seven on third downs. Dowdell completes the pass to Love It. Spotted just about a foot short of the 30-yard line. I think you go for it right here if it's not a first down. You're down 30 I think points. Go for it. Well, Iowa has given up some big leads in the second half. But Michigan State, right now anyway, not showing many vital signs of life. One thing I found. It's a lot easier to make those fourth down decisions from up here in this box. Or <laughs> well, really, they're fourth down suggestions. Right. Down there, you make decisions. I like that. Okay, fourth down and one. I didn't hesitate, did I? No, I you go were for it. very decisive at that time. <laughs> Daly gets it off. Not a great effort. Pinkle with the fair catch call at the 46. And Boy, Michigan's spirit's broken right now, but what about breaking some other things, Holly Rowe? Well, Iowa's goal is to be the most physical team in the Big Ten, and their strength and conditioning coach, Chris Doyle, has a great motive for them. All of the players wear these shirts break the rock. In their locker room is a huge rock. The analogy, if one player hits it once, not much will happen, but everybody hits it together, it will eventually break. The team says when they meet their goals at the end of the season, they will break the rock and everyone will get to take home a piece. They say when they leave the weight room doors, over the si over the doors there's a sign, the road to the Rose Bowl starts here, and the players really buy into it and believe it. Yeah, they certainly have, especially in the last three weeks, Holly. Russell brought down at the 48-yard line. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. Six overtimes, and the right Reverend Nuts fellas have a little energy, it seems. Up 21-17 on Auburn. Damon Duvall gets that punt blocked by Bo Mosley. It sets up a hog field goal right before the half, and Arkansas is up by a touchdown at the break. Something about strength coaches, you can always pick them out, can't you? He wasn't hard to pick he's out. <laughs> he wasn't, he's not a secondary coach. <laughs> Talk about that. That rock, they put some explosives in there today. Yep. Michigan State's helped them put a couple sticks in there themselves, made it a little easier. That offensive line, a prime example of the type of work Chris Doyle has done with that strength program. Russell brought down at the 48-yard line. And what about the growth and development, literally, of that offensive line and the evolution of them as a group since the time they were freshmen, Bob? Three of those were tight ends, Mark when they came in. You look at the unbelievable weight gains they've made, that shows me hard work, dedication, hours in that weight room. And that's why this is a veteran, experienced offensive line that has an awful lot invested in this football program. Paying dividends. Thanks. Rifled it, but it's incomplete. 
Intended for Hinkle, broken up nicely by Broderick Nelson on the corner. And it'll be fourth down. In comes the punt team led by David Bradley. You almost got the feeling that Banks could have taken off and gotten it himself that time. I'm surprised he didn't, Mark. He, he actually had contained broken right there. Fourth and six, the Hawkeyes with a commanding 30-point lead. It's 6.04 to go here in the third quarter of play. Kavanaugh standing on his own 11-yard line for the Spartans. And there's a flag down on the field. Prior to snap, false start offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Mark, to you wonder at some point, do you put number one Charles Rogers back here as the punt returner? I know Kavanaugh last week had an 88-yarder, but Michigan State's at the point right now, and the reason I thought they should have gone for fourth down, there's no turning back now. Pull out all stops. This is a critical football game for this football program today in Iowa City. Still suffering a bit right now anyway from their road woes. Just one and seven on the road over the last couple of years. Kavanaugh back at the 15. Brought down at the nine yard line. He was running east-west and was tackled by number 25, Pagel. Who's made his indelible mark very obvious on this game today. We'll be right back after this. Tracy. Tracy. What? What's the story? How about a little hustle? I'm not taking it easy. You think the world revolves around I you? I got a lot of teeth to brush. You're another pampered athlete. That's. Wally, no! No! Zerbiak! Serbia, get out here. There's a line. Today we're learning how Dell helps people order America's favorite PC. We're supposed to write a report on what we learned. So you're a big video game player. It sounds like you're really into music. That's cool. Oh, so you're on the road a lot. You have two kids in college. <laughs> I was hoping that we could get her Hey, how's it going, guys? Mr. Richards, we don't want to get anyone in trouble, but everyone just seems to be chit-chatting. Right, but they're not just talking, they're listening. You can't make someone's perfect PC if you don't find out how they're gonna use it first. That's exactly what I told her, sir. Call or go online now and get a Dimension desktop for just $5.99 after a $50 instant savings. Featuring an Intel Pentium 4 processor for awesome performance for today's digital entertainment. Recording music, sharing photos, gaming, and beyond. Right now, you'll get a free digital camera. Get great deals on notebooks, too. Dude, you're getting a Dell. Hey, Mr. Reacher, I don't want to get anyone in trouble, but... Your perfect PC? It's easy as Dell. Dell PCs use Intel Pentium 4 processors. ESPN's presentation of college football brought to you by the more powerful Acura 3.5 RL and by McDonald's. Well, from the time you hit the ground at the airport at Cedar Rapids, at the rental car counter, along the pedestrian mall, to checking into the hotel, everybody asking, what about those Hawkeyes? So far, they're answering a lot of questions. And come up with a pick. DJ Johnson. Back to the 18-yard line. And that's the third turnover for Michigan State here in the second half. Five overall. Michigan State again trying to go up top to Charles Rogers. Another case of just a simply underthrown deep ball. Damon Dow. Follows the lead right there of Jeff Smoker and underthrows Charles Rogers. Give Iowa's defense credit today, though. They have risen to the challenge. Yeah, especially the secondary. A much maligned secondary. First down and 10. Russell on the run. 
Brought down at the 12-yard line. And Reese, a big battle go down with the ACC. What's up? And the number 11 team in all the land in trouble. North Carolina State against North Carolina. Darian Durant will find James face on for the touchdown. Gives him a 10-point lead, but the Wolfpack now down in the red zone, threatening to score the five. I'll tell you, Philip Rivers, quarterback for NC State, one of the top quarterbacks in the country right now, facing an uphill battle. Dowdell with the interception just a few moments ago for the Spartans on the sidelines watching. Second down and three for the Hawkeyes in command here in the third quarter. Banks audibly, and here comes some pressure from the Spartans. And it's picked off in the end zone by Cedric Henry. That was Banks' third interception of the year. His decision-making up until then almost flawless. Brad Banks gets a little bit sloppy right here. Another case of the underthrown fade. What happens on this play, Brad Banks actually audibilized here because Cedric Henry was locked on straight man-to-man -man coverage with Mo Brown. But once again, throw it up where your receiver has a chance to make the play. That's the first turnover of the game for the Hawkeyes. Jeff Smoker back in at quarterback. First and 10 from their own 20. Incomplete. That's the type of day it's been for Lovett and for Rodgers. And Bob Sanders brought a little bit of heat. Bob Sanders, a physical football player, and he makes the wide receiver right here pay for dropping this football. If you're B.J. Lovett, you might as well go ahead and catch it because here comes Bob Sanders going for that throw. As they played the replay on the big screen here at the stadium at the you can hear the fans give a collective, ooh. <laughs> they know number 33. And the problem, so does Michigan State's receiver. Second and 10 for Smoker. They run the screen incomplete. Moss dropped it. Hodges in on the pressure on the quarterback, Smoker. It'll be third down and long. Mark, they always talk about sharks in the water. When there's blood in the water, right now there are sharks in the water, and that's Iowa's defense right now. They smell blood. Michigan State continues to self-destruct. Sanders uh, had his own hat come off after that hit. Time for somebody on Michigan State's football team to step up and make a play right now. It's that simple. Step up and make a play. Well, let's look at Charles Rogers. They better hurry because they're going to get a 25-second clock violation. Rogers to the right of Smoker. And they didn't get the playoff in time. Flags down on the field. You know, Smoker has passed for 200-plus yards every game this season today with just 85 yards passing. Snap did not get off in time. Dead ball. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. The most difficult thing. Everybody sees the obvious right now. That it's going completely downhill for Michigan State. It is how do I get it solved? How do I get it going this way instead of this way? And that's the challenge you have on that side. Now, Williams players have great affection for him right now with a strange way of showing it. Third and long, Smoker. Complete to Rodgers, who's still on his feet. It's going to depend on where they mark this one. They're going to mark it just short of the 30, even though he was hit beyond the 30 and would have had the first down. Mark, I don't like that spot. But I also think Michigan State should go for this on fourth down. Yeah, Bobby Williams didn't like the spot either. No doubt that's what he's arguing with the official about. Fourth and one, and in comes the punt team. Williams not at all happy as Rodgers made the catch beyond the 30-yard line. Jason Daly, the Californian, into punt. His own 15. Hinkle with the fair catch at the 40. Under dark, rather ominous skies here at Kinnick Stadium. Iowa with the lead. 
Iowa against Michigan State. The Hawkeyes ranked number 20 in the country. Ranked for the first time in the national polls since 97. Mark Jones, Bob Davey, and Holly Rowe here. Don't forget, College Football Saturday continues tonight on ESPN2, 6.30 Eastern. South Carolina against Kentucky, the feel-good story of the year in the SEC. And then it's followed by BYU at number 19 Air Force at 10 p.m. Eastern time. First and 10, Banks, who was picked on his last pass, completes this one to his tight end, Tony Jackson. And Jackson is out near the first down beyond the 50. Let's go to Reese in the studio. Mark, we sort of expected a shootout between Clemson and Virginia. We're getting a slugfest. 10-6 Tigers, fourth and goal. It will end up Billy Jackson. Barely kept his feet, and the Wahoos on top by three, and Wisconsin stretching it out a bit against the fighting Jerry DiNardo. This 29 10. All right, 37 30 with three and a half to play here in the third quarter. Banks on the waggle. To Clark. Clark makes the catch for the first down at the 37 yard line. You could see Banks motion to have Clark go downfield the mobile quarterback buys you a lot of times to do a lot of things 12 yard see Brad Banks again off the play action fake staying alive buys himself some time field general Dallas Clark comes open against zone coverage he's an all-american former quarterback former linebacker too good an athlete to play his first catch today isn't he yeah, it is. First down and 10. And there he goes again. Banks just missing Clark. He was isolated on Wedlow, a linebacker. I think Bobby Williams had a legitimate argument here on this third down. The first down marker is right at the 30. Charles Rogers catches it, and it's obvious he's past the 30-yard line and Bob Sanders knocks him back. So I think Bobby Williams had a legitimate point right there. It should have been first down. Second down and 10, Hawkeyes with the ball, backs out of the eye, Russell the deep back, Cervantes the fullback. And Russell. Little Fred with a big heart and a huge motor. Out near another first down. Out of Ramos, Michigan. You have to love this. Once again, the five foot six tailback. He sees it right now, goes north and south, and he's not very big, but neither is that hole. And watch him sneak through that. He's a dynamic little player, Mark. Sure is on third down and one. Our guys keep it. It's first down and 10. Fred Russell grew up just down the interstate, 94, from both Michigan State and Michigan. Look at our Miller Life High Life storyline. Iowa with 37 unanswered points after trailing 7 0. And Michigan State with five turnovers, three coming in the second half here. Add to Michigan State's turnovers a 95, 94 yard kickoff return, a 62 yard post pattern against 3D cover. First and 10. Russell run out of bounds at the 25. I mentioned earlier that he's going to be enjoying a lot more notoriety and fame as the season progresses because of those numbers, and uh, he'll have to change his phone number. <laughs> Mark, Iowa's offensive line is coached by Joe Philbin. Joe Philbin came to Iowa from Harvard an Ivy League background, and he has done an excellent job with this offensive line. And Fred Russell would be the first one to take. Is he taking the guys out to eat? Is I he asked doing him that. Like that he the says the money line? he has in his pocket goes jingle jangle instead of the tough stuff that folds. He's waiting until he gets the stuff that folds. The paper. Good point. <laughs> Second down and eight. Going into the end zone. What a catch by Jones. His second touchdown of the game. Go back to that fourth down. Why I thought Bobby Williams should go for it. Don't give the football back to Iowa right now. They're too hot. CJ 
Jay Jones, 25 yards on the catch and the touchdown. Are they hot? Hotter than July, partner. They are smoking. 43 points up on the board with more than a quarter to play. The Iowa Hawkeyes, one of the top scoring teams in the nation, coming into this contest averaging just under 40 points a game, already surpassing that. For about the third time today, you are going to see Brad Banks with the pump fake. Great protection by the offensive line. He goes up the top, and you see right there the athleticism of C.J. Jones. Reminds me of Mark Jones Aww. going up over the top and making a play. Here's the ISO right out here on Broderick Nelson. Once again, just a big-time play by C.J. Jones. But think about the protection by Iowa's offensive line. Had a chance to visit with Jones recently, and... Asked him what he wants to do after his playing days are over. Says he wants to be an agent. Bob, I think if he keeps making catches like that, he'll have to end up representing himself, maybe in the league. Two catches today for 87 yards, the former junior college All-American out of Boynton Beach, Florida. What are Florida guys on this Iowa football crew? Jones and Brown, number nine, Fort Lauderdale. I want to get out of that heat down. <laughs> you, should that play, you should play football in the fall where the leaves are changing colors. It's a little bit crisp. None of those parkas for me. Well, ESPN Sunday Night Football continues and features with the game of the week in the NFL. The Dolphins and the Broncos, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Ricky Williams chewing up real estate. The second leading rusher in the NFL right now. And Brian Greasy taking on the team the hometown that he grew up in down in Miami. Gotta make sure that he doesn't trip over any poodles in the driveway and hurt himself. You're cold. Let that thing go. That that was a month ago, How man. does that happen, though? Really? A little, it wasn't a poodle. A little shishi dog. What's this? Sure was it? It was a oh, St. Bernard. <laughs> the For the dog day afternoon for Michigan State, Smoker slides in safely at the 25. Let's go to Reese. All right, Mark, and North Carolina State takes advantage of a Darian Durant fumble inside his own five. Rivers has just scored a touchdown to get it to 17-13. P.A. McClendon goes into the house again, and Wolfpack back on top of the Tar Heels, 20-17. Second down and five right here for the Spartans. Jeff Smoker back at the helm. And it off to Moss. Moss brought down just shy of the 30-yard line by Howard Hodges. Go back to the previous play. The frustration level on the Michigan State football team is evident right here. You see Charles Rogers going back at D.J. Johnson. It's been a tough afternoon for that young man. Got a feel for him a little bit. A lot of people have been trying to hone in and demand his attention of late, including the likes of MTV. Want to follow him around for a couple of weeks and be one of those real-world stories. I see some real world frustration after this week. Third down and one. Moss spins forward and gets the first down out of the 32 yard line. Moss with a rather fierce looking scowl on his face. To no avail so far, though, with eight seconds to go in the third quarter. First three periods are in the books. And as far as Iowa fans are concerned, the money is in the banks. We'll be right back. Lee Corso, future sportscaster star. You can take the helmet off. Oh, okay. Whenever you're ready. I'll get it. Mind if I stand? Yo. Testing. One, two, three. You 
you guys getting this? Or what? Send in your one-minute audition tape to the Discover card. Gets you on Game Day Challenge. If you win, you'll appear on College Game Day and go to the BCS National Championship. Visit your local Best Buy for details. And when you're at Best Buy, use your Discover card. You'll earn a cashback bonus award and automatically be entered for a chance to win college football and home entertainment prizes. Just another way it pays to discover. Man, Zeno's jersey smells rank. Whew. You need to wash it. Can't wash it. It's his lucky jersey. What about the streak? Just wash it. Um, Steve, we have a problem. He started today. <laughs> MLB Authentic Collection. Available at these fine retailers. TL Type S. I'm very proud of my lawn. In the fall, I use Scott's winterizer. The food enters the root system, stores it over the winter. Then in the spring, perks that grass right up. Scott's winterizer gives me the last green lawn in the fall and the first green lawn in the spring. This is your husband. Her husband's dead. I'm so sorry. A fortune's missing. God's been stole six million dollars. Look for it, you'll find it. On October 25th, <laughs> the fun is uncovering the truth. Mm. The truth about Charlie. Ready PG-13 starts October 25th. Iowa football fans are reveling and basking in the success of their team right now, leading 44-7. Back here for the beginning of the fourth quarter of play. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davy. Holly Rowe down in the field. Smoker going up top and overthrows Rodgers. Wow. He just can't win today. Sometimes it's an underthrow, other times it's an overthrow. But one of the stories for Iowa, big plays by C.J. Jones. Two touchdown catches today. One from 62 yards, another right there. And then Smoker put it on the ground. One of three turnovers in the second half for Michigan State so far. That's our gateway game track. Second down and 10 for the Spartans. Charles Rogers now lined up as the inside receiver. Last time he was the outside receiver. Smoker rolling out. Falls down to the 39. About three yards short of the first down. It'll be third down, about three to go. Trying to get Rodgers lined up on Sanders. Sanders jams him right there, really playing zone coverage, playing the inside seam, but playing kind of a man technique on it. But it was actually zone coverage. Bob Sanders trying to knock Charles Rodgers around a little bit. Third down and three. Spartans are just three of ten today on third down situations. And the Hawkeyes call a timeout. Smoker was pulled early in the third quarter. Back in the ball game now in the last three series. We're going to take a break and come right back. Be raw in bed. Ooh. Step in and out of the groove. Ooh. Deconstruction of construction. Liberation, Liberation from, from limitations. limitations. Exploration of mind and soul. So free. Wow. With control. Free with control. Freestyle. Freestyle. Act, acting in the net. Creation. On the fly. 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 Your brain never asking your body why. Not knowing what your next move is. Freestyle. Agile. Mobile. Dancing and going. Whichever way it wants to be flowing. Mind roaming. So your body can follow. Body roaming. So your mind can follow. No right. No wrong. Just doing it. That's freestyle. Freestyle with control. Freestyle. Free with control. Freestyle. That's freestyle. Go freestyle. Get live. NBA Live 2003. Rated E for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. Believe me, I know this place like the back of my hand. The Saturn View comes standard with four-wheel independent suspension. 
This is it. You're gonna love Split it. folding rear seats for more cargo space. Excuse me. Check it out. and dent-resistant side panels. I'm cool. The Saturn View. Get in, get away. Get the 2003 Saturn View for 0% APR for five years. For restrictions, see your retailer. Having quadruplets, we have a very busy schedule, so we shop for everything at Walmart. We get our tires here, too. I can leave the car there for an oil change, new tires, and go shopping. When you're picking out a tire, you need a, a name brand that you trust, and Walmart carries those, and I know I can trust their prices. We can get our car serviced, get all their toys, and still be home in time for lunch and naps. We have a little sticker in the back of our car that says quadruplets on board. I don't trust my children with just anybody because it's precious cargo. Back for the fourth quarter, 14-19 to play. Charles Rogers on Antoine Allen at the top of your screen right here. Empty formation for Jeff Smoker in the offense. A quick slant to Rogers. He caught it somehow. And wiggles free. Up to the 49-yard line. Got the first down for Michigan State. You see how difficult it is for Charles Rogers. You have Antoine Allen there, but Pagel, the free safety, eyeballing him. Antoine has him outside. Pagel has him inside. They're double covering him. Great throw by Jeff Smoker right there. Nose of the ball now resting at the 44. Pagel has had an outstanding run of three consecutive weeks. And Rogers streak of 13 consecutive games in the regular season with a touchdown catch in jeopardy. Smoker overthrows it by about five yards. And he was working on D.J. Johnson. Now the streak that I just referred to started a year ago against this very Iowa team. October 13th, 2001. A 13-yard touchdown pass right there from Smoker to Rogers started the streak. Michigan State won that game 31 to 28. It's been an afternoon punctuated by frustration for number one. Just a junior. Some people wondering whether he'll be back for his senior year. Michigan State coaches say he has a tremendous work ethic in practice. Second and ten. Smoker complete. So a game Shabai. And let's go back to the studio and Reese. All right, Mark, you know a weapon for Nebraska who struggled to find a way to score points has been DeWan Gross. He's third in the nation in punt returns. I'm going to measure that one off right there. I'm going to say that's 88. DeWan Gross logging on and housing it for the third time this season. Watch him break the tackle here at the end. That's just condition. 21-13, Huskers on top of Mizzou. That's your boy, that boy. <laughs> that one's still uh, surprisingly close. Third down and two for Michigan State. Another empty formation for Jeff Smoker in the offense. Incomplete. Broken up by Kevin Worthy. Worthy with a nice job in coverage that time. Last week he struggled a little bit in coverage, but not there. They actually took Fred Worthy out last week, but here he makes a good job of just staying with it, fighting, 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 and stripping that football out of there. Worthy, a 6'2", 235-pound junior. But in Michigan State in a fourth and two situation, they're two of three in fourth down situations this year. The last time they went to the slant at the top with Charles Rogers. He comes the other way this time. A little bit of contact and a late flag intended for B.J. Lovett. He was covered by Grant Steen, maybe just a bit too close. It'll give the Spartans a first down, keeping the drive alive. Now, Michigan State has some very tall receivers, Bob. We saw them on the field before the game. Love it is 6'3. Kavanaugh is six foot. Rogers 6'4. I'm impressed with Iowa playing much tighter pass coverage than they've played the last couple weeks. Here you see Grant Stein does get there a little bit early. Third pass interference today for, for Iowa, but give them credit. They're much more aggressive this week than they've been on past defense. First down and 10, Smoker complete to Shabai. Shabai brought down to the 31-yard line by Bob Sanders, and a flag cover. Smoker getting up very slowly. 
limping his way to his feet. A personal foul against Iowa. The personal foul does not occur here, but you're going to see Iowa again. Roth really twists that knee of Jeff Smoker, and it's amazing that he didn't get injured on that play severely. You're going to see the personal foul come in here late, right there. I don't like that call. Grant Steen coming in, but it wasn't a helmet-to-helmet -helmet type collision. Tobias seemed to be on his way down still. Meanwhile, Dowdell back in the ball game at quarterback. Incomplete. Intended for Eric Knott, his tight end. Michigan State loves the ability of this young tight end, Eric Knott. I believe that's the first football that they've thrown to him today. But he's a 265-pound tight end. Very, very, very athletic. And another big target for their quarterbacks. If not at 6'4", and Randall at 6'5". That surprises you right there. Zero receptions for zero yards. The last couple weeks, he's been a key receiver for them. For Rodgers, an overthrow. You're going to see Rodgers in the slot right now, running a corner route on the safety. He was open. The ball severely overthrown. Dowdell in for Jeff Smoker right there on the bench, who was shaken up a couple of plays ago with Rock rolling into his knee. Third down and 10. Now Dell into the end zone, and Rodgers couldn't make any miracles of magic on that one. Considine breaking it up. Not much question where they were going to go. They go up the top again, and Considine comes in and said, hey, I've got a little vertical too, Charles. Goes up and gets that ball out of there. Showing some hops. Right here. Ooh, great play by the safety Considine. Fourth and ten, Michigan with no other choice. Michigan State, excuse me, with no choice but to go for it. Barr comes back into the ball game. Charles Rogers, Bob Sanders locked up in the slot. Nice matchup, Dowdell into the end zone and overthrows Rogers. And the defense holds. The offense takes over on downs. Fifteen plays in all on the drive for Bobby Williams offense and nothing to show for it. As the two men in her heart meet for the first time. So you're Vaughn. The parents she never knew may be meeting for the last. I will kill you. A new alias, ABC Sunday. I'm Max Kellerman. I want to tell you about my new show. People here think the people here don't know anything about sports. Around the Horn is going to bring sports experts together, and I'm keeping score. Around the Horn premieres Monday, October 28th at 5 on ESPN. some things to be free but never a weekend of new hit movies watch one last star super pack free movie weekend october 11th 12th and 13th you'll see pearl harbor america's sweethearts and spy game all for free plus watch stars to find out how you could have a chance to win twenty five thousand dollars or one of thousands of other prizes watch one last star super pack free movie weekend october 11th 12th and 13th on channels 520 through 533 the star super pack from direct tv 
ESPN's presentation of college football brought to you by Saturn, makers of The View, the redesigned L-Series, and coming this fall, the all-new Ion. And by brand name tires, oil changes, and more at your neighborhood Walmart Tire and Lube Express. 12.57 to go in the fourth quarter. Iowa in control, 44 to 7. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob David and Holly Rowe down in the field. First and 10 for the Hawkeyes who have dominated all afternoon. Thanks now, audibly. Into the run. Checks to Brevin, who stopped up with a 15 yard line. Reese, things really heating up in earnest in the ACC, huh? I would say so, Mark. Might be about time to start giving a little love to Al Groh in Virginia. Up 16-10 on Clemson. Matt Shaw finding Heath Miller. The Cavs started the season 0-2, but they're about to win their fifth straight game if they can hang on. It's 22-10. Well, what an up and down season for Clemson. We saw them a few weeks ago. Second down and 10. Thanks to 6-1 senior. Leading the offense all day and doing a good job at it. Got off to a slow start, but had a couple of touchdown passes to Jones. This is Greving on the handoff. Greving in for Fred Russell right now, and let's go downstairs for more from Holly Rowe. Guys, I'm here with Tawana Spencer, the mother of diminutive back Fred Russell. And what did you do when he was growing up to teach him that size isn't the most important thing, that short people can excel and be just as tough? Hey, I just told him to get out there and do what, hey, you can do. Because them legs are his. Ooh. <laughs> You said he's always been fast. Even when he was a little kid, yeah. you had to chase him sometimes, huh? Yes, I believe in discipline. And I couldn't catch him. A couple times I had to catch him in the bathroom. He could be up under that bump bed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know this is kind of unusual, but you work at GM, and you work with Dewan Moss's mom, the starting tailback for uh, Michigan State. She even made you this little Iowa pin. Have you guys been talking trash over the weekend here? No, no, no. We just wish our boys to get out there and do their best. All right, well, your son's having a great game today. Thanks very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> see where Fred gets that personality. Yeah, yeah. Mom let a few secrets out of the bag. You, know. you see his mom getting a little FaceTime up there. You know, he sees that ESPN camera up there. From Romulus, Michigan. Just out by the Detroit Metro Airport. Yeah, she's getting a lot of love there in the, in the fans. and Finding her way through the fans like Fred does through defenders. Dropped immediately after a 34 yard punt was Kavanaugh. And a flag down on the play. And now they're going to pick the flag up. Well, when you look ahead, Bob Davey, you think about where do the Iowa Hawkeyes go from here? They have a pretty favorable schedule coming up when you look at going to Indiana and then at Michigan a chance to really string together you get the feeling something special is happening here in Iowa City this year. I think particularly Mark because they've won some close games they've had some good fortune but today their defense has stepped up and matched what their special teams and their offense has been able to do early in the season so they have to feel good about that right now they're a complete football team based on today's performance. Richard with the completion to midfield and let's take a look at the Upcoming schedule they go as I mentioned to Indiana then at Michigan and then Wisconsin and Northwestern at home and then they finish up at Minnesota so you know Iowa you look at their big win at Penn State they've already proven that they can win big games on the road so that should give them a little bit of confidence going into the Michigan game at least and the confidence that they have so many weapons on this football team what the productivity they're getting out of special teams they know they can run the football they know they have real good special teams and the way their defense is played today gives them a lot of confidence and rogers once again maybe a little bit too easy for him he dropped it it goes with the territory he is the target everybody in this stadium knows charles rogers obviously but right here, he's had a little bit of that, a history of lack of concentration right there and not making the simple catches. Third down and eight. Iowa fans starting the overrated chant. I don't think that's oh, the case. No. They have great fans here, but they're not real knowledgeable if they're calling Charles Rogers overrated. He's not. Might be missing the boat on that one. Third down and eight for Jeff Smoker. 
into traffic. And Rodgers, how's that for overrated? Heck no. Out of the crowd, emerging with the ball, was Rodgers down to the 19-yard line. We've got a couple of players shaken up back at the 36. It was a 31-yard pickup. D.J. Johnson, one of the players, a little bit woozy and shaken up for Iowa. Number five right there. Just as you had said, Bob, overrated, certainly not, if you're talking about Rodgers. Mark, I don't think Michigan State drew it up this way. In fact, I know they didn't. If you look right here, they have a high-low stretch going on, which is fine, but they bring B.J. Lovett into the screen, and they have three receivers within five yards of each other. So the play was not ran the way it was drawn up, but Charles Rogers comes up with a big play. You see B.J. Lovett come into the screen. Charles plays takeaway. Boy, if not for that stumble, he takes it to the house. I'm going to look close here and see if we see where D.J. Johnson, there it is. D.J. Johnson collides with B.J. Lovett. Right here. Right here is where the collision is going to happen. And you see an unsuspecting B.J. Lovett make it, excuse me, an unsuspecting D.J. Johnson making a play on the ball in a totally vulnerable position and he collides with B.J. Lovett. It's good to see him get up the field and walk off on his own power. Yeah, keep in mind that Rodgers right there has that streak of 13 consecutive regular Caesar games with a touchdown catch. That streak in jeopardy right now. Interesting when we talked to Morris Watts, Mark, this week, you and I about that streak. And he's glad that Charles broke the record last week because in some ways it takes the pressure and the responsibility off of trying to get him another touchdown catch. First down and 10. Smoker on a misread. Well, one of the big questions coming into the game was, would Charles Rogers have a field day? Would he eat Iowa's collective lunch? The answer, a resounding no. And the frustration at times showing. Double teamed right there once again. Rogers still, though, ascending the charts at Michigan State. Closing That's in on an Gibson interesting and graphic. 17 throws. A lot of hidden things in there. A combination of a lot of different things. Good coverage by Iowa times. Four throws by Michigan State's quarterbacks at times. So he needs help. As talented as he is, he needs help. Incomplete. And a flag on the play intended for Eric Knott. We've got another pass interference on Iowa, Mark, coming in from the backside here. Let's go to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark, Tommy Bowden yanked Willie Simmons out of the game, put the freshman Charlie Whitehurst in at quarterback against Virginia in waning moments. Whitehurst looking for J.J. McKelvey, still looking for him. Here he is, touchdown by the onside kick, didn't get it, and the Cavaliers have won five in a row, 22-17 the final. That surprises me. I really liked Clemson's football team talent-wise when we had them early in the season. They hung with Florida State. That Thursday night game a little while back. We're finally losing. But I believe that's four pass interference penalties on uh, Iowa. Okay. And a flag down in the backfield at the 24-yard line. The pass was incomplete, intended for Eric Knott once again. This might be a hold. Nine fifty-five to go in the fourth quarter. Holding offense. Ten yard penalty, previous spot. Still first down. Well, that offensive line for Michigan State at times this year has struggled. Mainly because of they've been putting a lot of third and longs. You're gonna see the center Otney right now trying to block Matt Roth. And right there, no question, WWL World Wrestling. Take down right there. <laughs> well, they used to call that offensive line Wall Green. But the score's been close. First down and 10. And a sack. 
Hodges, Roth, in on the sack of Smoker. Been a rough day for Smoker, the junior. A three-year starter. Last game against Northwestern had a couple of touchdown passes. Looked like the offense was really starting to turn things around in terms of balance, running the ball well, too. But what a difference 10 days can make. What a difference second and 22 makes. Hard to call plays on second and 22. Smoker under pressure again. Incomplete, and let's go to Reese. What's up with Florida State Miami? Let me tell you something, Mark. That Florida State offensive line is dominating. The vaunted Hurricane defensive Jones line. Montre Holland the opens a huge Touchdown. hole for Greg Jones, who runs it in like a man. And the Seminoles are up 27-14 in the fourth. Two-back offense. Give Greg Jones a lead blocker. That's dangerous. I heard this week, Mark, he is 250 pounds. 6% body fat Unbelievable. and runs 4-4. Four, four. To me, he had the run of the year when he broke about six tackles going into the end zone yeah. a few games ago. But Only then. about a 7 or maybe 10-yard run. You yeah. think of the one I am, and he just dragged guys into the end zone. My paper boy is going to throw my Miami Herald paper through my window tomorrow morning if the game's lose. Third and 22. Into the end zone. Kavanaugh incomplete. Well, statistics can sometimes lie. And Jeff Smoker coming into the game had thrown seven interceptions. But I think in his case so far this year, the statistics are pretty much right on because he hasn't enjoyed the same type of success that he did a season ago when he was the conference's top-rated passer. Today, just 15 of 31. Think of the storyline coming in. Michigan State, talented receivers, talented quarterback. Iowa won 16th in the nation in pass defense. Only Idaho was lower than Iowa. Give credit to Norm Parker and Iowa's defense. Rogers not in the game right now. Smoker for Kavanaugh again, and it's incomplete. Mark, I think we may have a roughing the passer penalty right here. Going to keep the drive alive for Michigan State. You're going to see the roughing the passer penalty right here at the end on Jared Klaus, number 90. Something that you're going to see. We saw George Perlis up in the press box earlier. Norm Parker coached with George Perlis at Michigan State for a lot of years. Think back to the Pittsburgh Steelers and George Perlis, a twisting front. Iowa is one of the better teams in the country on these pass rush twist stunts. And there you see Jared Klaus. I think it's a good call right there, trying to protect Jeff Smoker, the quarterback. Give Norm Parker credit today. Smoker, he completes the screen, but it's blown up immediately by David Richard, Scott Boylan. The walk-on strong safety with a big play. Mark, I've noticed something. I think that's five defensive penalties that I can think of on Iowa's defense. But take that and put that into perspective. They're much more aggressive today. And I'm not certainly advocating big penalties like they've had, but I see an improved, more aggressive Iowa defense. And if they can get this defense, if Norm Parker can keep them improving, they are a legitimate top 10 football team. What a quantum leap they've made from a couple of weeks ago when we saw them at Happy Valley, Penn State. You like their style. So they're right now in the evolution of becoming much more aggressive. Love it, and Johnson back in the game, going into the end zone. Touchdown, what a grab by Love it. 20 yards. That was the 40th career touchdown pass for Jeff Smoker, 13th this season. Great to see Michigan State step up and make a play. Give Jeff Smoker credit. He's been getting beat up. Give B.J. Lovett credit coming up and making a play. Dave Rayner in for the extra point. And this is Michigan State's first score, first touchdown 
since their opening drive of the ball game. And like the first drive, Iowa penalties on defense kept the drive alive. A little bit too little, too late, but you got to love it. Believe me, I know this place like the back of my hand. The Saturn View comes standard with four-wheel independent suspension. This is it. You're gonna love Split it. folding rear seats for more cargo space. Excuse me. Check it out. Cannonball! And dent resistant side panels. I'm cool. The Saturn View. Get in, get away. Get the 2003 Saturn View for 0% APR for five years. For restrictions, see your retailer. You have the ultimate power to look better. To be stronger. To redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Gonna make you Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure and check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. Welcome back, everyone, to the 36th edition of Iowa against Michigan State. Iowa, number 20 in the country, dominating every aspect of this game after the opening drive. Onside kick right here if you're Michigan State. I'm a little surprised right there, Mark. For some point, take your chance to win the game. Jones takes the knee. They go to the 20, and let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, one of the things that Michigan State receiver Charles Rogers does in his spare time is play EA Sports PlayStation. Now, he says sometimes he'll play himself one-on-one -on -one where he's the opponent, and even he can't stop himself. I guarantee you this, though. Next time he chooses a team, it won't be Iowa as the opponent. Yeah, he uh, needs to make some of those uh, PlayStation moves. Looks a little stiff right there, though, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Moves pretty good, though. A little bigger there in video. Big shoulder pads. <laughs> Nathan Chandler in a quarterback. You got to hit the reset button on this game, but there isn't one. Jamel Lewis, who ran Iowa's kickoff back 95 yards for a touchdown to really swing things in Iowa's favor early on the run. Iowa with their second offense in there. Great opportunity right now for Kirk Ferentz to play some younger players. Not only does it give them experience and help them as players, psychologically it helps so much because these guys work so hard in practice. Chandler is a former junior college All-American, first teamer, and a quarterback. Second down and eight for the Hawkeyes. It's been their day. Fires complete to Clinton Solomon, the freshman out of Texas. Solomon hangs onto the ball after taking a big hit. Clinton Solomon, a big, good-looking athlete. Played at Fort Worth Eastern Hills High School in Texas. The only other scholarship offer he had was Southwest Texas State, or I believe it was Sam Houston State. Iowa went down there. He was a quarterback in high school, played some receiver. They're really high on him. He's a good-looking young prospect. Yeah, ran a 13.7 high hurdles, 110-meter high hurdles. He's got some speed to burn. Third and five. Chandler on the rollout. Hey, made something on the impro improvisation. And now it's going to be ruled incomplete. Intended receiver was number 13, Ramon Ochoa. Well, coming up after the game, it's the College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura with Reese in the studio. Highlights of Florida State Miami, the game day gang, and the Lone Star State for the OU Texas game, and updates on all of the action in the top 25 today. And man, Florida State putting one on their in state rivals in Coral Gables. You think they were a little motivated by being such a big underdog, Mark? Yeah, very much so. 
Kevin on tackled immediately at the 44 yard line. A 31 yard punt and two on the return. The big story of the day when you look back at it, they just smothered Iowa did Charles Rogers. Sanders with a pick on that play. Pagel with a pick on that one on Smoker. And then you see the frustration boiling a little bit by Rogers. He usually comes up with those catches too. But not this afternoon. They've thrown to him 18 times. He's made five for 78 yards. And that touchdown streak of 13 consecutive regular season games with a score in jeopardy. Pass complete to the 46-yard line. I think it's going to come back, Mark, with a holding penalty right here on Michigan State. Actually called for a personal foul. I believe it was hands to the face. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. 15-yard penalty, previous spot. Still first out. Bring this one back. Rogers uh, playing with bruised ribs that he injured against Notre Dame a few weeks ago. This young man has come a long way after sitting out the 2000 season because of some academic issues. Fastest player on the team. Uh, that NCAA record right there. Michigan State coaches said they had five clocks on him this summer, and he ran 4-2-5. That is fast. First and 25. Overthrows Kavanaugh and Sanders laid him out at the 32. Let's go to Reese. Okay, Mark, and things just not getting any easier for Syracuse. Taking on Temple, tied up at 10. This is Mike McGann, plenty of time in the pocket. Going to flip it to Mackin and Fenton. One little move. And he takes it to the house. And the Owls up 17-10, deep in the fourth. Temple enjoying a little bit of success. Second down and 25. Damon Dowdell, the quarterback in for Jeff Smoker. Woods in motion. Woods on the catch. He almost lost it. Let's go back one play and look at Bob Sanders putting the wood on the Spartans. We talked about Iowa getting more aggressive on defense. This guy's always been aggressive. Where's 33? I'm looking for him right now. Here he comes. There's 33, Bob Sanders. That receiver was he just looked, ready he? to be starched, wasn't he? Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, a year ago when Bob Sanders got his chance to start on defense, he really transformed the attitude of the defense. They used to call a hard hit a Sanders, and I asked him this year if they still do that. He said, no, everybody plays at that level now. Everybody's got a higher expectation. A great report, Holly, and he is the standard by which the defense is measured now. He's the barometer. Here's Dowdell. Out of bounds at the 33-yard line. What does Michigan State do from here? Besides go to the airport, these teams coming up next. The first thing you do, you don't worry about this. The rest of the schedule doesn't matter. You worry about one thing, and that's yourself, Michigan State. They got to get Michigan State off their own schedule because today they were their worst enemy. So it's not about getting ready for Minnesota. It's about Michigan State getting better themselves right now. Last year, they were able to rally late in the season, ended up going to a bowl game and winning in the bowl game, finishing on a positive note. And they still can, Mark, right? because they're a talented football team. But they've got their work cut out for him because not much has gone well today. Hinkle's going to let it bounce, and it doesn't go into the end zone. Stops at the two, a 65-yard punt by the Californian Jason Daly. We're going to take a break. It's been all black and gold here in Iowa City. We'll be right back. Man, this place like the back of my hand. The Saturn View comes standard with four-wheel independent suspension. This is it. You're gonna love Split it. folding rear seats for more cargo space. Excuse me. Check it out. Cannonball! And dent-resistant side panels. I'm cool. The Saturn View. Get in, get away. Get the 2003 Saturn View for 0% APR for five years. For restrictions, see your retailer. 
ultimate power. To look better. To be stronger. To redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 health club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure. And check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web at bowflexultimate.com today. The new Bowflex for ultimate results. Iowa leading 44-14 with 4.43 to play in the fourth quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe. It has been all hot guys all day except for the opening drive of the ball game, which Michigan State took downfield and scored. But Iowa had a run of some 37 unanswered points from that point on, and it's first down and 10. Nathan Chandler has taken over quarterback for the start of Brad Banks. Chandler sneaks forward to the five. What's up in Florida State Miami, Reese? Mark Ken Dorsey's had a dicey day at best, but he is a poised veteran, a leader, and he has his team on the march. Second and goal, down 13, touchdown. finds Kevin Beer for the touchdown. And we're late, and we're close. 27-21, the Knolls on top, and Pittsburgh handling things at Notre Dame so far. They're up by a field goal. Hey, Bob, we were talking about it before. What about the way that Rod Rutherford has uh, developed a quarterback, huh? For Pitt? Saw his confidence in that second half against Texas A&M, way back the second game of the season. Second down and seven for the Hawkeyes, looking to improve to six and one on the season. Three and oh in conference play. Mickens getting the carry, and they have a pretty impressive streak going coming into this game of having a 100-yard rusher in nine consecutive games featuring four different backs but that streak in jeopardy right now Russell on the sidelines with 75 yards and the meter is stopped because I'm not sure that he would come back in he's done he's done for the day the only thing we can do right now is count Jermel Lewis's 94 yard touchdown run as a rush and there may be a chance but no I think that streak's going to come into an end here today Mark third down and seven Lewis stopped up short of the first down at the seven yard line and they'll have to punt and you can imagine that right now all along the Pet Mall and South Dubuque Street outside the Sheridan Hotel at the field house the chicken wings are starting to cook right now man they are getting those honey hot barbecues ready and getting ready for a little bit of a celebration here in Iowa City it's all good right now on that sideline Mark there is Look, Brad Banks, the transfer from UCF, came to the school with high hopes, and those hopes being fulfilled right now coming to fruition. They've had so many close finishes that it has to be a good feeling for Iowa today, and they have really come together as a total football team. They will have beaten Michigan State now five of the last seven meetings. And this is a series that overall that has been pretty even. Remember that immediately following the game, it's the College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura. And flip over to ESPN News if you want to catch a little post-game coverage of this one between Iowa and Michigan State. Iowa improving to 3-0 in Big Ten play. And who would have ever thought at the Big Ten meetings back earlier this summer when people were talking about who was going to win the conference, not many people figured that Iowa would be in this position right now. Go back to Iowa's win in the Alamo Bowl. Finishing strong last year, momentum late in the season. Bradley going to run around, kill some time, and step out of bounds. Fans wanted to throw it, but he'll do the wise thing. Take the safety. That was interesting right there, wasn't it, Mark? It's 44 to 14. How often does a punter get a chance to get the spotlight? It was like, <laughs> it was like the old Dean Smith four-corner offense there for a second. 
They were playing zone. They wouldn't press him, wouldn't play man. Looked like he was doing the hokey pokey back then. You know, that's one of the old famous well, dances here. You, you're a lot more experienced than me <laughs> and stuff like that. I, I'm not sure what that hokey pokey yeah, is. But that's something that Hayden Fry started back there you in go. Iowa. And speaking of Hayden Fry, there's a look at the former head coach here. And what about the staff that he had put together here? And some guys have really moved on to wonderful things. Kirk Ferentz, one of them right there. Bill Snyder now at Kansas State. And McCartney just down the road at Iowa State. Bob Stoops. Pretty good graduates, huh? That's impressive, isn't it, Mark? And one thing you know, this one right here, he's probably going to move up after today, Kirk Ferentz, because this has been an impressive display by Iowa. Earlier, you uh, looked at that OU Texas game. I asked you, you said you would like Texas a little bit in that game. I'm going to go the other way and go with the Boomer Sooner thing. <laughs> 2 11 to go here in the fourth quarter in Iowa City. Still a little surprised at taking a safety right there. That you wouldn't just punt that football away and see if Michigan State can make a play. Kading now kicking into the wind. They'll hang it up high. This is live. An upset brewing in the Big Ten, Reese Davis. What's going on? Mark Wisconsin had a 29-10 lead on the Hoosiers of Indiana, but DeBron Hamden bringing his team back in the fourth quarter, firing one great grab by Glenn Johnson. Two-point conversion, good. Hoosiers up by three late. Syracuse scored a touchdown against Temple and missed the extra point. The Owls by a single half a minute left to go. That would be huge for Jerry DiNardo to get that win at home against Wisconsin. First down and 10. DiNardo in his first year's head coach there. The Hoosiers. Dowdell has a man and through the hands of his intended receiver. Incomplete. Kyle Brown, the intended receiver on the play. Take a look at some of the news and notes around the conference. You know, a lot of people talked about the Big Ten being down this year. I'm not sure that I really buy into it that much. When you look at the emerging success of teams like Iowa, Penn State, who has been a scoring machine in its own right this year, Bob. I see a lot of parity, Mark. And I know that P word's overused, but a lot of good offensive football teams in the Big Ten. Now they'll complete to Richard. Right down at the 38-yard line. And speaking of offense and points, a couple of great offensive teams going at it tonight. 7.45 Eastern time on ESPN College Football Saturday night presented by the U.S. Postal Service. Number 15, LSU, taking on number 16, Florida. I have to ask you, talking about LSU, Florida, Mike Godfrey and I had a discussion about overtime. Mike doesn't like college overtime. I happen to think it's the best thing that's happened in college football. So are you with me or against me? I'm with you on that one. I'd like to see the NFL change their overtime rules to the format of college football. At least each team gets an opportunity. And a big hit there on defense by Gray. You know, this Iowa defense has not let up today. And, and this that's will a, be... That's a symbol of good coaching. It is, Mark. And it's also a symbol of guys love to get in there and get their chance to play some of these backups. But including today, it will be seven straight games that Iowa has not had a 100-yard rusher against them. And once again, Norm Parker, Norm spoke to us yesterday. I thought Michigan State was going to score 100 today. <laughs> the way he talked about Michigan State in their offense. But I think he was playing possum just a little bit. Yeah, he was saying, oh, boy, I hope it rains. I hope it pours. I hope it's windy. Yeah. I don't think he needed the, the help of the elements today. Norm's going to enjoy it tonight, isn't he, Mark? <laughs> Bearcats called by Hinkle back at the 20 with 34 seconds to play. Don't forget, coming up next, the Queen Elizabeth Stakes from Woodbine Racetrack in Toronto, Ontario. That's coming up next. As the Iowa Hawkeyes on the verge of improving to 6-1, and, and Charles Rogers will see his streak of 13 consecutive regular season games with a touchdown come to an end. Brad Banks and his crew will be walking on Pet Mall tonight with their chests all swollen with pride.
we were down there before the game. Those fans are right on top of you <laughs> behind that bench at Iowa. And it is all happy and all good right now because the Hawkeyes put on a show today. Well, this one is cooked, glazed, and ready to be sliced as Iowa wins it 44 to 16. Tough day for Jeff Smoker, but a great day for the Iowa defense, especially the secondary, coming in ranked one of the lower defenses against the pass. 44-16, the final score. Horse racing coming up next. For Bob Davey and Holly Rowe, I'm Mark Jones saying so long from area code 319. Right now, let's go to horse racing. The following is a presentation of the National Thoroughbred Racing Association and ESPN. And it'll probably be an illegal formation because South Carolina lined up in an unusual looking formation and it may be that they didn't have enough men on the line of scrimmage. Doyle Jackson, referee. And that is indeed the call. And they need to make them kick it again. See if they can get it down to the 10 or see if maybe you could get a little return out of it. That's what they're going to do. Well, they what they had in mind was uh, not to blast it as far as they could anyway. Well, for the offense. Not even have enough on the line of scrimmage. We'll replay the fourth down. Holtz arguing that they did indeed. You must have, have must have seven men on the line of scrimmage. And if Lou is this hot, he knows that he did indeed have seven because he would have stood there and counted them. Hey, Lou, not even five minutes into the game. Hey. Yeah, boy. Regular punter now in, Tyler Dean. And a good year, averaging better than 44 per kick. Handles a high snap. Eric Abney will race up and stumble at the 21. Kentucky fans wanting a violation, and they do get a late flag. That should be a personal foul. He was on the ground. There's no excuse for piling on. Well, these are absolutely killers, these kind of penalties here. Hart Turner. Hart Turner nailed him on the ground. That's the call. You just have to back off. I don't think Hart meant to do that. He's going to cover the punt aggressively. Abney's such a dangerous return man. Y'all, he did mean to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was, just, a, it was a short punt he was coming up for, but Hart Turner's got to pull off of this. There's he's no just, way he needs to do that. He's laying there on yeah. the ground. That's inexcusable. So now you're looking to pin him in to work the field position to your advantage if you're South Carolina. Now Kentucky's got the ball in the 37. So we've got a comedy of errors. Yep. I think the, the call to, to run the exotic play early for Kentucky was a poor offensive call. Now mistakes by South Carolina. And two penalties end up costing him 27 yards. So coming back, Kentucky's J Lo. Wildcats from their 37 when we come back to Lexington. Behind them is a snippy major D. Caesar. In front of them is a family drama playing itself out. But right now, life is perfect. Thanks to a full moon, a powerful engine, and the Audubon tested suspension of the Acura RL. Forget the wolves. In this game, you're the judge, jury, and execution. What happens to the bodies? They just disappear. Hmm. You like the shotgun? Yeah. But it ain't pretty. Yeah. I like the laser blaster. <laughs> Get you. <laughs> you have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Gonna make you Quite possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. 
In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 Health Club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure and check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web today. What the new Bowflex for ultimate results. Eric Tatum's got to keep loose any way he can. Nothing, nothing. Wildcats have it under 37. And almost had it on their own 10, but back-to-back -back penalties against Carolina have helped the Kentucky field position. Tommy Cook goes in motion. And Lorenzen firing over the middle, Aaron Boone with the catch down to the 40 of South Carolina. 23 yards. And the rest of the Carolina defense now, their linebackers, Jermaine Lemon and Jeremiah Garrison, who continues to play for Lance Lowry, leading tackler until he had his knee scope, might be back next week. Dawson, awfully good one as well. And in that secondary, Rashad Faison will be literally all over the field. He'll be coming off the corner, he'll be lined up at free safety, and everywhere else. He's an all-SEC performer. Abney in motion and around. And he has a burst like few we have seen this year, doesn't he? He can run like the wind. I, I asked Guy Morris yesterday, is this guy as fast as I think he is? He said he is a legit under 4-4. Most of the time when you hear somebody's 4-4, they just aren't. This guy runs, and, and Guy, the other thing I like that Guy said, do you ever watch the Tasmanian Devil? Here's the holding right here. They're going to call and bring that one back. Now watch him accelerate to the corner. Unfortunately, there was a penalty. Mike showed it to you. Chase Harp with the hold. Chase Harp with his hands out. Foul is holding by the offense. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul, followed by the first down. Now, one of the really big bugaboos for this Kentucky team is the fact they've been penalized 74.6 yards per game. That's far too much. Both teams hurt early by penalties, Dave. Kentucky, the most penalized team in the SEC. And they've had three games of their first five with 10 or more. Matt Morris working to cut that down. Big game cutback to second down and 19. Pinner working hard to get maybe two. Let's check in with Matt Weiner. Dave, Tennessee had trouble getting the offense going without Casey Kloss, and so they resort to this. A little trickery. Derek Tinsley, halfback option to Jason Witten. Cut the lead to five, and that's where it's about to end. 18-13 Georgia. Again, it was 18-0 Georgia for the longest time. 14 touchdowns, only three picks, and that used to be Lorenzo's biggest problem, throwing it ill-advisedly into coverage. He doesn't do that anymore. This time, the shovel works to Penner, but the game comes to again ready for it. And bottled up again, so third and long come. Nice penetration by South Carolina. Jason Capers that time on the shuffle. You know there's no threat of Lorenzen keeping it. <laughs> he, he's more apt, no, he's more apt to get down the field and block, and we'll talk about that yeah, a little later. Get, the big guy yeah. will run down the field he will. and ear hole somebody. <laughs> and if he were my quarterback, I, I'd say, Jared, we know you're tough, but let's don't, uh, let's don't be silly here. A little bit of shoulder pads you got on, buddy. But he's bigger than 90%, yeah. 95% of the people he's got shoulder pads that are my size. <laughs> Sixteen and Lorenzen very tough to sack for obvious reasons. Usually takes more than one, and there are two involved wow. in this one. Capers wow. and Gauze. George Gauze, number ninety-nine. They think he can be the follow-up to Kalimba Edwards, now playing in the National Football League. He gets held so badly here, but he's still making. Look, look at his jerseys coming off. <laughs> he still makes the sack. Well, here's one where, you know, Jared Lorenzen is going to stay right in there and try and make the throw. Boy, he cost, did get held. You'd like to see him trying to escape a little bit. Here's the fair on a fake and complete from Glenn Pakalak, but they're going to come up short of the first down. Tommy Cook from Glenn Pakalak. South Carolina, though, stops him five yards shy of the first down marker. There's a bubble at the end of the play. 
Matthew Thomas, in fact, coming up with a fumble. Well, that's a tough call, looking for 20 yards. Running the fake, it's gonna have to be wide open for you to get that there. Just a shot put pass out there. Coming up very, very quickly. Ryan, Ryan Brewer, Brewer does home. a great job coming up and just staying right in front of the runner, knowing he's got a long way to go. Not only didn't fool Brewer, but such a secure tackle that he knocked it loose. Brewer could play anywhere. That's an offensive player, which is saw. Great fake by Jenkins. Time to heave over the middle for Brewer. Almost made a one-handed catch at the 30. One of the major issues that are that's going to be a, a factor in this football game is the new surface. This is one of those fancy deals with the drainage system, with all the things that the bells and whistles with the gravel underneath, and it's supposed to absorb 10 inches an hour, but it's already coming up in large chunks, and that's dangerous down there on that field when you don't have good footing. Second down and 10. Draw, pivot. The real north-south runners of college football. Six yards. Let's check in with Matt Wine. All right, Dave. The Red River rivalry. Sooners pulling away. Kiwan Jones from two yards out. Oklahoma up 28-17. Meanwhile, Michigan has beaten Jopa five straight times. They'll have to do it overtime for a sixth. First ever OT in Ann Arbor. Four wides. Jenkins underthrowing Brewer. Had him open, had a first down if it's a foot high. Yeah, good play, good call. Just trying to get five yards for the first downs. Had Brewer on the slant. There's your most dependable receiver on the field probably today in Brewer. And just a low throw. One thing a center can do, and a center has a responsibility in college football, is to ask for a dry ball. It looked like that was a wet ball and made it difficult to throw. So Tyler Dean again will kick to Abney. Abney backing up inside his 15. And hit immediately. And we'll have another halo violation on this one. And that's again, that's going to be a 15 yard. And we've talked about this a couple of times. The rule has changed. If there's no contact and you get into the halo area, it's a, it went from 5 to 10 yards this year. But if you hit him, it's 15. And Bill, this one is 15. Ted Crawford got him. Yes, it is, Mike, and uh, that's a good rule. You're so vulnerable standing back there, and for people who do not that do not recall, last year there were a couple of incidents where the punt returner was just absolutely annihilated. Here's the, the signal. Got to leave that about a two-yard space for him to catch the ball, and you see it was close. The Crawford felt like he was two yards away, yep. but he wasn't. You really see the timing now with these, these gunners coming down to try and slow up and time it so they can get there and not break the halo. 7-12 and a scoreless first quarter when we come back to Commonwealth Stadium. Behind them is a 19th century cabin with a 19th century roof. Ahead of them, is a 21st century modern with a 21st century electrical system. But right now, life is perfect, thanks to a clear sky, a smooth ride, and the electronic four-wheel drive, 260 horsepower, Acura MDX. Hi, I'm Emmett. And I'm not. We may not look it, but we're a lot alike. We both like giving back to the community. And we're both considered quite stylish. And we both believe that phone service should be simple. Oh, yeah, like 10, 10, 220. It's cheap whether you use it a little or a lot. 99 cents for all calls up to 20 minutes. And there are no monthly commitments. So you only pay for the calls you make. So, what do you think of the shirt? Too loud. What do you think of the shirt? Dial 10, 10, 220. No one spoils me like mom, but Olive Garden comes close with their never-ending pasta bowl. They make all these delicious homemade sauces, then you pick which ones you want with which pastas. You get all you want, plus unlimited salad and breadsticks for $7.95. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. Evil has returned. Ah, hello, Clarice. Hannibal and Silence of the Lambs. Good evening. 
Own the DVD collection today. Rated R. Welcome back to Lexington, Kentucky. Some breaking news out of the Southeast. At 1.11 this afternoon, Kristen Hunter and her husband Bob, that's Bill Curry's daughter, gave birth to Evelyn Jean Hunter. Eight pounds, nine ounces. That's good size, Bill. Not quite a, a J-Lo type of size, but good size. And we want to congratulate Kristen and Bob and say welcome, Evelyn Jean, and congratulations, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> Why was surprised me? They love to do that. What a wonderful, thank you, Michelle. Grandpa. Thank you, everybody. There's our cigars. Yeah. <laughs> Dinner. Breaking tackles. Art Spinner by himself gets 10. Wow. I'll tell you what, we, we know Pinnock could run over people, but Pinnock says, you know what, I can drop the hammer as well. And he did it on to Kay Muhammad. He absolutely dropped the hammer. This is getting the extra yards right here. This is the way you lower your shoulder pads right here. Oh, get out of my way. <laughs> Takeem Muhammad will remember that next time number 20 holds oh, his he, direction. He may not remember it. <laughs> Pinner averaging 119 yards per game. Number two in the SEC. Lorenzen throw on the run. Abney across the middle and across midfield. 18 yards. And, and this is the strength of a Jared Lorenzen. George Goss put some pressure on him. Lorenzen threw back across his body and was able to stay right in here on the crossing route. It's coming back. Lorenzen's throwing back across his body, wide open underneath. And you'll see this out of Kentucky all day. They love running off with wider guys and coming underneath and finding all the holes either underneath the linebackers or behind them. You'll see it all day long. Empty backfield this time. They go five wide. Lorenzo under center. Nice job recovering after Glenn Holt, true freshman, slipped. Went back up and got his third catch of the year. Gunner averaging 119 yards per game. Number two in the SEC. Lorenzo throw on the run. Glenn Holt, a true freshman out of Opalaka, Florida. Able to get four out of that. Very important for the players. Holt just slipped on this turf. They've got to keep the weight over the balls of their feet. If you try to make a sharp cut with your foot extended out and your weight's not over it, you'll fall. Time out of the offset eye. And Pinner is a nice hole. Pinner hurtling inside the 30. 15 yards. And understand, gang, this is not your father's Kentucky anymore. They can run the ball. They're averaging a buck 75 a game, and a lot has to do with Mr. Pinner. But this had a lot to do with the offensive line. He does not get touched and until watch, he gets through to the second level. Let's Cam Pay, the fullback, just drilled his man, knocked him out of the picture, gaping hole. That one you praise the old line for that one and the fullback. Pinner averaging eight per carry, four for 32. And the 537 of the first quarter was scoreless. South Carolina. And Kentucky off to its best start since they won their first five in 1984. That year they finished nine and three, won the Hall of Fame Bowl. They can't go to a bowl this year. They can't go to the SEC championship, but they still have some goals in front of them. They want to make sure that the team that does represent the SEC East is the second best out of the division. And they almost pulled what would have been the upset of the year in the SEC had they held on to a late lead at the Swamp, fighting from way behind early. 19-0 down at the half at Florida. And finally, led 28-25, lost 41-34. Their only defeat. Motion out of the backfield, Alexi Bagingi. And they blitz and drop Lorenzen. And Jeremiah Garrison got him one-on-one. -on -one. That won't happen very often. Let's go to Matt Weiner. All right, Dave, we'll take a quick tour of the Pac-10 Cal. Remember, they have big road wins at Michigan State, at Washington, visiting USC, and it's Joe Igber to give them a 7-0 lead. Meanwhile, Oregon trying to do what Miami did, escape and remain unbeaten. UCLA with a chance to win it. Wide left, does that sound familiar? Chris Griffith, no good from 51. Oregon survives. It is <laughs> wide left day. Oh, boys, great game. Oh, Second and 19. After South Carolina's second sack, 
Inside to Ernest Sims. One of their two seniors. And down at the 35-yard line. We will continue to point out these things that the footing does not allow Lorenzen. He normally, so believe it or not, he does have quick feet. He has no opportunity to make any attempt to escape here. And Jeremiah Garrison made a nice play, but I think the footing is a factor, and we'll continue to keep you updated on that. Out of the gun, out in motion now, Chase Harp. They are coming after Lorenzen. And he can move for a 300 pounder. Before he got it to Pinner, the whistles had blown him down, and that makes him furious here in Lexington because oh. he was not down. He might have had no momentum going anymore, but he was not on the ground yet. And for those of you who smirked at home when I said this guy can move his feet, there it is. This guy can move his feet. And I'm not sure, Mike, uh, you didn't like that call I sensed from you. He does have some quick feet. He's keeping him underneath. Here's the hole. And they're saying, you know, that his forward progress was stopped. But let's look at his feet. This is close to a 300-pounder here. Don't believe the 275 you see in the, in the press guide. And he's moving those feet very, very well. They will go for it on fourth down 17. Four-man rush, quick kick by Lorenzen. And it will roll inside the one before Cook downs it. Wow. That is absolutely brilliant football. 35 yards. If it was 35 yards and a foot, it would be a touchback. <laughs> Lorenzen with a perfect quick kick. That's where Carolina will start. Tracy. Tracy? What? What's the story? How about a little hustle? How about taking it easy? You think the world revolves around you? I got you? a lot of teeth to brush. You're another pampered athlete. That's... Wally, no! No! Zerbiak! Zerbiak, get out here! There's a line. This ordinary looking bed is the key to a restful night's sleep. Even though it may look like an ordinary mattress, it's more comfortable than you can ever imagine. Introducing the Nautilus Sleep System. Nautilus uses variable support chambers designed to let you control the comfort on your side of the bed. Individual remote controls allow you to increase or decrease the firmness on your side of the bed. So you can have that feather soft feel and your spouse can get the extra firm support he or she has always wanted. Features like a wool blend pillow top for winter, a silk blend pillow top for summer, and our unique comfort layer make Nautilus the choice for a great night's sleep. It's time you feel the instant comfort of Nautilus with no money down and payments as low as $30 a month. Try Nautilus in your home. We guarantee the best sleep you've had in years. If you're not completely satisfied within 12 weeks, return it for a full refund of the purchase price. Call now for your free video and brochure and discover instant comfort with the Nautilus sleep system. ESPN2's College Football Saturday Night, brought to you by Acura. Introducing the 260 horsepower Acura TL Type S. And by 1010-220. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes are 99 cents. That Lorenzen quick kick has 70,000 on their feet. With South Carolina backed up literally to its own goal line. You know this is going to Pinnock. You know it is. If I'm Kentucky, I come up, man, blitz the run gap. Go for the safety right now. Everybody on the line as Jenkins sneaks for a yard. There should be a flag here. The right halfback, who is Pinnock, lined up in the wishbone, is moving prior to the snap. No flag, no snap, no gain. And here's how it got there. The second most important thing, second only to ball security in football, is field position, and it doesn't get any better than this. Look at that, just nonchalant, and he's got the home run trot off the field. Nice, nice kick. Full house again. Great fake. 
And over the middle, caught by Brewer to the 23. Let's check in with Matt Weiner. Dave, first ever overtime in Michigan Stadium against Penn State. Nittany Lions get a field goal that on third and one. Chris Perry breaks through for the game winner. Big Blues now beating Joe Paz six straight years. And I have got to think no one has ever had a six-year winning streak over Joe Paz. Nope. Well, something of a gutsy call with Jenkins feeling some pressure, but... Out of the shadow of their own goalpost now. And Jenkins rolling gets away from Burns. And then dropped hard by Tayo Aboke. Up from safety. Very tough to defense the play action out of the wishbone. This is John Goodner, the defensive coordinator that's doing such a good job here at Kentucky. And what you tell your defense is you must keep them down inside the five and make them punt from the back of the end zone. 70% of the time that results in a score for your offense. South Carolina was able to get off the goal line with the excellent play action and pass. Well, good. We thought South Carolina may be the best team they've played this year, even better than Georgia or Florida. When all is said and done. Long pass broken up by Anquan Huffman, intended for Troy Williamson. Hung the ball up there a little too high. Chance for the defender to come back for it. But let's keep an eye on it. As Michelle started talking about this, and we'll keep an eye on it, watch the turf coming up. It may be some drainage going on, and that's fine, but the grass is still wet. And look at the turf coming up. Now watch him set up. The back foot sliding a little bit. Maybe a little more difficult to step into with that back foot coming up. I don't know, Bill. You talked about the old clay subsurface they had here. Yeah, it was a lot worse than this. Jenkins. Underthrowing Williamson. And they did dig it out from literally their own goal line, but now we'll have to uh, kick it back over from the 25. You will see people who do not keep the weight over the balls of their feet, and I know I'm being repetitive here, but what happened with Corey Jenkins is that he did not set up keeping his the primary amount of his body weight over his feet when he stepped backward that's when his foot slipped and he, he lost purchase made a poor throw so Dean to kick senior out of Barnwell South Carolina fair catch Abney Crawford pretty close to him but no flag this time on a 35 yard kick coming up next our college football triple hitter concludes on ESPN 2 10 Eastern 7 Pacific BYU visits Chance Heritage and the 5 0 Air Force Falcons. College football Saturday with what should be an entertaining conclusion. Notre Dame has taken care of its business. They knocked off Pitt. Now, if Air Force hangs on uh, against BYU at home, then they'll have an undefeated showdown at 10 Eastern, 8 Mountain next Saturday on ESPN. Here's Penner. It's about three yards after contact and five all told. Brought down by George Goss. R2 senior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, who is also their leading receiver. 20 catches and a couple of touchdowns that way coming in. Eight touchdowns on the ground. He has scored at least one in every game so far. Chase Harp just limped off the tight end. Didn't see what the injury was. Penner. This time running into a wall at the line of scrimmage. South Carolina defense is tough as nails, and they may give up ground, but they do it grudgingly. Randy Jackson, Sean Smith on that play, headed up by Charlie Strong, one of the better defensive coordinators in the country. Every year considered for head jobs and Hopefully one day we'll get his opportunity. There's Charlie. Oh, he will. Bright, cheerful guy. Yep. Tough as nails. Excellent it. defensive coordinator. And he will make an excellent head coach. In fact, you're surprised it hasn't already yep. happened, right? right? Harold Jackson, another good one. Former uh, teammate of Bill Curry, in fact. Now on the Kentucky staff. We're scoreless at the end of the first quarter. South Carolina and Kentucky in Lexington. Fake File and Deal, the new hit series from ESPN, Tuesday at 8.
fly somewhere in the Acura TL Type S. Number one. Number one. Ah, 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 ah. Want to see the pros do it for real? Ha! Win a trip from Castrol to the Super Bowl and the Pro Bowl. Go to AutoZone for details. Guess who? Hello? Hello, Mr. Storm. The dreaded telemarketer. Nice. It's strong. Telemarketers got your number? Get the Telezapper. And soon those annoying calls will just about stop altogether. Available at stores everywhere. Rated E for everyone. This is what it feels like when I start draining threes. This is what you'll see when you bring it in my lane. This is what it feels like to be dunked on. This is what it feels like to play in the NBA. NBA 2K3. Reviewing our last fiscal year, the numbers from January were slightly better than the numbers from February. However, the numbers in January were identical to the numbers in March. The numbers in April were slightly lower than the numbers in March, but identical. Like playing games? Come to Best Buy, where you can play the latest video games and try out a lot of other cool stuff. Best Buy. Go ahead, turn on the fun. I remember I was craving a cheese sandwich, only I didn't have cheese or a car. So I built my own ride. At the same time, an unsuspecting Mr. Yang Lem Chu was getting his car. We rode 400 miles until fate intervened in Cheddar, New Mexico, at a house of cheese. And I can't help but think, was this coincidence or part of something bigger? Second year head coach and a 31st year head coach. Head to head tonight, Guy Morris and Lou Holtz scoreless as we begin the second quarter. Dave Barnett with Mike Golick, Bill Curry, Michelle Tafoya. Sold out Commonwealth Stadium. A series that is dead even, 6 6 and a tie. Third and three. Flagged down as Lorenzo looks and scrambles. And throws complete to Chris Bernard. Bernard brought down by Matthew Thomas in the 46-yard line, but there was movement before the snap. Yeah, movement on the defense coming off sides. Nice play by Lorenzen running to the line, forcing the defensive back, Dante Robinson, to decide what he's going to do. But obviously, they'll take the reception to climb the penalty. This be in two game track through the first quarter. We had a deluge about an hour before the game, and so that's left a slippery, uncertain track. We've seen that affect Jenkins already a couple of times. And for Lou Holtz, if he wins, he ties his former mentor, Woody Hayes, for eighth on the all-time win list. Remarkable, though, that after an 0-11 start, he is a game over 500 at Carolina. And Pinner stopped for no game. And he's done it in the Lou Holtz way. At, at Notre Dame in 1988, he's the only coach in the history of keeping these kinds of records to win the national championship on the field and to win the national championship in graduation rate, which he did at your alma mater, right. Mike. That's hard to do. He has done a great job everywhere he has and gone. He just in. proved that you can do it right. And what a storyteller. <laughs> that, One too, of the best. that too. We'll call time on second down and ten. First time out for the Wildcats. And let's go down to Michelle. Well, you know, Lou Holtz came into this game, Dave, being concerned about Kentucky's receivers and what they do with the football after they catch it. If you compare the team's passing statistics, you'll see that coming into this game, both teams pass at a completion rate of about 61, 62 percent. But look a little more closely at Kentucky's yardage, 801 of the yards that they've earned. That's 73 percent of their passing total came after the catch. So South Carolina's defense this week worked on getting two to three players to the ball after the catch to try to slow down Kentucky's passing game. You've seen some examples of it already, haven't you, Bill? Seen some examples, and what, what it forces defenses to do 
you have to deploy you get spread all over the field which makes it more difficult to converge on the football now watch the white shirts the defensive linemen must turn and run they must be involved the secondary players are not going to tackle these elusive guys by themselves so you see he was hit what three or four times yeah. before he came down Defenses are being forced to play more zone, which means you can complete more of those because when you're a man, your back is turned to the line of scrimmage. And if a guy does get loose, Mike Hill running the end zone. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's another one of those situations where we may have to keep an eye on footing as the defense of South Carolina is breaking to the ball. They need to keep their feet and break down in front of those receivers. Now, after the timeout, second down and 10, pump fake, and then the handoff to Pinter. And let's check in again with Matt Weiner in the studio. Tate, remember last week, USC gave up all sorts of offense to Washington State, an overtime loss, and now down 14-3. Terrell Williams, a one-yard plunge, and Cal is up. Meanwhile, Oklahoma about ready to take the Red River shootout, 35-24. Seven interceptions this, is this game. They've hurt the Sooners the least. That's me, Trent. Well, same story for Chris Sims and Mac Brown against OU. Third year in a row. Texas led 14-3. Pinner on the screen. Here's some yardage after contact. About five extra give him 11 before he's chased down by Sean Smith, the nose tackle. Now what Pinner does, and all great backs can do this, is he does keep his weight over the balls of his feet. Why are other people slipping? And Pinner's keeping his feet. Look at him. When he lands, he doesn't step out to the side or way in advance. He's got his weight over the balls of his feet. Yeah, and give it up, Jason Rollins, Matt Huff, two old linemen. There's Huff right there, 61, getting down the line again. Pinner not getting hit until the second level. That means your line is doing an excellent job inside and getting outside on those screens. Out of the gun, Lorenzen. Well protected, another screen. Hart the tight end. Only good for a couple this time, thrown down by Jermaine Lemon. Now, one reason that Lorenzen can keep his feet on a field like this is because his body weight sinks <laughs> in his cleats much deeper than anybody the else. The man is bigger than two of his linemen. Nick Seitz is 280 and Jason Rollins is 275. Jared, Jared Lorenzen is not 275. I guarantee you that. That was junior high. Let's go about two. Oh, no, 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 I lost no, it. No, I lost still, it. You're about, not, you're still not quick enough. about 290, 295, pushing my weight, I think. Well, there's a reason that we don't know. They don't know. They don't want to know anymore. Uh -oh. Oh, Solid nice. open field hit. Wow. That is how you do it. Dante Robinson, the junior corner from Athens, Georgia. Yes, indeed. Coaches and young players, this is how you tackle somebody in the open field. And this is a great uh, running back here now. At least a very good running back. Maybe a great one. He's certainly, watch this now. He's got good moves. He's under control. Dante Robinson zeroes in on his belt buckle and nails him right there, picks him up. Puts him in the ground. Already has his fourth interception of the year tonight. Here's third and one, Kentucky. And out of the eye, they toss for Pinner. Short side of the field, first down and more. To the 15, 14-yard line, R2 Spinner. Close to great, Mike. It's the job of the defense on third and short to make penetration. They did not. It's the job of the offense to stay on your blocks. They did. And then Pinner finds the hole. Watch, you'll see no penetration. You just see Kentucky guys on blocks. Giving Pinner the hole, he makes a little jump and is through. And when you're loading up on the line to stop the short yardage, that's a fantastic jump. It's a great jump, a great job by Antonio, or rather Sylvester Miller, number 75, the right tackle. He landed with the weight over the balls of his feet. High again and can't pay this time. The fullback on the carry and lost it. And the Gamecocks have recovered at the 11-yard line. First time Lorenzen hands it to anyone other than Pinner, and Mike Campe, senior fullback, turns it over. The single most important statistic for Kentucky this year is plus six, which is what they are in the turnover margin. What they have not done is this, is put the ball on the ground. They'd only fumbled. They've lost two fumbles the entire season. This makes three at the absolute worst time. And I guarantee you, South Carolina is saying about time is happening to somebody else because they've given up enough fumbles this year. Langston Moore, senior nose tackle, caused it. Jeremiah Garrison, linebacker, recovered it for Carolina. 
And this is Dondreal Pinkins in at quarterback. Short toss to Ryan Brewer. So a quarterback change with a sophomore Pinkins, who had most of the practice reps this week, but has bothered himself by Brewer's left hand. I want to remind you, Thursday at midnight, catch the latest series from ESPN Original Entertainment. The season, SEC football, follows the cheerleaders, students, parties, alumni, players in class and on the practice field. Key SEC matchups every week with an emphasis on the home team. And the uh, families were following the Wildcats here in Lexington this week. Pinkins to Pinnock. And Pinnock reaches the 18 before he's dropped to bring up a third down at four. That's what I love about Pinnock in the big backs, Bill. You see he takes that swing pass, and he doesn't try and sprint going toward the sidelines to get all the can. He just turns it upfield and almost is hunting somebody up to hit. He Love looked, seeing the big guys run. He's looking for one of those three safeties to run over. <laughs> 255. That was uh, before lunch his freshman year. <laughs> Pinkins getting this series. He has played in uh, four of the first six games. Not his first time on the field. Brewer somehow comes away with that. Ripped it away from Roddy Riley. I don't know if Riley looked up and saw the ball in time, but it was right there for the taking. And Brewer took it away and has the first down. Ryan Brewer was player of the year in the state of Ohio. His senior year in high school was not highly recruited. Lou Holtz gave him a chance to come play Division I-A. He has been just priceless in every way. Now, is this a football play or what? That's the way to put it away. Ryan, right there on your hip. Morris Lane also had a piece of it. As Pinnock fights just to get back to the line of scrimmage. He was most valuable player in a bowl game where they defeated Ohio State as if to say, take it there, folks. You didn't recruit me, now you pay. And the thing that's impressive is this guy doesn't seem big enough, strong enough, or fast enough to be Division I. As you said, Lou Holtz gave him the chance. And there you are in a critical situation. Who do they go to? Ryan Brewer, the guy they know they can count on. Well, who made the catch coming off the goal line? Ryan Brewer. Pinnock. And he charges forward for five, six yards. Michelle's got some more thoughts on Ryan Brewer. Well, remember what Lou Holtz told us? He said, if you come to South Carolina and you're looking for a number one draft pick and you're looking for vertical leap and strength and size, you're not going to take Ryan Brewer. But if you're looking for dependability and everything else you want out of a player on the field, you are going to take Ryan Brewer. Well, and despite one ankle that's about twice its normal size, he had it operated on back in May. Pinkins keeping and has a first down. In fact, Pinkins coming off a broken ankle himself on August 18th. Now bear in mind what we're watching here in this drive is a South Carolina team that's converting one third down after another on a defense that gives up less than a third of the time a third down situation. Another first down. Jenkins, two of seven, 23 yards. Pinkins is at all three of his throws. All short ones. And keeps his time after faking to pin it. Does pretty well to almost make it all the way back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Deion Holtz had a pretty good hold on it. Lassa, hang on, Deion, hang on. <laughs> Comes in from the outside, doesn't go for the fake. Pick is trying to get outside. Hope got his best hope, didn't he? Hold on. Come in. Now, okay. down, down here we say, get your best hope. Your best hope? Yeah, and he holds on to him and get him down. <laughs> Fits. <laughs> nice job, Deion. That's hard. That's a recruited walk-on from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Second down, still 10. This time, Penny does take the handoff. And runs right into the safety, David Johnson. <laughs> and every time he runs the ball, he runs somebody over, yeah. and he lands on them. And I know you love that, Mike. It's what you call an ice pack game. I mean, a lot of ice packs <laughs> going on after the game on both sides. You know, Penner, we've already seen him lay some shots this time. Yeah. Pinnock laid out David Johnson or ran through him, but Johnson, hang on. They're hanging on. Third down again. Kentucky defense accustomed to getting off the field in these situations. Pinkins, quarterback keeper all the way. Wildcats had it all the way. Morris Lane tracking him from the get go. 
going to the well an awful lot with that play. I mean, it really is just a quarterback sweep, and if you have any kind of discipline on defense, which this Kentucky defense has, guys are going to stay home and run him down. Just does not have enough speed to get around the corner on this disciplined, very fast defense, and there's defensive coordinator. Mr. Goodner very happy about that. That's the face of anxiety <laughs> and momentary relief. Pretty much a permanent state for someone in his position, isn't it? Tyler Dean gets off a nice one, and he backs up, he backs to his 10. Now Derek Abney goes to work. A wall in front. Abney run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. <laughs> oh, my God. A 50-yard punt, a 45-yard return by one of the best in the country. Watch out, oh. Tyler Dean. Oh. Wow. Behind him is a 400-square-foot deluxe bachelor with a partial view. In front of him is a junior executive semi-private with no view. But right now, life is perfect. On the open road, in complete control of a six-speed, 200-horsepower Acura RSX Type S. Mozzarella Chicken Supreme is so delicious with its two slices of mozzarella and parmesan sauce on our whole breast filet. It's taking people to a higher level. Wendy's Mozzarella Chicken Supreme, it's better here. Man, Zito's jersey smells rank. Whew. You need to wash it. Can't wash it, it's his lucky jersey. What about the streak? Just wash it. Um, Steve, we have a problem. He's starting today. MLB Authentic Collection, available at these fine retailers. Consider this. New Shell gasoline is specially formulated to help prevent deposits in your engine. And a clean engine performs better. Is it any wonder, then, why so many drivers choose Shell? Kentucky gives out an award for the big stick, the biggest block every week. I think we have a winner. Tayo Aboke. Oh! And use your term, Bill. Bless his heart. Tyler Dean, the punter, tried to make a play. Well, he he just sac got... sacrificed his body. <laughs> I'd say. Mr. Aboke said, uh, I think I can run this guy over. The previous winner of the Big Stick Award, Jared Lorenzen. Not above throwing a block. Pinner. Leaping inside the 25 and down to the 21. Our two spinner, 24 yards, continues a big first half. This is, again, the offensive line. He does a great job of just tucking in behind the big guys, South Carolina, not get off the block. Watch him just tuck in. He's going to almost disappear. Look at the blocks on him. He just tucks right into those guys. Just He almost disappears. Then he comes right out the other side. Great job by the big guys up front. 75 yards, 10 carries. Well, Archie Spinner, best game, 163 against Middle Tennessee State. Well on his way to that and more. In motion, Glenn Holt. Here comes Holt. Out of bounds with a late flag. Knocked out around the 10-yard line. A true freshman. And the flag will come on holding against Kentucky. Critical mistakes are killing drives for Kentucky, but they do not spoil this kind of ball handling. Watch the big fella. Beautiful, beautiful. And then he just has to turn and take a look. 
Hold is on Jeremiah Drobny, number 84, right there, grabbing the jersey, ends up pulling him down. You got to keep those hands on the inside, and you can get away with it. As soon as you put them to the outside and pull that jersey, they're going to call it every time. You teach them hands in the chest, keep them inside, pull them right to your body, you can get away with the holding. Not that you should do that, but that's how you should do it. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to try to work That's how you, you should I'm, do it. You I'm, should. You put your hands inside and get them. Pinner. To the short side. And down at the 20. So don't do it, but when you do it, do it this way. B Bill's not even going to jump in on this. Like, oh, certainly. I mean, offensive I'm like not going to discuss that with you. We play the rules <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. that are the rules. You're right. You get your hands on the inside. That's what you should do, right? And, you, and, and if I were playing against you and I grabbed your shirt on the inside all day long, that would please you. No, wouldn't I be very mad about that? Oh, you would. Because, Why? You were, because you're holding me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it applies only to others. <laughs> the the D-lineman should be getting mad. Just a couple of feet on first down. Draw play for Pinter. And picked his way down to the 16. All right, so again, just to make sure I understand, yeah. do not do this. However, when you inevitably well, do do this, don't do it this way. Don't do it this way. Yeah, well, what Mike's again. talking about is, is, is rules essentially are what is called. And if your hands are inside the plane of the body and not outside the shoulder pads, and you're holding that shirt, you're not going to be called for that unless the shirt comes away from the body. Exactly. We see we do agree, Bill. But Go ahead and get your hands on the inside I just, and hold I them. just wanted to know if it would be okay if I were playing against you for me to hold you. I don't think your attitude would be quite as charitable. No, it wouldn't. Only do as I say, not as it's done to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so if I leg whipped you, that wouldn't bother oh, you Oh, see, that would be a problem then, Bill. Kentucky will call it second time out. 3.51 to go. Second quarter looking for our first score tonight at Lexington. Behind them is a 19th century cabin with a 19th century roof. Ahead of them is a 21st century modern with a 21st century electrical system. But right now, life is perfect. Thanks to a clear sky, a smooth ride, and the electronic four-wheel drive, 260 horsepower, Acura MDX. Your friend is dead. Katie Burke is the only one who believes her old boyfriend is still alive. He's back. He's been watching me. Because she's the only one Katie. he's after. I go away. Look what happens. Katie Holmes. Wherever you go, I can follow. Benjamin Bratt. Why are you doing this? What are you going to do about it? Move on with my life. Abandoned. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday everywhere. How you look on the outside reflects how you feel on the inside. Introducing Ohm by Olay. The only body wash that restores your skin with natural ingredients and Olay skincare science. Ohm Body Wash Bar Mist and Scrub. Guess who? Hello? Hello, Mr. Storm. The dreaded telemarketer. No, it's, it's strong. Telemarketers got your number? Get the telezapper. And soon those annoying calls will just about stop altogether. Available at stores everywhere. Stuart Scott and the gang get you ready for Monday night. Monday night countdown, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Delivered by UPS. Dave Barnett, you were talking about this earlier. Here it is, the big stick award handed out to the offensive player. Now, not a lineman. you got to be a back or a receiver. Or in the case of Jared Lorenzen, the only quarterback to ever win this for throwing quite a hefty block in the Middle Tennessee game. Do we have time to show it to you now? Take a look at this. Golick, you can circle the play. Uh, you'll see big Jared Lorenzen. They'll, they'll do it for you. You'll see exactly where he is. He's going to get downfield, and he is going to lay him out. We'll, we'll get the rest of that after we see this play. Play fake. Lorenzen pump fake. Gets it to Pinner of the wall. Pinner for a first down. Let's go back to it and finish off the play again. Jared, we've seen him, Bill, watching him in tape. This man likes to get downfield and block. He doesn't this just is like amazing. hang out. This is amazing. Look at his speed. Look at him fly. <laughs> oh, and behind the block. Boom. Oh, behind the runner, too. You don't want him to do that, but what a great hit. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a legal block, but yep. you should never block behind the runner. But it gets you the big stick award. He has not missed. 
10 for 10, mostly short stuff. That one got him just outside the 10, so not quite first and goal. And he's got to call his last time out. What is South Carolina doing that is causing uh, these quick decisions by Lorenzo that they can't go with the call play? We'll talk about that when we come back. Sunday at 11, have breakfast with the NFL Countdown Crew. Where would you rather be right here, right now? Terry Glenn faces his demons in New England. Deep down inside, I probably was, I was really hurting because I wasn't out there. Get a glimpse of Emmett Smith's most prized possession. Jerry Rice turns 40. Are you nuts? Rice reflects on his 18 seasons, plus John Madden. And our spotlight shines on the Dolphins and Broncos. I'm all over that game now. Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. Minutes. Get the rules. This game, you're the judge, jury, and execution. What happens to the bodies? They just disappear. Hmm. You like the shotgun? Yeah. What are they, Britt? Yeah. I like the laser blaster. <laughs> Forget you. <laughs> Today, something new will happen. A new idea, a new medicine, or a new invention will revolutionize your world. At Tech TV, new is what we do every day. Innovative television about new and life-changing technology. From the amazing to the breathtaking. See the world of technology through the eyes of one truly original television network, Tech TV. New things, turn us on. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday Night. Brought to you by the all-new 200 horsepower Acura RSX Type S. And by Paramount Pictures presenting the new film Abandoned. Opens October 18th everywhere. Rated PG-13. Carolina came out with a front that uh, Lorenzen decided he could not run the call play against, and then Bill just ran out of time in the play clock. That's right. He either had to run the bad play or call timeout, and he selected the timeout. Can't do it anymore. They're out of timeout. Tommy Cook in motion. First down just outside the 10. And Lorenzen still perfect. Has Cook across the middle for a touchdown. Such a great job, guys, of out route, out route. Then Cook goes in the middle and finds the hole in the zone. We talked about crossing routes. They do a great job of sending receivers one way and coming back the other. Very nice offensive play calling package. They are number one in America at converting inside the 20 yard line. That's 20 out of 21 times inside the 20 that Kentucky has scored. 18 of those 20 touchdowns. They're Correct. not going down there Correct. settling for three very often. Taylor Begley on to make it seven to nothing. Eleven for eleven. Jared Lorenzo, 96 yards and a touchdown, first of the year for sophomore Tommy Cook out of Victoria, Texas. They have Kentucky on top late in the first half. Sergeant First Class Brian Berkebell. And you can see my strength. Are you in on it? 
Go to CheapTickets.com for tons of unpublished airfares you won't find anywhere else. Or call now for our lowest prices on airfares, hotels, rental cars, and last-minute trips. Want to save even more? Check out our last-minute trip specials now and save up to 60%. Cheap Tickets, the best-kept secret in travel. Tommy Cook has thrown the only incomplete pass. In fact, it was uh, intercepted on a flea flicker by Dante Robinson. Lorenzen has it missed. His 11th straight completion is a touchdown to Cook. And a fast-moving first half, 7 enough in Wildcats. Brewer watches that one go through the back of the end zone. And one more look at the touchdown. Takes a lot of things to score a touchdown, including blocking. Pinner is an excellent back, but look what he's doing right here. He's knocking a big defensive lineman onto the ground. That's Jason Capers to allow his quarterback time to take his time and thread the needle once again. Lorenzen, uncanny accuracy tonight. Corey Jenkins has returned to quarterback for Carolina. Don Grill Pinkins had a series. And now back to the starter. There's him up in the eye. And Kenny Irons with his first carry. True freshman hit for a loss. Down in the show. Dave trainer Rod Walters of South Carolina told me Jason Capers has a very bad left ankle as he described it. He's being taken in for x-rays. By the way, Spur Rashad Faison also went, for, went in for an x-ray. They are waiting on the results. So two big-time defensive players down for South Carolina right now. And Capers started because Dennis Quinn had a sprained ankle against Mississippi State. Quinn made the trip. Thought to possibly be available for a player two. Irons again to the 25, and let's hear from that one. Well, Dave, they're going to be shocked in Southern California. Kyle handing it to the Trojans of SC. Kyle Bowler up top. Jonathan McCullough comes down with it. And the Golden Bears up 21-3. Actually, I don't know how shocking that is anymore, the way Cal has started this year. They played it well against everybody. Wildcat fans on their feet, hoping for a stop on a third and five. And they're going to get it. Jenkins sacked at the 17. Otis Grigsby. Two stunt The stunts on both sides of the line. You're going to see the D linemen. They're stunting. The tackle's coming outside. The end's coming inside. Watch on both sides. On the top and underneath. Grisby came from the outside, caught on the tackle, went to the outside, to the inside. A lot of times you get those linemen then not passing off good, well enough, and you get the sack. And they almost get a block punt. Dean got it off. Not much in the way of yardage on this one. And a flag is down as Abney is hit after just a 29-yard punt by Dean. And slow getting up for uh, Carolina. Dante Robinson. And the flag against Carolina. And we'll see what uh, Matt has coming up for us at halftime. Well, Dave, we've got wide left. Something new for Bobby Bowden in the Florida State Miami series. We'll tell you what made the difference. The Red River rivalry devolved into a bit of a rout. Mark May explains why Oklahoma won the game. Plus, bonus ball in the big house. The first ever overtime gives Michigan their sixth straight win over jump ball on Penn State. It's all coming up at the half. And Kentucky with field position now after the short punt plus the penalty. And a minute 13 to work with. And no timeouts. They burned them off. Lorenzen has his first incompletion go off the hands of Chris Bernard. That was pretty well by Taki Muhammad. Yeah, that's the first really bad pass he's thrown. That was not a good pass. Tight man coverage. Well, he's got a whip, a safety he? behind him. What you do is you teach your quarterback if there's a safety back there behind that corner, that means that corner, in this case it's Taki Muhammad, can break on the football and, and he doesn't have to worry about the deep stuff. Bad reading. 
Bump fake now looks, buys time, and somehow got it off before he was sacked. And Pinner Kyle drives his way to the 28. As we get under a minute, and Kentucky goes hurry up. No timeouts, remember. They've used all three of them. Twice with the play clock almost down to zero. They have time, get the first down. That'll stop the clock. We're still all right. Behind the game, 26 yard line. Snap with 39 seconds. And again, Lorenzo has to scramble and then throw it away. Now, the field conditions once again have a big influence. A kicker that can't get his plant foot down and get good purchase and get good traction slips and invariably falls as he kicks the ball and it, uh, that doesn't that doesn't help you to get it through the uprights they've sent Begley out his best of the year is 49 this is going to be 46 yards Begley redshirt freshman out of Danville Kentucky four out of six for the year out of the hold of Glenn Packala and flags as the kick sails through Unbelievable. But whistles before Pakalak had the snap down. Langston Moore jumped off sides. What a this a first down. Number yeah, 57. But I, I might be inclined to keep these three points with only 33 seconds. I think they were blowing the whistle. They did that. Yeah, they, they were blowing blow the, the whistle, so it doesn't that matter. That was a dead ball yeah. off sides by the defense. Penalty's five yards from the previous spot, which was the first down. What's the head of the holder when Pakalak is? Yeah, it's the center's head that got him to move, but he's not supposed to be watching anybody's head. Yep. Coleman Barnes, fine long snapper for Kentucky. Excellent snap. So D line was supposed to be watching what, Mike? The ball. Right. Drive continues. Lorenzen incomplete intended for Aaron Boone. Ooh, he had his man. They had him in a zone and he got that nice crossing route. That window right between the linebackers. Aaron Boone, one of the big receivers. And you're going to get that with South Carolina tonight. They're, they're a zone team. So if Lorenzen has time, he's going to be able to find the guys with the hole in the hole. Bad pass there. Second down, 28 seconds. They go on over the middle. All that time, maybe for a couple more. Backwards pass, pin. And gets out of bounds around the 23 with 24 seconds. There goes as a running play for R2 Spinner. Continues his big first half. Excuse me, Dave. Offensive coordinator Brent Pease for Kentucky credits the success in what they call the blue zone. There's Brent right there with the hat on. He calls it the blue zone for obvious reasons. Most people call it the red zone. He credits it to his wide receivers. He gets his big receivers in the game. Plus, when they can, inside the 12, they get in two tights and just hammer it in. They'll have to throw it in if they get there this time. Starting the field four wides. And Lorenzen with time. Floats one to the end zone. And no chance that time for Cook to run through Robinson's coverage. They'll have another chance to get Begley a field goal try with 17 seconds. I'm impressed with these wide receivers. Harold Jackson, my old teammate with the L.A. Rams. Marvelous job, and man, he was a gazelle on the football field. It was fun to be on the team with that guy. Harold Jackson and Jack Snow in L.A., Harold Jackson and Harold Carmichael in Philadelphia. Wherever he was, he was dangerous. So after... Having one try wiped out by the penalty, 41 yarder, and that one is drilled as well. 10 nothing. I'll tell you something else that's impressive. It's these special teams of Kentucky. Right future for you at the University of Kentucky. Ten nothing Wildcats 
And if Carolina wants some really bad news, Kentucky's best quarter, probably the third. They've had two 28-point third quarters this year in their first five games. They're doing a great job on special teams. Martin Nelson, the special teams coach, has got these guys believing. He's got cooperation from starters and backups, and they're playing so hard, and they're returning kicks, and they're making kicks. They're doing things, the little tiny things in the kicking game make such a difference, and that's why Kentucky's doing well. But it's well, another reason. It starts with that guy we just showed before, the head coach, Guy Morris. He is. He has uh, changed the attitude around here for this Kentucky program. Guy Here's Morris has done a job. wonderful job. He's a colleague of my, uh, another of my old teammates, Raymond Berry, and he credits Raymond with an awful lot of his football he philosophy and the way he treats players. I can't imagine a better mentor. Yeah, the Gary Cooper type, too. He's a tough lineman, though. When you come to Kentucky, you expect to see big Lou Michaels kicking off left footed. You got it in. There's your shot. Oh, <laughs> there you go, Lou. My man. Clint Roof's kick through the back of the end zone again with 13 seconds. A Michaels like effort if we ever saw one. Don't forget, next, BYU undefeated Air Force. And this one will not be easy at all for the Falcons. Chance Herridge running their wing bone triple option attack. Brett Engeman runs the, uh, as usual, high-powered BYU. Look, that's 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, right after we're done here. And Notre Dame has remained undefeated. If Air Force can do likewise, those two will be perfect head-to-head -head in Colorado Springs next week. And we'll be doing that game. Hey, we will. Yes, we will. Lou Holtz has a 10-0 hole to crawl out of after the first half in Lexington. Kentucky with two late scores. And let's send you back from Commonwealth Stadium to the studio. And again, welcome, Matt Wine. Dave, thank you very much. The Gamecocks 10th in the SEC in scoring a 10-0 hole, not the place you want to be against the top-scoring team in the SEC. Matt Weiner and Mark May on a colossal, a ginormous day of college football. <laughs> the big one at noon was, of course, Miami and, uh, and Florida State. We'll right. talk about that in just a bit. We've got some big games going on tonight that might ordinarily be the biggest of the day. Cal up 21-10 on USC after taking a 21-3 lead. Kyle Bowler now one shy of the school's all-time touchdown pass record. Iowa State and Texas Tech battle of great quarterbacks. Right now, not much happening. Three all. Seneca Wallace, one carry, 16 yards. Kingsbury's only thrown five passes, 24 yards, and a pick. Jared Lorenzen came in, passing 60% on the year, hit his first 10. That number will go up. These numbers, 10 nothing at halftime. Behind him is a 400-square-foot deluxe bachelor with a partial view. In front of him is a junior executive semi-private with no view. But right now, life is perfect. On the open road, in complete control of a six-speed, 200-horsepower Acura RSX Type S. There's so many intricate details to the game, it becomes a chess match. I tend to look in the guy's eyes. Is he intense? Is he ready? Has he prepared? Is he afraid? Try to get a, a feel for the way guys stand, for guys blitzing. You know, does he do anything different than when he's playing zone? You have a lot of guys out here who are just artists. That's what the game of football is. It's nothing but an art. NFL Sunday Ticket on DirecTV. Flip through up to 14 games a week throughout the regular season. Believe me, when I retire, I'm going to wear my NFL Sunday Ticket out. Showplace, this is it, where you'll see new hit movies, all-time great flicks, gritty independent films, and all your movie favorites. Ask for Showtime Unlimited and get four premium networks on nine digital channels, all in one place. Show off, it's hard not to, with daring, innovative, new original series. Showtime Unlimited is breaking the mold with premium programming that's creating a buzz. Get nine unbeatable channels. Call today. Welcome back to the College Game Day Halftime Report. The game of the day early involved the number one team in the country, Miami, with their 27-game win streak on the line. Bobby Bowden in this series after suffering wide right three straight times. Well, at least he won't have to hear that anymore. Florida State and Miami in South Florida in a very good ball game. Second quarter, Kane's up 7-0. Florida State with the ball, and it's Nick Maddox around the left side. And 
He'll go 30 yards for the touchdown. Knowles up 17-14 at half. But this is the biggest part of Florida State's offense. Greg Jones pounding the football. Here he pounds it up the middle for a touchdown. Miami comes back down 27-21. Ken Dorsey to Willis McGahee on the screen. Busts out to the right side. Down the sideline he'll go. And will he? No. Down to the 11-yard line. Next play. He's a little tired, so he's going to let his backup, Jason Gethers, take the ball. Steams up the middle and goes in for the score. Okay, he's got plenty of touchdowns. Canes. Come back to lead at 28-27. Miami punting. Freddie Capshaw uh, shanks it. That's a three-yard punt. Worst punt of his career. Ugh. Florida State with a great... Ugh, that's it. Ugh. Florida State with a great field position with 2.05 remaining. So, we've seen this before. Wide right three different times since 1991, needing a field goal to win in the final second. You think so, Bobby Bowden has nightmares about this? Yeah, I'm sure he does. With Jerry Thomas, Dan Mowry. That was in 92. How about Matt Munyon? That's closer. Oh, yeah. Miami won that one 27-24. Knowles got to get themselves in position. Chris Ricks, much maligned, but gutsy down the stretch. Talman Gardner for a first down, and we're in range. For the win. The kick on the way. He missed it. Wide left. That's right. Wide left. Xavier Betia misses it, and Miami hangs on in a terrific ball game, 28-27. The game plan fairly obvious. Take the ball out of Chris Ricks' hands after the uh, six turnovers last year in this ball game. Give it to Greg Jones. He runs for a ton, and they still can't pull it off, possibly because of the way they went about things in the final seconds. Well, they were disorganized. It was a situation where your field goal unit has to run on the team. You should be prepared for this. This team was not prepared for this. Bobby Bowden and his staff have to go back and look at this situation, prepare for this for the next time, but it cost them a football game. The team had to hurry on the field. They were very disorganized. It was a bad snap that skipped off the ground and a bad hold, and the kicker missed the field goal, and that should have been the win for Florida State. Make no mistake, Florida State did everything they could yes. to win this football game, but actually well, win it. Well, for the first 59 and a half minutes, I give the Florida State coaching staff a B plus because they ran the ball with Greg Jones, but the last 30 seconds of this football game, they get an F. Miami did not play their best game. They did survive, and that's that's half the battle. The other showdown game of the day, of course, number two, Texas, number three, Oklahoma. That's Antoine Savage. That's Antoine Savage. He just runs away from everyone. Finds oh, oh, look at him go. 84 yards on the return. This is late in the second quarter with Texas up 14-3. Same drive. Well, this is huge in this ball game because Nate Hibble play action. He's going to find his tight end, Trent Smith, his first touchdown catch of the year. Hibble with four interceptions in this ball game. Early fourth, Texas up 17-14. Hibble to where Peoples and Peoples <laughs> drops it, but Quinton his gets it. His, his peeps covered for him. Quinton on the spot brings it in. Oklahoma up 21-17 and that's Morton Griffin. He just had a monster game. 18 yards on the touchdown and Oklahoma. This is a very tight ball game for a long time. Yep. Sooners run away with it 35-24. Sims, well, what can you say? Three more interceptions against a top 10 team. No touchdown passes and if you're keeping score at home, that's 14 interceptions. Zero TDs against top 10 opponents. Hibble also threw the four picks. Georgia, Tennessee, Casey Clawson out with that hairline fracture in the clavicle. James Banks, the third stringer, comes in. What a beautiful job of setting up the screen by James Banks. Taking the pressure, making the rush come to him. He drops it off to Derek Tinsley. There he goes. Tinsley off to the races for a 33-yard touchdown run. 18-7, the lead is cut. Remember, it was an 18-0 Georgia lead in this game. Banks pitching back to Tinsley. He's going to go outside. Wait a minute. Nice throw. Oh, Henry. Nice spiral to Jason Witten for the touch. The balls missed the two-point conversion, so they're down five. Buck 43 left. David Green pitches it to Tony Milton. Big run, big first down, and Georgia with a very large victory. 18 to 13. Terrence Edwards, by the way, eighth career 100 receiving, 100 yard receiving game at Georgia breaks the school record for career receiving yards as well. And a couple of large games, Texas Absolutely. and Oklahoma and uh, Texas. What can you say? Well, Lots of talent. We talked about this earlier. Big games, big players have to step up, and that's usually the quarterback in these games. Both quarterbacks did not play well. Chris Sims threw for three interceptions, Nate Hibble for four interceptions, but what the key to this game came down to was protecting the football at the end, coming up with big plays offensively. Once Texas got down in this game, they played scared at the end of this game. They said, oh my goodness, we're in this situation again. We've got to play comeback against a tough Oklahoma defense, and the Oklahoma defense just started pouring it on play after play. Hats off to Bob Stoops and Mike Stoops, as defensive coordinator of Oklahoma. They went into this game playing with a swagger with their football team and they said hey throw caution to the wind we're going to go out there we're going to play football and win they the, did the thought before the game was if nate hibble doesn't throw any more interceptions they, they win the game four. He threw four and they still win the game 
Oregon, UCLA, another great game. One after another today. Out of the Rose Bowl, second quarter, Duck football tied at 14. Keenan Howry fields the punt for the Duck. Check out this block. Watch number six. No, right there. Oh, <laughs> Get out of the man. way. Yeah, a little something to say about it as well. Ducks take the lead 21-14. First play of the fourth. Ducks down by six. Jason Fife, native Southern Californian. Play action to Howry and 34 yards of the touchdown. Well, UCLA had a chance to win this game, but they miss a 51-yard field goal as time expired. And Oregon hangs on 31-30. The Ducks remain unbeaten. School record for consecutive wins. They have now won 11 straight. Pittsburgh. Notre Dame. Second 43-0 pick. Carlisle Holiday. He did start. He did play. Finds Arnaz Battle. He found him. Touchdown pass. 7-3 Notre Dame. Fourth quarter. 7-6 Irish. Rod Rutherford. Nowhere to go. He's taken down and fumbles at the 13. On the ensuing drive, it's Ryan Grant. He'll take it in for the touch. Holiday, 15 of 24, 137. One TD, one interception. Pittsburgh outgains the Irish 367 to 165, but the defense does it once again. Irish remain unbeaten. Willingham first coach since Eric Parsegan to go 6-0. We're back. Out here, everyone has their own mountain to climb. To measure up to. Head for the mountains. Push. Just dial 1 800 call ATT for collect calls. It's free for you and cheap for them. Yeah. What you gonna do? Just dial right down the center 1 800 C A L L A T T. Save on every call. Use 1 800 call ATT for collect calls. You're cute. But dangerous. Chili's baby back ribs. To go. I think it's gonna be about a yard short. Bring it up fourth and one. Get in, get out, get on with your life. But Merck, we gotta see this. Congratulations. You found a boat in the middle of the ocean. It's a Porsche. This Halloween. I think I saw something I couldn't possibly have seen. A presence is awakening. I said we get the hell out of here. And another world. What are we gonna do? Is waiting. Ghost ship. I know all of this isn't real. Rated R starts Friday, October 25th. Well, if you're looking to make a phone call to Joe Paterno, you might check with Michigan. The Wolverines appear to have Joe Pa's number. Five straight losses coming into the big house. First quarter. Combs tries to down the punt. It's hit in the back by Ernest Shazer, and he is down. Lightning moment. Combs carted off the field. Fourth quarter, Penn State down 14-3. Zach Mills, find the Johnson, any Johnson. Bryant will do. 19-14 Penn State, then the two-point conversion. Mills, Bryant again. 21-14 Penn State. Michigan, answer. John Navar, Braylon Edwards, short touchdown, second of the day. We're 21 all going to the first ever overtime at the Big House. Perry. Touchdown, Michigan. Wolverines win it. Chris Perry wraps it up after a Penn State field goal. Michigan gets the touchdown, and Michigan gets the victory. Six straight against Penn State. Navarre 27 of 41, 246. A couple of touchdowns. These two teams don't play again until 2005. Wisconsin first road game for Barry Alvarez's team since August 31st. Fourth quarter, Indiana within five. Gibran Hamden drops back, sacks. Badger's got him four times after an incomplete pass, 30-17, 29-24 game. Hamden, Courtney Roby. Get that first down marker, he does. Drive, is a wide. 2.23 left, second and 10, Hamden. Glenn Johnson in the end zone. Nice snag. The two point is good. Hoosiers win it 32 29. Hamden 331 yards. Four touchdowns in Indiana. Gets a very large win. First ever win over a ranked Wisconsin team. They're now one in six in those situations. Michigan State coming off a bye week. 
into Iowa City to take on the high scoring Hawkeyes. Kickoff return. Somebody Jamel take Lewis. an angle on Jermel Lewis. Look at him. Look at the three guys. Nobody took the proper angle, but what an outstanding return by Jamel Lewis. 94 yards for the touchdown. Pretty darn easy. Yeah. Michigan State trying to get something going. Jeff Smoker. No. No. Derek Pagel. And Derek Pagel doing like Jermel Lewis. Down the sideline, 62 yards, and Bobby Williams can't be pleased by this. His team, well, not good. 44-16 is the final in this one. Banks, 154 yards. Fred Russell only went for 75, and yet the score tells you all you need to know about that ball game. Ohio State squeaks past San Jose State. The Road Warriors, 57. Maurice Claret, 132 yards, three more touchdowns. Iowa, very impressive against yes. the team. Coming off a bye, presumably well-prepared, comes in, and they, they kill them. They're fine, too, and Kurt Ferentz, the head coach, has this team rolling in the right direction. Obviously, their offense puts a lot of points on the board, but what's key in this game, their defense. They came, in this th they came into this game 116th ranked in pass defense against Charles Rogers. You would figure Charles Rogers would have a field day against this defense. They didn't. They rolled coverage towards them. They double teamed them. They had great one-on-one -on -one coverage, and the safety always came out to help. It was a great defensive scheme by Iowa, and I think a lot of teams will learn a lot from today's game to play against Charles Rogers. But the best team right now, in my opinion, Big Ten, Iowa bar none. Their defense had finally gotten to a stage, I think, Matt, where they're starting to get that swagger, that confidence about them, that they're not going to let anybody roll over them defensively. Three unbeaten teams in the Big Ten, Iowa, Michigan, and Penn State. And right now, you got to save the Hawkeyes of the team. Wildcats looking pretty good. They're up 10-0 on South Carolina. Be raw in bed. Ooh. Step in and out of the groove. groove. Deconstruction of construction. Liberation, Liberation from, from limitations. limitations. Exploration of mind and soul. So free. Wow. With control. Free with control. Freestyle. Freestyle. Act, acting in the net. Creation. On the fly. The fly. Fly. Your brain never asking your body why. Not knowing what your next move is. Freestyle. Agile. Mobile. Dancing and going. Whichever way it wants to be flowing. Mind roaming. So your body can follow. Body roaming. So your mind can follow. No right. No wrong. Just doing it. That's freestyle. Freestyle. With control. Freestyle. Free with control. Freestyle. That's freestyle. Go freestyle. Get live. NBA Live 2003. Rated E for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. It all starts here. Grade school. The place where our children begin preparing for life. And the SEC recognizes the responsibility teachers have to affect their future. The SEC's education initiative, every elementary school and library throughout the Southeast is getting this wonderful CD-ROM. It uses athletics to reinforce math and reading skills, and it teaches things like teamwork and good sportsmanship. The Southeastern Conference, creating a legacy for the future. Tackage. Jacket. He said. Vest. Acrab. Parka. You guessed it. They reverse. The Land's End family of Goose Down. $88 and down. Only from Land's End. State, one of those 11 Division 1A unbeaten to start the day. Texas, oh, what has lost so far? How would the Wolfpack fare against North Carolina? Well, Darian Durant has some ideas. Touchdown pass, 17 7, UNC, middle third, 17 13. Durant was on 20, he's scrambling, he's lost. He's, oh, just plain lost the ball. Wolfpack recover. Very next play, TA, like totally awesome. McClendon. Second touchdown of the day, four-yard sweep, 2017 NC State. They win it 
17. Missouri and Nebraska, a Nebraska team you might think ripe for the pickings for Truman the Tiger. And Mizzou, second quarter, buck 50 remaining. Actually, make it first quarter. Brad Smith, the Darius Outlaw, first and goal Tigers. They would convert and take a 7 0 lead. But Jamal Lord, very patient on this rollout. A nice little touch to Aaron Galladay. Cornhuskers take their first lead of the game at 14 13, and this was the backbreaker for the Tigers. Dewan Gross, Mark. Excellent block. Excellent. Look at the move here. Oh, pick up your shoes, young man. <laughs> Nebraska hangs on. They get a big, big 12 win, 24 to 13. And, uh, Important win for Nebraska, the way things are yes, going. Yes, it was. It was. But I want to go back and talk about the NC State game. Chuck Amato's team played very well today. He's got a hot quarterback in Phillip Rivers. But his running back is a freshman, T.A. McClendon. He is one of the top two running backs in the country, in my opinion, along with Maurice Claret. But he has heart and character. He played with a cast on, had surgery on his wrist last week. Tough player. Banged up. Big game today. They get Duke and uh, Clemson next. Kentucky, the 15th touchdown pass of the year already for Jared Lorenzen. They're up 10 nothing on South Carolina. And the next table goes to Miller. What are you for? Outback presents Call Ahead Seating. Just give us a ring before you come and we'll put your name on the waiting list. That way, when you show up, you'll get seated quicker. I just want to thank my wife, Rita, for, uh, for calling ahead. I love you, baby. Call Ahead Seating. Now at an Outback near you. You have the ultimate power to look better, to be stronger, to redefine your body and yourself. Introducing the Bowflex Ultimate. Gonna make you Quite win. possibly the best home fitness machine ever made. In as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week, you can get real results that can change your entire body. With over 90 Health Club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance, it's like having an entire gym in your home. Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. Own the new Bowflex Ultimate with no money down and monthly payments lower than many health club dues. Call and ask for a free video and brochure and check out the entire Bowflex lineup or visit us on the web today. What the new Bowflex for ultimate results. I've invented a test that protects South Carolina waterways. We're developing plants that can actually pull toxins from the soil. Our research focuses on genes that prevent a normal colon cell from becoming a colon cancer. It's like a natural vacuum cleaner for toxic waste. My team wants to reduce heart disease in South Carolina. What I do... is hard to describe in words. But it matters. It matters a lot. We're improving lives in South Carolina. That's our definition of education. 10-0 Kentucky. And set for the second half now from Commonwealth Stadium. About 70,000 or so packing it tonight, Lexington. Dave Barnett with Bill Curry, Mike Golick, and Michelle Tafoya. Lou Holtz's offense produced just 104 yards in the first half. And virtually nothing out of the passing game. Meanwhile, Guy Morris got a late touchdown pass from Jared Lorenz and Tommy Cook, then a Taylor Begley field goal. And uh, we'll find out what Michelle found out during halftime. Well, I spoke to Guy Morris, Dave, and I asked him about his defense holding South Carolina scoreless. He said, we're not doing anything special. We were just very well prepared and we're playing hard. But he said he's really unhappy about the two fumbles and the interception in the first half. I also spoke with Lou Holtz coming out of the locker room. He's very disappointed in his team's inability to convert on third down. He said field position and penalties have killed us. And as you just cited, Dave, he said we have got to be better in the passing game. Even though, Dave, coming into this game, he said we can't make a living passing. We're going to have to run the football. But right now he's looking for more productivity out of the passing game. Now they came in, not an aerial circus by any stretch of the imagination, but balanced. And there's been no balance whatsoever so far tonight. So Clint Ruth gets the second half underway. And Brewer returns from the one. Wildcats have him bottled up at the 17. And the first half ESPN2 game track. Our two spinner, when you hear the Kentucky fans with that twos, they're talking about this complete football player. He's a dominant 
running back who can block and also catch the football. Jared Lorenzo hit his first 11 passes, finished up very nice for the half. Nice routes by the receivers. They have excellent offense moving right now, mixing in the run as well as the pass. The average starting spot for a drive by the Gamecocks has been their 17. This one begins at the 18 with a handoff to Penny. And Penny stretches to the 24 yard line. Penny didn't have a bad first half, but again, only 104 yards and only 36 passing yards. The problem for the Gamecocks. The biggest keys to the football game are the three turnovers by Kentucky. Other, otherwise, the score would be much larger. And the field position that Derek Abney has provided along with the excellent special teams on the Kentucky team. Corey Jenkins started, played all but one series on a bad ankle. Runs independent. And then down to 27. Well, they have been really going to the well with either the handoff to Pinnock off the uh, off the shotgun or the quarterback keeping it. And I have to believe Kentucky has it kind of figured out at this point. Well, they're very lucky that ball didn't go on the ground right. because that was a snafu. It was a snafu in the back. Field. Snafu. Yes. All right. South Carolina only three out of eight in third down conversion attempts. Just needing a little over a yard this time. And out of the full house, they give it to Dacus Terman, a true freshman with his first carry of the night. Call it, Mike. Oh, he's got it. Oh, okay. He's got the first down. A little shocker there. I'm sure everybody watching on TV and in the stadium here thought it was going to Pinnock, 255 pounder. Pull a little switcheroo and move the chain. Not a bad choice, though. Terman broke. Herschel Walker, yeah. <laughs> Georgia single season rushing record, 3,167 yards two years ago, Washington, Georgia product. Plenty of time, and then it breaks down, and down goes Jenkins on the sack, Ellery Moore. Wow, that is explosion. Fresh legs, huh, Mike? I'm going to tell you what. Dwayne Robertson, Jeremy Cotto, and Ellery Moore may be the three best D tackles in that rotation you may see in the country. Watch Fantastic him accelerate. job. Look, look how he look how he exploded to the ball. He's the backup defensive tackle. Did you teach <laughs> him that stuff? That dance? Yeah. I don't it looks even like near the rhythm. Did you're you my dancing bear. Ten <laughs> they don't have very much depth, but more one of the best backups they had. This is a team record. Six straight game. They started the same 11 on defense. Long pass wide open. Troy Williamson. Williamson to the 30 in a foot race and run down from behind by Antoine Huffman finally at the 17 yard line a 58 yard completion and on one play they get more passing yards than they had for the whole game. This is a blown coverage. Derek Tatum number 21's in coverage. Oh, he boy. absolutely busted on the out route. It's not a blown coverage. It's a blown assignment. Bad coverage. He broke, <laughs> he broke on the out cut and the free safety couldn't make the hit for him. And Bill you said it earlier three turnovers by Kentucky kept this one close and it's a play like this and all of a sudden South Carolina gets a little bit of life. See if they can stick it in the end zone. It looks like they're at least going to get a chance at some points here. Williamson, a two-time state champ in the 100 and the 200. Well, Jackson, South Carolina, quarterback draw. And Jenkins down to around the 14-yard line where he's hit by Justin Haydock. Well, I don't think we have to worry about Jenkins' ankle. We kept talking about it. He didn't practice during the week because of the bad conditions in South Carolina and tweaked that ankle. He's run the ball quite a bit tonight. Well, Lou says he's our best back right yeah. now. How about so, it? Just talking to Coach Holtz on the conference call. There's Troy's yards, 24.9 per catch. That Not too play. bad. That will play. 58 yard catch and run got him down for their first real scoring chance all night on second and seven. Jenkins has Brewer out right there for the option. And Kentucky reads it all the way. Derek Tatum up. Derek Tatum redeeming himself. Had the force on the pitch man on the option. Coach Skip Holtz, the offensive coordinator for South Carolina, hadn't shown his option package. You always know he's going to have it in. He and his dad both coming to the left here. Ryan Brewer in perfect pitch relationship. Cumbie on the inside taking the fill. Tatum on the force from the outside for the loss of six. Third and 13 now.
man rush. Jenkins separated from the ball and recovered at the 22-yard line. Jeremy Caudle with the hit. And the Gamecocks very fortunate that Travell Wharton was able to fall on it, and they will get a field goal chance for Daniel Weaver. You ask any quarterback worth his salt, where does he not want pressure right up in his face? And this is where Caudle comes. Nowhere to step up. Can't step outside. They take the outside the way. Can't step up when a defensive tackle is coming at you. Makes it very difficult. These D tackles are playing fantastic for Kentucky. Longest so far has been 36 for Weaver this year. Here's a 38 yarder to get the Gamecocks on the board, and he has got it. So Lou Holtz finally gets some points. Tries to keep his sideline fired up. 9.44 to go in the third quarter. 10 3. J Lo, 12 out of 60. He goes back to work when we come back to Lexington. A new, more powerful V8 engine. More distinctive styling. 368 improvements in all. The new 2003 Discovery. It's a whole new way to see the world. From Land Rover, the most well-traveled vehicles on Earth. Nicely equipped from $3.99 a month. Complimentary scheduled maintenance included. Wendy's Mozzarella Chicken Supreme is so delicious with its two slices of mozzarella and Parmesan sauce on our whole breast filet. It's taking people to a higher level. Wendy's Mozzarella Chicken Supreme, it's better here. Man, Zito's jersey smells rank. Whew. You need to wash it. Can't wash it, it's his lucky jersey. What about the streak? Just wash it. Um, Steve, we have a problem. He started today! MLB Authentic Collection, available at these fine retailers. What's SportsCenter's best spot ever? You decide. Vote at ESPN.com now and choose your favorite. You might even land a walk-on role in an upcoming SportsCenter promo. And you could win a T-Mobile sidekick just for voting. SportsCenter, only on ESPN. There is a start. There is a finish. And in the journey between, there are dreams. The NCAA Hall of Champions keeps these dreams alive for you. More than a museum, the NCAA Hall of Champions takes you on an interactive journey. Relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of a student athlete. At the NCAA Hall of Champions, you'll find something for every fan. Discover what it means to be a champion. The journey begins inside. Kentucky leading 10-3 and South Carolina about to take the field on defense without starting defensive end Jason Capers and starting spur Rashad Faison. Faison's negative or x-rays came back negative rather he's okay but he's out for the game as is Jason Capers. No word on Capers uh, x-rays they haven't come back yet but both players are out Dave Barnett. Well big loss when you can't go with Faison. Second team all SEC. Their leading tackler last year. And Capers had started because of the injury to Dennis Quinn at defensive end. So they are even uh, less deep on the defensive front. Joel Dollar's kick to Abnick. Abnick bringing out maybe late hit. No, no flag out there. Although Kentucky fans sure wanted it. They wanted a flag thrown on uh, Jonathan Martin. And this this is a big big drive here for South Carolina. You saw Lou Holtz pretty animated after that field goal. He was going after the defense, saying you've got to give us a chance right now, get it going. They've already forced three turnovers. Yep, they got the interception in addition to the two fumbles we saw there on the graphic. From the 22-yard line, <laughs> SEC passing leader, eighth in the country, Jared Lorenzo. <laughs> R2 spinner. About five yards. If you ever watch a South Carolina football game, just do yourself a favor and watch Lou Holtz and try to estimate 
how many miles he walks during the course of the game. I mean, it's got to be at least five or six, don't you think? Always pacing up and down, back and forth. Every once in a while, he'll drop to a knee, watch a key play, and then back to his uh, nightly walk. <laughs> So he weighs about 145 That's pounds. Exactly right. Pinner with a toss. And that one battled up for no game. Let's check in with Matt Warner. Hi, right, Dave. LSU in the swamp tonight. Rex Grossman. Say hello to the number one pass defense in the country. That's Corey Webster stepping in front and stepping in for a 45 yard touchdown pass. Bengals up 13 0. Well, wow. Kentucky. Almost pulled off the surprise in the swamp. Maybe LSU does it tonight. Kentucky did it with their special teams too, and Abney is—he's one of the most exciting guys I've seen anywhere this year. Abney wide right on third and five. Lorenzo looking his way, almost intercepted. Miscommunication between Abney yeah. and Lorenzen. One of them was wrong. He expected. Lorenzen expected Abney to keep coming in the hole there. Abney was reading zone, and when you read zone, you hook up, and they just didn't communicate, and it probably should have been an interception. Charlie Strong encouraging his man over there. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Martin. Martin should have made that uh, interception right there. That's a big play you're looking for. Lorenzen, who hit his first 11, now one of his last six. Hackalack gets off a monster punt. Thomas back to his 10 and he might turn this into a monster return. Got a huge block and still going. Finally knocked out of bounds. A 62 yard punt by Pakalak. Wow. His longest of the year. A 21 yard return with the marker. That's back around the 20. A lot of times, and Bill, you'd know this, and being a coach and obviously overseeing special teams, sometimes you outkick that coverage. You had a lot of room to run after he caught that ball, but how do you tell, tell your punter not to boot 160-some yards? Huh? Well, you tell him to get you some good hang time, yeah. and that did have, that thing was really hung up. That was probably a five-second hang time. That's a good block. Yeah. If that's what they called, yeah. the head was across, and that was a legal block. I don't think that was what they called. There's another hit. I think that was legal, too. That is a clip. When the head is behind the player, that is a clip. Taki Muhammad. Taki Muhammad on the clip. So wipe out the big return for Thomas. They're going to start back inside their 10-yard line. Lou Holtz trying to tie his former boss for eighth on the all-time win list. And his quest continues. A new, more powerful V8 engine. More distinctive styling. 368 improvements in all. The new 2003 Discovery. It's a whole new way to see the world. From Land Rover, the most well-traveled vehicles on Earth. Nicely equipped from $3.99 a month. Complimentary scheduled maintenance included. Every Saturday, I get together and play football with the guys. But this Saturday, I had to take a time out. Hey, Steve, you okay? It's my throat. It's all dry. <coughs> hey, mine too. I think I got just what you guys need. Come on. It was a good thing Brad was there. He explained that... We were thirsty, and he gave us ice-cold Bud Lights. He told us that by drinking the Bud Light, the parched feeling would go away. You know what? He was right. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Call ATT for collect calls. Stuart Scott and the gang get you ready for Monday night. Monday night countdown, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Delivered by UPS. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday Night. 
Brought to you by Land Rover, the most well-traveled vehicles on Earth. And by Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Carolina's won the last two Gamecock Wildcat battles, 42-6 last year in Columbia, 20-17 here two years ago. Last year's margin, their biggest ever over an SEC opponent. But they've trailed since late in the first half, 10-3. They start from their nine-yard line. And in the gun is Jenkins. He'll keep after a nice fake and turns it into a big gainer. Jenkins will be out of bounds near the 40. Driven out by Tatum, a pickup of 24 yards. This is just poor defense. You have a job of containment over to the right side of your screen, and the man just darted inside. I think that was Sweet Pea. That was Vincent Burns. That the was end number out 98. There. Vincent yeah. Burns decided to just take off and drive down inside. His job was to contain, unless there was a stunt where someone was supposed to replace him and allow the long game. Mark him out at the 34. This time the handoff does go to Terman. And let's hear from Matt Weiner. Dave, we showed you Cal taking the big league on USC. Well, the Trojans are on the comeback. Carson Palmer, Mike Williams. Nobody can bring him down. He'll get into the end zone and cut the lead to four. It's now 21-17 Bears. So the Trojans showing some life. So are the Gamecocks here, the other USC. I think Corey Jenkins' ankle is fine. <laughs> yeah, I would say. Wow, what a run. Take it down at eight after Davis Terman got two. And Jenkins has it intercepted by Tatum. Tatum broke on a great read intended for Michael Ags. The senior out of Cleveland has the pick. Great read, but Jenkins looked there the entire, entire, entire time from the snap. When you see, he just absolutely looks right to his left, never takes his eyes off where he wants to go, makes it incredibly easy for Tatum, who baits him and breaks on it. Now, this this look got three entires from going. Yeah. And if you get three entires, that means you did not look off the safety. The corner was able to break on his eyes. Beautiful play by Tatum. Another bit of redemption since he gave up the long ball. And another bit of good field position, although Lorenzen will go down again. And the Gamecocks have done a good job of game tackling when they have a chance to sack him. Down to Michelle. Uh, you wonder what they're saying to J-Lo down there. Among all the nicknames, they could be calling him hefty lefty. Goodness knows what he hears in the pile. But I had a chance to sit down with J-Lo yesterday and ask him which of those nicknames is his favorite. I love Pillsbury Throwboy. I think that's very creative. I like Battleship. That's kind of cool. And, and J-Lo. I mean, I have three favorites. It, it's really hard to pick from me. That's incomplete. Sims that's the target, why. and it was not quite a backwards pass. <laughs> I love Battleship. I, I love the Pillsbury Throwboy. Get yeah, some more thoughts. Also that's why I like J-Lo. That's, that's the main key why I like J-Lo. That's, that's the good thing about that nickname. That's, that's, definitely my, that's definitely why it's one of my favorites. Oh, he likes it because the real J-Lo yeah. looks so nice. I would. I, I don't think anybody Jared, is going to confuse the two. You do not look like the other J-Lo. No, not at all. Never to be confused. And uh, also not with Jared from Subway either. <laughs> The run juggled and finally caught by Penner at the 40. You know what the best thing about him is he rather than trying to right. do away with that image and um, you know bristle at the the, uh, the role of the biggest quarterback he embraces it. He wants to be known for it. And look, the Pillsbury throw boy quite honestly is my favorite and what the interesting thing to me is Guy Morris head coach said listen. You know, we're not going to weigh in. We're not going to tell you what you have to be, but you better perform or you're going to find yourself on the bench. So it's up to Jared Lorenzen to make sure he's in, in shape and ready to play. And lest he disbelieve, he got benched for five games last year, so he knows that Coach Morris will keep his word. And the only thing these guys really fear is the bench. 
any of them. He came back, finished the year with five straight 300 yard passing games. And obviously this year's picked up where he left off last year. But no doubt, when you when you can go ahead and laugh at it, yeah, that's a it's a great thing to do. Instead of fighting it, he just goes along with it. He has fun with it. And you know what? Bottom line is he's backing it up with his play on the field. Well, we had a wonderful trainer with the Baltimore Colts, Dmitry Spasov, who used to say, "Most important commandment is not ten commandments." Ball, Here's the delay by the offense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Took to the Still delay on purpose. Took the delay on purpose, but Dimitri said most important commandment is don't take yourself too serious. That's right. Not 10th commandment, 13th commandment. Where he got that, I don't Hammer. know. Back a lack. You want to back up after you see him last one 62 yards. And this one will net him only 26 as it goes into the end zone 46. 5 12 to go in the third. Guy Morris and the Wildcats leading 10 3. As the two men in her heart meet for the first time. So you're Vaughn. The parents she never knew may be meeting for the last. I will kill you. A new alias, ABC Sunday. On an all-new Beg, Borrow, and Deal, the race is on. Every second counts. Team Contact has major plans in the minor leagues. They kind of played a few tricks on it. While Team Kobe brews up some plans of their own. Sweaters off, sweaters off. Beg, Borrow, and Deal, Tuesday at 8 on ESPN. Euro 2004 qualifiers kick off this fall with England versus Macedonia live on October 16th. Don't miss this exclusive opportunity to watch England fresh from their World Cup experience. Live on direct ticket pay-per-view. England versus Macedonia live on October 16th. Growing up in a small town, hockey's a religion. I always pretended to be Wayne Gretzky. So did every other kid on the street. So we were all battling against each other as Wayne Gretzky. My mom used to have a, a fog horn that she would just stick out the door and blow when she wanted me to come home, or we would have stayed there all night. Catch the NHL Center Ice free preview, October 9th through 15th, from Direct TV. Playing in the NHL it was always a dream. I feel very honored to be a part of it now. Low scoring game now as we move to 5 12 in the third. Still 10 3 Kentucky. And uh, Carolina able to move the ball starting from the 20. Last promising drive ended with an easy interception by Derek Tatum. Like Mike Golick, outstanding football player out of Cleveland. Unlike Mike Golick, a two time Cleveland youth chess champion. <laughs> no, that wasn't me. There's ain't Derek no, Tatum. Ain't no good at that game. <laughs> Take the pivot. Short gain on the keeper. So when you're this deep in the game, you've held South Carolina to three points. You have played some impressive defense. Tanya, this, this Kentucky team, it used to be, you know, if they won, it was 45, 42, 35, 30, 30. I mean, it was it was high scoring games, but this defense is for real now. Guy Morris got him believing, John Goodner got him playing. It really is a complete personality change, yep. Bill. I mean, it, it is. The, I think people around the country still think of Kentucky as 60, 70 passes a game out of the spread. And, and Mike, as you said, if they win, they win despite giving up 40 points. That's not just Kentucky. Hanging one up deep and incomplete. Out of bounds for Mikhail Goodman. Let's go down to Michelle. Well, after last year's 2-9 and nine finish and facing probation, they knew, the Kentucky knew, they had to win with what they had. So defensive coordinator Dave John Goodner took over the off-season workouts from January through spring practice, and he worked the team, what he says, harder than ever. In particular, weightlifting became an emphasis. And it says a lot that a coordinator took command of that program, doesn't it, Bill Curry? It does indeed. Because the coordinator carries such weight with the players, they'll show up, they'll work harder when that full-time coach is in attendance. Here's a third and nine. Overthrown badly. Horrible-looking pass intended for A.G. I'll tell you what, when they've gone back in the pocket, though, there have been a lot of Kentucky defenders around the quarterback. Does look like he's able to set in there. He's getting pressure again in, his, in the face. This veteran offensive line, and especially up the middle with Robertson, having great trouble 
stopping that penetration. And Mike, you said it so well. Quarterbacks do not want those people in their face or around their feet. Abney waiting for this kick around midfield. Look for Wildcat field position to again, as it's been all night, to be terrific. Not bad coverage. Not a man as dangerous as Derek Abney. A 44-yard punt, not bad either. Let's check in with Matt. Earlier today, Dave, Arkansas at Auburn, and Fred Towey had a game. And Towey, not just his name, it was his mission, 80 yards here. Career high, 244 yards rushing. Hogs run wild on Auburn, 38-17. Well, that just doesn't happen at Auburn. Arkansas coming off the six overtime loss in Tennessee. Can you imagine the Suey Pigs in Auburn today? <laughs> wow. This is typical field position tonight for Kentucky. Over at their 40, and they'll start with a give for a couple to Pinner. Monday night countdown delivered by UPS provides up to the minute NFL news, comprehensive analysis, and live interviews. Stuart Scott, Tom Jackson, Ron Jaworski, Sterling Sharp, and Chris Mortensen. Get going at 7.30 Eastern. All the news from the best in the business leading up to Monday Night Football with Al Michaels, John Madden, and the birth of a division rivalry as the 49ers visit the new stadium in Seattle. Jeff Garcia, Sean Alexander, Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern. Second down and seven. Lorenzen underneath Aaron Boone. Where's number 13? was born on a Friday the 13th and came in tonight with 13 catches for the year. Not really what you call the Triskaidekaphobic type. And we talked about yards after catch. Michelle brought that up early. The amount of yards they get over 800 yards coming into tonight. Triskaidekaphobia being the fear of 13 as potential bad luck. What's the fear of trying to say that word and butchering it? That's uh, my fear. Pinner, <laughs> <laughs> high for a first down. I've got to tell you, Pinner is a football wow. player. The guy does it all. He goes up in there, and if he's got a nice hole, he explodes for a long game. If he has no hole, he makes one. He is a man. Watch him take on the tacklers here. If you're going to tackle me, you're going to pay. Nice job. He does have a little crease, but not much. Bunch of people hitting on him. Dragging him for the first down. 17 carries, 96 yards. They're both the pinball twos. wizards yep. tonight. Pinnock and Pinner. They've been strong. Pinner again inside the 45. The thing with Pinner that's amazing, he can't comes into the game leading receiver as well as a leading rusher. And the receptions he makes, you see him run up the middle. The receptions, it's just like a sweep. They get him the, they get him the quick shot right out to the side. It's just like a, a long running game, the way they throw to him. They get the ball quickly in his hands, out in space, and it's just like a sweep. It's not like he runs out for long routes, or a lot of times he's in short routes. It's just a little swing pass. He and not Lorenzen was the number one defensive priority for Charlie Strong. Lorenzen gets that one out to Cook and hit immediately by DeAndre Island. The big guy can be taken down, but it is not easy to do. And go around his <laughs> well, feet. Well, you know what? That was smart. He sensed, he sensed that pressure at his yep. feet. He just leaped backwards to keep from having his foot planted. It is smart. You're right. I think the most impressive thing about Lorenzen is his mind, his quick wit, the way he thinks on the field, the way he thinks on his feet now as a player. Five out of 11 on third down. They just need one here. Probably one in motion. And they did not wrap up. Pinner to Marker is down. Island chasing Pinner. Knocked out inside the 10. Dante Robinson saves six. It's 29 yards if the play stands. Probably not going to stand. It's going to come back. Holy. But, but that was just like we've seen all night. Pinner just hides behind that offensive line and waits for the crease to develop, and then he hits it. But all for now. Watch him just watch him just hang out. I'm going to stop it again. Just where you see him hiding back there. It's just it's fantastic. He just tucks right in. Boom, boom, stays there and a wait for the crease. Excellent job of the O line staying on the blocks. Unfortunately, one of them cheated and held. <laughs> now there's just a slight hole. Oh yeah. You see that jersey going yep. again? Yeah. 
Got a piece of that jersey. Who is that? Jeremiah Drobny. Jeremiah Drobny again. Yeah, he got called. Second right. time for Jeremiah. That's deadly stuff. Drive killers. Instead of a first down inside the 20, they're way back almost at midfield. Where do his hands need to be, Bill? Inside the plane <laughs> of the body, big fella. And in effect, a 41-yard penalty. Third and 11. Lorenzen almost intercepted, intended for Ernest Sims, and it probably should have been picked off at the 30-yard line. It went right into Island's hands. And the same problem that has plagued this Kentucky team, the one thing the excellent coaching usually takes care of that has not happened with this Kentucky team is eliminating the foolish penalties. They've only had four penalties tonight, and that's uh, an improvement, but they've not been timely at all. Brewer with a fair catch, and again, South Carolina with horrible field position. 36 on the kick by Pakalak. I want to salute the Marines assigned to Camp Fuji, Japan, watching our telecast on the American Forces Network, including the men and women of Headquarters Battalion, who provide training support for Marine Station throughout Japan. Hope you're enjoying it from Lexington. One of the better facilities anywhere in college football when it's packed like tonight, 70,000 Commonwealth Stadium. Almost all happy at the moment. 10 3, and Carolina backed up again. Short keeper for maybe three yards. And Jenkins again paying a pretty heavy price every time he's kept it. That time, Jeremy Caudle blasted it. So Jenkins is being deployed like a running back. They're at the line of scrimmage, so we won't have but a second to talk here. He's taking a heck of a physical beating in addition to having to do all the thinking and throwing. I think it's hurting his throwing. I really do. Might have. The final play of the third quarter here as they go without a huddle. And again, straight keeper. Wrapped up again by Dwayne Robertson. Now, Mike, those guys uh, that are yeah. hitting him are the big guys. They're the defensive tackles. Yeah, th this I, I don't understand that this play calling. They're trying it again up the middle with these guys. It's just not working. These D tackles are too good. They're trying to run up the gut, not even quick hitters. Nobody's blocked them all year. That is the end of the third quarter. They're on their feet in Lexington with a bid to go five and one and win more than they did the last two years combined if they can hang on to the seven point lead. Watch Monday Night Countdown, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN, delivered by UPS. A new, more powerful V8 engine. More distinctive styling. 368 improvements in all. The new 2003 Discovery. It's a whole new way to see the world. From Land Rover, the most well-traveled vehicles on Earth. Nicely equipped from $3.99 a month. Complimentary scheduled maintenance included. napkins well guess what bounty quilted napkins are finally here the stronger longer lasting napkin bounty what y'all need where's the dick only Tostito Scoops have the bite-sized bowl-shaped design that's perfect for dipping and dunking every time. I thought that was a myth. <laughs> so however you like to dip, there's only one dip lover's chip. I own this court. Yeah. No, no, I really own this court. You guys got to go. <laughs> Tostito Scoops, the dip lover's chip. No matter how they toss the dice, it had to be the only one for me is you and you for me. So happy together. Okay, okay. All right. You can be St. Louis 
and I'll be Detroit. So happy together. There's a place where I get my favorite Italian sauces with all kinds of pastas, plus unlimited salad and breadsticks. Sounds like mom's house, but it's Olive Garden and their never-ending pasta bowl for $7.95. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. From John Woo, director of Mission Impossible 2 and Face Off, starring Academy Award winner Nicolas Cage. My responsibility! A full throttle, heart-pounding action thriller. Wind Talkers, buy or rent a Tuesday. We begin the fourth quarter with a third and nine facing the Gamecocks from their own 12-yard line. They trail 10-3. Trouble all night moving the ball. Jenkins gets this underneath for AGs. He'll fight his way out for a big gainer and a foot race. AGs caught finally at the 30 by Claude Segal but not before a 57-yard catch and run. They've had a 58-yarder to Troy Williams and now a 57-yarder to Michael Agees, and that's just about the sum total of the Carolina passing game tonight. And we've talked about the Kentucky lineman getting out to block on the screens. Excellent job now by the South Carolina lineman, especially Shane Hall, 71. And AG turns on the speed and excellent security of the football at the end of the run. Very good fundamental football. Senior out of Rex, Georgia, who waited his turn and has taken advantage this final year in the program. So the Gamecocks in business. But Jenkins wants to use the timeout. Yeah, he was looking over at the sidelines to see if there was going to be an adjustment to the play as the play clock was running down. He kept looking over to the sidelines at Skip Holtz, standing next to his dad. They're behind his dad right now. There's Skip. Corey was seeing if they wanted to get out of it, kept looking over there for help. Look, he's looking over, looking at the play clock, looking back over. What the signal he's giving means, please yeah. hurry. I Give need me. the play. Yeah. Give me the Something. play. And then what happens when you get confused on the sideline, and fans ever figured out how much confusion occurs between the coaches and the field, they would probably fire everybody. But it happens, even to the smartest, and the hoaxes are among the brightest in all of football. And that time, they couldn't get it together. ESPN2 game track through three quarters. Any dose of Lorenzen's heavy. <laughs> and that was the big play so far of the night. A touchdown pass to Cook. Defense has been terrific, with the exception of the two long gainers. Jenkins has had no field position to work with. Battle of the ankle and uh, swarming Wildcat D all night. And with all that, South Carolina trying to put themselves in a the position to tie it up. Yeah. Kentucky has played excellent defense this year, but a stat that jumped out at me prior to the game, they've been, they give up 15 yards per catch to the opposition passing game. That means that there are a lot of big plays breaking, and two of those have occurred tonight to put South Carolina right back in this game. Jenkins has four completions for 139 yards. You do the math. Reverse AGs. AGs down near the 10 yard line. Driven down by Quintus Cumby, 19 yards. Fundamental defense involves contain. Somebody has the responsibility to stay at home. Right over here to the right of the top. Okay, right up here. Somebody. Claude Segale should have been staying at home. Instead, he ducks down inside and gets beat to the corner. First and 10 at the 12. Jenkins keeping. And inside the 10. Like the South Carolina offense has had uh, an infusion, all 11 of them, of a completely different attitude. Ever since the, the second big pass of the night, Michael Age is a completely different look in terms of yep. body language, yep. in terms they're, of the obvious adrenaline. They're there. energized, and they're 18 out of 26 with only 12 touchdowns out of 26 opportunities in the red zone this year. So they're not operating very efficiently in this part of the field in a general sense. Full house. Jenkins faking, keeping, breaking a tackle, and then fumbling into the end zone. 
Who's at the bottom of the scramble? I think they might have got it. I think a lineman may have gotten on it. Well, I guarantee change, you. It may change hands three times. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say, Dave. There's a lot going on in that pile that you don't want to know about. In the bottom of that pile is a real ugly place, folks. <laughs> there's, no, there's no place for the faint of heart yeah. down there. We've both been there, Bill. Oh, yes. And, and Still waiting for an <laughs> indication. Well, touchdown. Yeah, I think one of the big linemen got on the ball. I think Watts Sanderson won the wrestling match. Now South Carolina goes back to misdirection on that play. We'll show it to you when we get a chance. And this time, contain is achieved on the backside. But no tackle made. No tackle made. David Johnson has the opportunity. Okay, turn it back inside. David Johnson gets it turned back inside. And then somebody's got to be coming inside out to make the hit. And if he fumbles the ball, somebody's supposed to fall on it, but just a gut check down there. Daniel Weaver to tie it. 10-10. Well, well. So this game has become a gut check. Uh, this is these old linemen hustling in. You see the fumble. They're down there blocking. They're down there gutting it out as well. Seeing their quarterback try to get in, you see him lose the ball. The big 300-pounder in Sanderson, he goes in diving for it. Boy, Derek Tatum had first yep. crack. Yes, he did. Antoine Huffman had him dead to rights. All he's got to do is get a, get a piece of him rather than dive on the ground. Watch Tatum, 21, coming here for Kentucky. He's got this ball dead to, oh. Well, there's someone getting in the way. And then big old Watt Sanderson dives on it. Covers it up with his 300 pounds. Ain't nobody going to get it. Both these programs are well coached. We practice fumble recovery every day, yes. believe it or not. And there's a way to curl around the ball, try not to lay out, but then you get in a hurry and you forget your fundamentals. And what you really ought to do is get in a fetal position, curl right. around the ball, and end up with it in your stomach. Hey, Michelle, what's the controversy down there? Well, Guy Morris and his staff arguing with the officials down here that you cannot fumble the ball forward on fourth down. And if you do, the quarterback has to cover it. But these officials disagreeing with Guy Morris. That's that's the story down here. They fought adamantly but got nothing out of it. Well, it wasn't fourth down. It was not fourth down. Right. That's yep. the problem. If it's fourth down, they're right. Michelle, you go tell them it was, wasn't fourth down. I, you know, I don't want to be the one to tell them that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Take that bat with you when you go. Yeah. yeah. Or, or write it on a piece of paper and hand, <laughs> and it, to hand it to them and run. Andy Rooney would be impressed if you did. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not aiming for that, Dave. <laughs> In the second half, a lifeless Carolina offense has dominated Kentucky. Abney to the 30. Let's check in with Matt Weiner. Dave, as we showed you earlier, USC dug themselves a hole. They've gone about the business of digging out ever since. Michael Wagner with the touchdown puts the Trojans back on top, 24-21. Meanwhile, saw you. Rex Grossman get picked for a touchdown. It's a little revenge here in the second quarter. Taylor Jacobs, who else on the other end of this scoring strike? Just the second touchdown pass allowed by LSU at 13-7. 10-10 game in the second half. South Carolina 176 total yards. Kentucky only 36. Kentucky led 10-0. New game. That one's batted down to the line of scrimmage by Dennis Quinn. And we were told. He was doubtful. He would suit up, try to go a few snaps, and Dennis Quinn, who sprained his left ankle in their last game against Mississippi State, gets that one batted down. Rain about an hour before the game. Didn't keep 70,547 from filling Commonwealth Stadium. It was a pretty good downpour, too, for quite a while. They hung out in the concourse for a while until it stopped. <laughs> but I think, as advertised, this field has drained well enough that I don't think we've had any footing questions at all in the second half. Two slips in the first. Lorenzen tosses to Penner. Artuse Penner's had a huge night and a flag down as he's knocked out at the 35. Dante Robinson gets the hit. Looked like a clip on Aaron yeah. Boone. That 13 did backfire on him a little bit. And you get an end run and the side judge throwing a flag, it's usually going to be against the offense. In run. I hadn't heard that term yeah, in a like long that. time. Run around the end. 
We're not done on ESPN2. When this one's over, our triple header winds up out west with BYU at undefeated 19th ranked Air Force. And you can't get a greater offensive contrast than BYU. And no, and you can't get greater fun than to watch those two play. Fun. Let unless, me tell you what. Unless it would yeah. be Notre Dame versus Air Force. Yeah, and that's, that's going to be next week. And I, I had my games against Air Force when I was at Notre Dame, and it was anything but fun when they triple option you to death. They can do it. There's two head to head next week. Notre Dame will go in undefeated. We'll find out later tonight if Air Force will match it. Second down and 20. Lorenz in with another give to Pinner. He's over 100 yards now on his 19th carry. And right at 104. Now, Dave, you noticed it first, but just the way the South Carolina team is conducting itself, yep. the way they're running on and off the field, the way they're holding their, their bodies. I saw Mike McGee, the outstanding athletic director at South Carolina and a dear friend of mine. I saw him at the half. He and his lovely wife, Ginger, he said, you watch the second half, we'll play better. Man, was he right. They've been on adrenaline IVs. Totally different team. They've got them looking at third and 18 now. Lorenzen to Pinner right there on him. Preston Thornball is loose. Oh, and it in comes in for Antonio Hall. And they're going to wave that one dead. Yeah. Good, been, right? I, I, Toos, I've been bragging on you, man. <laughs> what? Don't do that. That? That was a very serious mistake. That is a, what the coaches hope at Kentucky is that that's not a demonstration of a loss of poise by the whole team. Now they got to get themselves back on the sideline and just think about what we do when we get ourselves in trouble. We get on the ground, take our loss, and punt the ball. Boy, how can Guy Morris look so calm? They've got some sorting out to do because they've they've brought the ball forward about five yards from where that play ended. But let's think about what we've seen the second half. We've seen missed tackles. We've seen serious mistakes in the penalty game. Now we're seeing a lack of poise by one of the guys that's one of the best football players, I think, in the conference. He's trying what to throw it back. He was trying to throw it back to Jared Lorenzen. Well, he missed. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Brent Pease has never drawn well, that. Is an illegal play. pass. By the offense, penalty is five yards from the following spot, followed by a loss of down. Yeah, that play was so ugly it deserved a flag. Well, <laughs> it must have been a forward pass because if it if it's a backward pass, well, it wasn't. That's yeah, a, that's an incorrect call. You're right. It was a forward pass, though, Billy. Threw it oh, forward. Was it forward? Yes. Okay. Yes, if it, it was, was forward, that was a correct call. Well, Charlie he Strong threw it, threw it to a lineman, and uh, the, the officials were right on it, and it was a nice call. Kakalak could use another 62 yarder standing at his own goal line. Another marker down. Another big punt. Thomas. Stuck immediately. And a very obvious push in the back on Cook by our man Ryan Brewer. Surprising mistake by 21, but he didn't get caught that time. 53 yard punt this time by Pakalak, the all time. Kentucky putting leader for a career. It's offside on Kentucky. South Carolina, you take the five part, five yards and punt it again. Make them punt it again. Absolutely. Well, no, it, it was offside on Kentucky. Well, offside by the defense. I would decline it. Right. Yeah. First down. Yeah, I wouldn't think South Carolina would want to punt that one again. Lou Holtz in a tie game at 11:39 remaining. And one of the few times tonight, the Gamecocks will have excellent field position. They try to take their first lead. Old Navy Painters Pants are one of a kind. A better price you'd be hard-pressed to find. Quality construction, that's our guarantee. Old Navy Painters. You're the pants for me. The price. Is nice. He'll wear. This pair. Wow, they're just $15 to $20 for men and boys. Old Navy, we are there. Bottled water getting expensive. Try pure filtered water. Just as good as bottled at a price that's 10 times less. Doesn't that sound better? Pure water filters. Your water should be pure. Number one. 
Number one. Want to see the pros do it for real? Huh. Win a trip from Castrol to the Super Bowl and the Pro Bowl. Go to AutoZone for details. Guess who? Hello? Hello, Mr. Storm. The dreaded telemarketer. Nice. It's strong. Telemarketers got your number? Get the Telezapper. And soon those annoying calls will just about stop altogether. Available at stores everywhere. Right now, when you buy four selected Goodyear tires, you'll get a $50 U.S. savings bond. But you better hurry. This offer is going fast. Call 1-800-GOODYEAR for a store near you. Or visit a participating retailer where Goodyear tires are sold. Taco Bell's grilled steak taco tastes so authentic, you may pull a grilled steak switch out. So you like carne asada steak? Yeah. Great. I've got some out on the grill. The Grilled Steak Taco. Tender slices of steak marinated in Mexican spices and grilled to perfection for a taste that's irresistible. For authentic carne asada steak, think outside the bun. Thursday midnight, latest series from ESPN Original Entertainment, the season SEC football. And the subject this week has been the Kentucky Wildcats as they prepared for this game against the Gamecocks. And the crew uh, was in the offices as we were chatting with... The what Kentucky the coaching team? staff, or Mike was anyway, the only one that from, from had a microphone. Um, well, <laughs> you'll hear from him. Talk to Brett P. The offensive coordinator. That's going to be a very interesting show. Thursdays at midnight this season. First and ten. Gamecocks 35-yard line, and they'll drop four. Jenkins run down from behind by Robertson. An update from Matt Weiner. Dave Ames, Iowa is the place for what we thought was going to be a Wallace quarterback shootout. Hasn't really out. materialized. Still still three, working. three, and then watch this. Seneca back Wallace is way 30. back at his 30. Down, down the right side. Down. 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 Here he goes. Down the left side. He'll score eventually. Sixth rushing touchdown this year. The Cyclones are up 10-3. We have not Come seen on. a better player in the country. Come That's on. my Heisman guy. Mine, I'm right with you, Bill. Jenkins, second and 13, and complete to Troy Williamson to the 42. That's a pressure throw by a veteran quarterback. Nice job. Jenkins steps up, delivers the football, own rhythm. You can't defense that in that defense. But how few times have we seen that tonight? Well, I think we're going to see some more of it because this guy's capable of it, and he is a gutsy guy. He got run down from behind by big Dwayne Robinson on the previous play. Now he's got to try to convert once again against this tough defense. Crowd's been electric all night for Kentucky. They're on their feet for third and four. Duping all the way. Jenkins, and with the second effort, he'll have a first down. They had him two yards shy. He turned his back, kept his legs going, and the chains will keep moving. Ronnie Riley, the linebacker, number eight, had his shot. He had him stopped dead to right. You'll see him in here with the hit. But watch Jenkins' legs. He just keeps going. There's the hit by Jenkins. He keeps pumping the legs, spins, and goes in backwards and moves the chains. Got to wrap up. Wrap up, Riley. Those yak yards, yards after contact, right, hurting Kentucky tonight, not yards after catch. They're not tackling well. Jenkins out of the Red Sox and White Sox minor league system. Former first-round pick by the Boston Red Sox. And then... Decided to go back to football. Pennick, who has been forgotten man in the second half. Pretty good uh, first half for him. And we've hardly seen him at all since halftime. Morris Lane getting up there, <laughs> slapping his D line. You know, you always got to tell that big guys where to line up. Just say, line up here and go straight ahead. The linebacker does, directs that traffic on the D line. Eighth carry, 61 yards. Andrew Penny. Jenkins taking short and looks up. There's Brewer. Shaw hangs on despite being blasted by Cumbie. And good for 18 yards. And Jim now the South Carolina fans with their ooh, yeah. There are 500 Ryan Brewer fans from Troy, Ohio here tonight. 
I'll tell you, the fake down that bubble screen again and taking it deep. Well, I'll tell you what, Cumbie takes a shot at the ball. Instead of the hit, he might have a chance for it. Brewer's mom bought 500 tickets. And the demand was such, he could have sold twice that many. Loose on the pitch, picked up by Terman, but he'll have a big loss to absorb. Mike, one of your pet peeves in football is running a little bit of option. Yep. South Carolina does that and don't, does not execute it very well. Ryan Brewer, <laughs> what can you say about this guy? He makes plays all over the field. He even made a tackle earlier yep. on a special team on a fake punt situation. Just keeps his team in the game. Second down, 15. Lincoln's well protected. Going deep. Defender falls down. Williamson with the catch inside the five. They'll mark him out at the six. 32 yards. The out and up. They tried it earlier in the game. Here it goes again. Antoine Huffman fell down. Is that foot in? Barely. Whoa. It's in by an inch. Yes, it is. There's a slip by Huffman. Can't recover in time. Great job getting that foot down. This gritty South Carolina team is just about to take the momentum from the guys in blue in their own home stadium. First down and goal. Three catches, 101 yards for Williamson. Brewer lined up from the backfield, scores South Carolina in front for the first time tonight. Let me tell you how amazing this is, guys. This Kentucky defense the entire year has given up 16 points in the fourth quarter. They're about to give up their 14th in this game alone. Full house backfield. Brewer's the last man to get it. and doesn't even get a hit till the goal line. Just a little fold action. Beautiful job by Nashawn Goddard, the center on the block back, and a nice pull through by Cedric Williams, number 76, the left guard. 15th carry of the year, third touchdown. When they get Brewer in that backfield, uh -oh. and Weaver misses wide right. They've got 13 points they've given up in the fourth quarter. So the hole is there for Kentucky now. If they can match the touchdown, they're a PAT away from regaining the lead that Brewer just gave Carolina. Now 10 0 at the half. Blue Holtz. Making his usual adjustments at halftime and bringing Carolina back. They're a new team. In Wendy's hometown, yoga class attendance is down. And the aromatherapy center is no more. Pizza! But Wendy's is packed because our mozzarella chicken supreme, a whole breast filet mozzarella and parmesan sauce is so delicious, it's taking people to that higher level. And finally, the clothing optional run through the wildflowers has been canceled. <laughs> Thank goodness. Wendy's Mozzarella Chicken Supreme, it's better here. And remember, our pickup windows open till midnight or later, so you can eat great even late. You're not ordinary. You're not average. You're something special. Ever wondered what it's really like to be a soldier? What do you got? I have a sit rep from Alpha Company. Get ready to be verified. Verified. Put yourself in the picture with this free video. You'll see over 200 great jobs in the Army and over 180 in the Army Reserve. You'll also see what skills you learn, how you can earn money for college, even what soldiers do in their free time. Call 1 800 984 Army now and get this free t shirt and your free video. Put yourself in the picture and see what it's really like to become an Army of One. If you're thinking about calling 1-800-HAIR-CLUB, you may be wondering, who is a hair club client? I am. I am. Call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB for this free hair loss booklet and arrange to speak to a hair loss expert today. With some of the latest breakthroughs in hair loss technology, you really can't tell you've ever had a hair loss problem. And that's the point. Hair Club, the number one alternative to hair loss. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday Night. Brought to you by Wendy's Late Night Pickup Window, where you can eat great even late. Well, while Kentucky's offense was on the bench watching South Carolina score, Kentucky offensive coordinator Brent Pease was giving his guys quite a talking to. He said, look, 
We're giving them this game. We're not making smart decisions. That's when Jared Lorenzen chimed in. He said, whatever we did in the first quarter, we got to get back to doing that. And Aaron Boone said, we can't go a whole half without scoring. But Dave, one thing they're missing, tight end Chase Harp. He's out of this game with a right ankle injury. Back up to you. They have had almost no offense, and they have not stopped the South Carolina offense in the second half. You're not going to believe the total yardage difference. This return for Kentucky is going to come out around the 24-yard uh, line. Arliss Beach. Really smart thing by Coach Lou Holtz and his staff. The ball was kicked away from Abney by design. Absolutely the right thing to do. You don't let number 12 beat you in the kicking game. 88-yard drive. And in the second half now, South Carolina 242 total yards, Kentucky 33. That is amazing. Lorenzen, four out of nine, 12 yards passing in the second half. In his first 11 in a row to start the game. Most of the completions have been short like this one. Penner manages to get seven out of it. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Dave, now that quarterback shootout is starting to materialize in Ames, Iowa. 10 three cyclones up, and that noted running quarterback Cliff Kingsbury plunges over for the touchdown. We're tied up at 10 in the third quarter. Well, Tech coming off 48-47 at Texas A&M. So, of course, that game's 3-3 most of the night. And now 10-10. This one's 16-10 on second and two. Miller slips at the line of scrimmage. ESPN Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. All the news from Stuart Scott, Tom Jackson, Jaws, Sterling Sharp, Chris Mortensen. That's at 7.30 Eastern. And then Monday Night Football, our matchup this week from the new stadium in Seattle, the 49ers and Seahawks at 9 Eastern. Jeff Garcia, Terrell Owens, Sean Alexander, with Al Michaels and John Madden. Monday Night Football, third and one. Penner gets the call again, should have enough for the first down. I tell you what, though, they were in that backfield again. He was tripped up in the backfield that time. 91, Mo Thompson, a true freshman, got a hand on his foot, almost came up with a big play. Well, we haven't seen either one of these backs, Penner or Pinnock, get tackle behind the line much, no, if at all tonight. No, no. They are north-south forward guys. Just the second first down of the second half for Kentucky. <laughs> Lorenzen. <laughs> Nowhere to go. And has to throw it away. Here's first man with sin. First time tonight I've seen Lorenzen lose his poise. The protection was perfect. All he had to do was stand in there and let his route develop. He panicked. He started to run, realized there was nobody around him, and then came to his senses, stood up, and got rid of the football. South Carolina figuring out what they're doing as well. They're sending the receivers out as Kentucky, and then Pinner is just going out, out in the flat and waiting to be the check down guy. South Carolina is putting a guy out on Pinner, and it's no longer there as a final option for Lorenz, and he has to pull it down. High formation and under center this time. And the draw for Pinner. No Thompson has him again. And it'll only get two. So they just got their second, second half first down. Now they need eight to keep the drive going. And the clock is still going down to 542. Charlie Strong defense. He's going with a combination of blitzes, zone blitzes, man, and some matchup zone. And he's got Lorenzen thinking an awful lot. And they've been able to shut him down in the second half for the most part. Three wideouts right. And Lorenzen scrambling away from Thompson. Now lets one go. Up for grab. Pulled down by Boone. Inbound. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Let's see now. Would that be Hail Mary or touchdown Jesus or... Uh, first, it's Lorenzen getting away from the rush this time and then just heaving it up. And look at Boone. Talk about getting the ball at its highest point. Mr. Boone won and got the feet down. Just another well-executed passing play. 
I think I'll just chuck it up there and pray. He even got in a prayerful position. <laughs> Probably no chance he saw Boone pull that one down. From flat on his back. Play fake. Looks deep middle for Abney and overthrown. Abney covered well by Dante Robinson. Well, plays like that win games like this. What happens when you start to lose your poise just a little bit, and this is what Lorenzen has not done this year, is that your mechanics begin to slip. He's not stepping forward into his throw. He's falling back off his throw, and it is not an accurate. I don't know if he intended to throw it away, but he's not throwing the football with, in, in the precise manner that he did in the first half and had here to four in this whole season. Not one of his more productive evenings. Well, let's start it out that way. Finner with room. Gashed him down to the 27. Wrapped up by Preston Thorne. Now, in order to win this game, Lorenzen, Mike, has got to step up, step into his throws, and get his accuracy back. And get those routes again that they had. Running the deep routes, running the crossing routes. We haven't seen it, or they haven't completed it this half like we've seen it in the first half because of the coverage by South Carolina as our pinball rushes. And not much of a panic at all in the second half. Third and four. Fake to Penner. The Lenzen steps away from a sheer sack and has a first down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, remember, this is a 300-pound quarterback who, when he knows somebody's on his tail, suddenly turns into a 4-2 sprinter. I think they should change the nickname from Battleship to Dreadnought. The Dreadnought is a real big battleship. Well, let me tell you what, he should have to have a horn on him. You can't be this big running down the field and not give some kind of warning you're coming. Wow. Uh, Jamesha Jackson is still wondering where the big fella went. Number 16 had him dead to rights on the safety blitz. Nobody to pick up the safety blitz, and he just couldn't come down with the elusive battleship. First time out, Kentucky, 420 to go. Consider this. New Shell gasoline is specially formulated to help prevent deposits in your engine. And a clean engine performs better. Is it any wonder, then, why so many drivers choose Shell? Guess who? Hello? Hello, Mr. Storm. The dreaded telemarketer. No, it's, it's strong. Telemarketers got your number? Get the Telezapper, and soon those annoying calls will just about stop altogether. Available at stores everywhere. I'm Emmett. And I'm not. We may not look it, but we're a lot alike. We both like giving back to the community. And we're both considered quite stylish. And we both believe that phone service should be simple. Oh, yeah, like 1010-220. It's cheap whether you use it a little or a lot. 99 cents for all calls up to 20 minutes. And there are no monthly commitments. So you only pay for the calls you make. So, what do you think of the shirt? Too loud. What do you think of the shirt? Dial 1010-220. Kentucky trailing by just six, and Jared Lorenzen is a father of a two-and-a-half-month-old daughter, Taylor, who our Dave Barnett has nicknamed Taylo, and why not? And Jared Lorenzen gave us the early scouting report on his little girl. She has my nose. She has my hands and my feet, which is good because no female should have to look like me. I mean, she, she's got my nose, which is good. Hopefully, she'll be tall. Um, but my hands and my feet, she can catch probably, and she can run. That's, I mean, hopefully that's, that's what I can give her. <laughs> what a legacy. I hope she gets his sense of humor. <laughs> breaking down her vitals, hands and feet. Breaking her down like an athlete. This is a pretty complete scouting report on a two-and-a-half-month-old girl. First and 10 of the 18. Pinner cuts it down. And down at the 15. Both teams, two timeouts. 
It'll be second down and six. You watch a Lou Holtz team come out the second half and look like they just transformed and put another bunch of guys in those uniforms. I look through the press guide, and they have a category where they interview the players and say, who's the biggest celebrity you've ever met? Six of them said Lou Holtz. <laughs> I'm serious. He's got that kind of presence. They no just doubt. believe in him. He's the man. You're the man, Lou. Been that a number of places. Six different programs to bowls, four to top 20 finishes, including this one a year ago. Dragged down inside the 10 by Jonathan Martin. Very close, maybe close enough for a measurement. I think he's about a foot short there. Yeah, yeah, he's a little short, but you like third and half a yard, no doubt about it. Nice play call, get the ball out quick into the hands of those guys that can make the play. You also like to have number 20 in your backfield when it's third and short. Be a wonderful time for Kentucky right here to run the play action and throw it in the end zone. I guarantee you, South Carolina's linebackers will be up there hunting for number 20, Mr. Penner. Two tight ends, only wide out Abney. Sneaking for first and goal, Lorenzo. Let's see, Pinner weighs 220, Jared weighs about 300, and he's closer to the first down. Probably a smart move, huh, Bill? <laughs> I love Jared's description of a quarterback sneak when he landed on his center, and his center kind of pulled him for an extra yard or two. Nick Sykes, he said, we just kind of laid there, and I said, thanks. <laughs> he said, you're welcome. That's the most civil conversation that ever happened at the bottom of one of those piles. Even with teammates. <laughs> but look at that. Nice job by Sites coming off the ball, clearing the way. Good body lane. Kentucky first and goal. Two and a half minutes. Pump fake. Now the fade to the corner of the end zone. It's caught out of bounds by Glenn Holt. Bear in mind, this is the number one team in America at scoring inside the 20-yard line. Number one. And when we asked the offensive coordinator, Brent Peace, why they were so effective, he said, we put our big receivers in and we throw those fades. We're three for three this year. Well, they're now three for four because it's just off ever so slightly. Yeah, he pumped fake, but Dante Robinson for South Carolina did not get fooled. One out of two in the blue zone, as Kentucky calls it tonight. 20 of 22 for the year. Penner. Or a couple at best, and here comes third and goal at the six. Gut check, both sides of the ball. Yep. Good one there by Langston Moore. He made some initial penetration. Defense swarming. I asked Nick Seitz about Langston Moore in the notes this week from Kentucky, and he said the guy is an animal. He's just an animal. Pressure's on Brent Peace right here to make the right call. This is. Obviously critical. We don't even have to say it. You've got to go two plates for the end zone, I would think. You yes. can't go two field goals. Not with, no, 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 not no. with under two minutes to go. You've got to score the play. On this drive, they've converted four third downs already. With time, Lorenzo to cut four times. Cook had position on Robinson. Robinson fell down. Cook had the touch. Lorenzo just a little off, just ever so slightly this half. Not quite the same ball. This is a little.